the, the evil are so present here that like our, our fire burns cold. Oh, hello, we're live, are we? Oh my god, it's been sprung on me. She yeah. betray. Oh, by the way, the... Jolly, I was I, I looked back over at the beginning of the the last stream we did. Remember how you started it off by talking about excrement, and we were hoping that that made it in. It didn't. It, so now yeah, I'm talking no, about I, excrement I just to make sure that it does. Well, like I said at the beginning of the last stream, you know, it's it's always good to start off your day with excrement. It, it frees your mind for the day's endeavors. I mean, it's like the end of the day it's for me, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, hello, chat. We're, we're we're back against our will. We've been dragged out of the nightmare pool in which I <laughs> otherwise dwell to once again drag ourselves through this mire and swamp of fucking hideousness that is Ahsoka. Hey, I'm enthused. You can tell. Faith. It's good. It's a good show. It's a great show. Oh, yeah, you're, we, just, you're just being mean. Yeah, it's great. We were we were so bad faith. Our first our first stream, man. We were so bad faith. God, yeah. Just fuck this show. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> now that I've stopped losing my uh, mind, I'm gonna invite Shiny in because Shiny has asked if he can join. And you know what? The more the merrier, right? Yeah, go for it. Is it bad, by the way, that whenever I hear his name, I think of the song from Moana? You know, with the giant crab. <laughs> I, I think of the song from R.E.M., Shiny Happy People. Oh, no. <laughs> which, I don't know which of those songs is worse. <laughs> I like the... the I, I like both of them, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Well, that's because you're a bad faith grifter. That's, that's why. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also, you've now, you've now promised me Shiny, so, and there is no Shiny. Oh, there he is. Hi, Shiny. He is, he is here. Shiny has come at last. Hi, Shiny. That, that's this phrasing there. That you... <laughs> uh, oh, phrasing. no. You, you came. He has, you he has you came come. and we all rejoiced. The, 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 <laughs> the shiny man cometh? Uh, I don't know how to phrase this in a way that isn't slightly <laughs> grotesque. Everything involving like, me no, is grotesque. Let's just put it this way, he he jizzed all over the stream and we're all more thankful for it. So it's the Did best. Did you guys hear by music. the way? Ten yeah, tangentially related. They canonically have changed the name of the jazz music that the Cantina band play. It's now called Jats. Ah uh, <laughs> why? Cowards. I'm so annoyed by that. That's outrageous. It's unfair. <laughs> You know, well, I, I have a subtle feeling that that might not be the first time in the stream that we're outraged and annoyed. I just call it a hunch. <laughs> well, that's the thing is like, so people don't seem to understand why I was so furious with Dave Filoni after episode six, um, because it's not as bad as episode five. And we're going to get into both of them. We're going to explain why. I don't think it's as bad as episode five, not even close, but it did very personally annoy me as a fan of Rebels. A fan yeah, of like a, like all of these characters. Odrin, is that you? Um, who's talking about the Captain e the Captain Enoch PFP. Oh yeah, somebody is, had yeah. to pull it out. Somebody had to pull out the gold man. Yeah, uh, I just I, I saw it and I thought I figured TK. it'd be TK That's... if anyone. Yeah. Not here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, he's, well, in, the, he's in the chat. <laughs> he's in the chat, but he can't make it to Sunday streams. You know that. Oh, what an absolute. That's why I always schedule them for Sunday. <laughs> All righty. So, like, so fine, gentlemen, how are we doing this? Are we going to do our standard chronological breakdown of one episode after the other and just stop whenever something terrible happens, which will be roughly I mean, five seconds? I, I thought we would. However, the thing about the episode five specifically is, you know, it's really hard to explain what even happens because there are so many different interpretations. Like, is it all metaphorical? Was that even really Anakin? This, this, and this. So I feel like it's, it almost be better to, I guess, lay out everything that happens in the Anakin flashback or like not flash, but you know, the clone wars flashbacks, the world between world stuff, lay all of that out first. And then we can like try to dive into it. I think that'd be the only way to do it. Right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. There's a lot to unpack with it. So, um, well, I guess let's just start off with the with the before we even get to the world between worlds, just the, like the opening of this god awful episode. So everyone might remember last yeah. episode, uh, Sabine betrayed everybody <laughs> and buggered off with uh, Balin <laughs> and Co. Um, two pilots died yep. as a result of her actions, and God knows how many more will die in the future as a result. Um, Hera was it two or was it three? Her... I thought it was three. 
it was it was many. It was more than one. Really matter. <laughs> yeah, people died. Is my P point. People uh, died on Hera's watch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jason was put in mortal danger because you know apparently her son doesn't mean anything yeah. to her. Um, but you know that's basically where we left. And Ahsoka was like <laughs> chucked off a cliff and, and woke up in the world between worlds with um, yeah. bad CGI Anakin gurning at her. Uh, hey snips. Hey snip. Oh yeah, <sighs> yeah but. Uh, but by the way, yeah, just like uh, Hera being concerned about, or not being not concerned about Jason's safety, th this episode literally starts off, the first scene is them landing on Cetos, and then her immediately, like, telling him to stay back, and, like, looking around just to make sure that there is no danger, and it's like, okay, well, I sure, say, I believe you. That scene's actually really funny, because it contradicts itself, like, five different times. So, like, fuck okay, it, let's just start there. So, yeah, the, the opening, we have the opening of the episode. Hera has landed her ship literally right by the henge, like, between the henge and the tree line. Um, meanwhile, the X-Wings are doing, like, various sweeps and over the forest and looking for any hostiles that might be remaining. And Hera is walking by herself out of the ghost with her gun drawn, aiming around the henge in case there's anyone there. And my first question is, Hera... The Henge is a very exposed piece of land. It doesn't exactly have a lot of air cover. And you flew over it and parked right beside it. Surely you should know exactly what's there with your eyes that you saw when you looked out of your fucking cockpit. Yeah. Like, you, sh you should know Hoi Yang's maybe, at the edge of the cliff. It, he stands like out. The, maybe, maybe the angle at which she landed made it so that she couldn't see below the windshields. And that's, like, where the, where the Henge was. I don't fucking know. But why well, not do a scan? I'm not actually land. defending this here. I'm just kind of saying. I'm just kind of saying, like people will say whatever the fuck they want to defend this show, especially this episode. I've found. Yeah. Well, I, I was going to say like that's the defense that Dave Baloney would probably come up with if you were to ask him. He would just be like, "Oh well, she she didn't see him. She came in from behind. She didn't see the guy standing <laughs> on the cliff's edge that she was <laughs> approaching with her shit." Yeah, I mean, sure, Dave. Sure, Dave. Um, I mean, like, here's the thing. I'm sure Dave would say that, but I care so little for what Dave has to say about anything anymore that, uh, frankly, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Well, and, and the thing um, is, like, the I really only hope... good thing about... Oh, wow. I was going to say, the only good thing about this entire episode is probably Hu Ying and, like, the sad little moment that he had. Like, I, I enjoyed that part. Just, yeah, just let good. him be happy. He's a good guy. Anyway, Shiny, you were saying? If one thing comes out of this show, I really hope that, like, a lot of Dave Filoni's, like, fans that were in kind of, like, the fandom menace crowd, I really hope they're going to shut the fuck up now. Oh, you sweet because... summer child. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Thankfully, See, I, no. I've only encountered one which claimed that the show was not made for me and that Dave Filoni was fixing the, the sequels. So he's still in denial. But there's so many people uh, who have like constantly shouted at me saying, me guess, "Oh, Dave Filoni's going to retcon." No, 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 no. Um, that that was like months ago. It was just one random person on Twitter which directly said to me that because I'm no longer a fan, this show wasn't made for me. Well, then, See, by definition, um, okay, sure. <laughs> in, ter in terms of the diminished like, response, like any of them who are. Dave Filoni loyalists, like they're they're not gonna fucking change their minds because you know this was never about good storytelling for people like them. It was never that they hated people because they were badly written. Like I and like we know this now because a lot of them came to woodwork and criticized Andor and made just the shittiest arguments you could possibly imagine. Uh, yeah. it was never about storytelling quality. So even though the show is, is proving Beyond the shadow of a doubt that Dave Filoni cannot tell a good story. Um, like when he's the one actually in the writer's room, when he had all the creative control, that doesn't matter. If he's still just saving or Cap Kennedy's evil. Just, uh, just out of interest, am I the only one who's hearing Sheev roboting? No, no, yeah, he's roboting a lot for me. Robot. I just didn't want to yeah. say anything. Damn it. Well, I, hope, <laughs> what, I hope the point that I came through is I'm not ruining it. Yeah, we, we, we got it. Yeah, I, I, I think I yeah. heard it. You want you're going to take your troops and search these uh, rumored swamps for the rumored underwater villages, right? That's that's what's up. <laughs> no, okay, I, I might have misheard then. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. But anyway, so to to get to get back to that, while she was trying to fix his oh, okay, so uh, I, his I, I looked this up. So according to Doomcock's new narrative, what it is is that Filoni backstabbed Favreau. And that he's now joined the side of Kathleen. Oh, Kennedy. fucking <laughs> Christ. 
Well, that's an interpretation. <laughs> and Christ he was God. uh, he was singing a very different tune a couple of years back. I find that interesting. Well, even a year ago, he was singing a very different tune. But obviously, you can't keep the narrative that Dave Filoni is like he's on our side, guys, and he's like going to wreck on the sequel trilogy, guys, and he's been working on this as far back as Rebels season three, guys. And well, to, then to, 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 to turn around, fair, it's like, ah, shit, this this show, like it's not doing any of that. I mean, to be fair, the show has done that just accidentally. Like, I don't think Filoni realizes that it's fucked with the sequels because, like, the sequels and the show cannot exist in the same continuity. Like, they can't. Um, yeah, it's just not. It's just not possible. Stream. Yeah, I the know. show in <laughs> itself can't exist in the same fucking universe. <laughs> the, the Mandoverse yeah. is just broken on so many levels; it doesn't fit anywhere. But, uh, but anyway, to, just take it so we can get through the scene. The thing I, I find funny is like, yeah, Hera comes out. She she's looking around, you know, to make sure there's no uh, enemies. Jason then comes out with Chopper, and Jason's like, uh, you know, can I come out now? And Hera's like, oh, okay, I think it's safe. Yeah, just you know, just, just don't wander off too far. And then she kind of just leaves him to be. And I'm like, well, hang on a second, Hera, you just this is a planet where like you haven't finished sweeping it. It was in possession of hostiles. Um, two of your friends are still missing, and a bunch of hostiles just exited and killed some of your men. Maybe keep Jason in the ship until they're like absolutely sure. Maybe don't let him wander off with Why Chopper. Is there, you know what? Actually, I remember one defense that I heard was that she didn't feel that it was safe to leave him on the at home one. Is that where they were? Home one, the fleet. Yeah, uh, because it's a yeah, it's a military ship, which is like uh, what whatever. I'll I'll get back to that. It's a military ship, and like they like recently had a military ship become under attack by like two jedi like characters um except and... i'm sorry that's that logic is so funny that that's basically like going oh well you know we shouldn't have children on uh american children on like army bases overseas because army bases could be military targets so instead let's take the children on an active patrol across taliban infested country in hellman province <laughs> like what exactly yeah well, well and and also just... the thing is the, the the cruiser or the I'm sorry the ship that got attacked by Balin and Shin uh, was also just one ship. They're they're in a fleet, first of all, and second of all, as long as the captain of like whoever's running this ship that Jason is on isn't a fucking moron, then Balin like anyone like Balin and Shin would have trouble like actually boarding and taking out everyone in, inside. Uh, because the I mean, only, fair, only reason every that captain in this fleet is a moron. That captain, true. Yeah, but that's internally consistent, Sheev, because the antagonists keep making incredibly stupid plans that just work <laughs> because someone else is even more stupid. I, I'm honestly the, the getting so tired of, like... This... Uh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm, I'm just getting so tired of, like, the major factions in this universe being, like, really dumb. Uh, it's, I, it's, I... it's almost yeah. more pervasive than that now. Like it's like it, it was just the major factions, and now it's everybody. Like from the top, to, yeah. from the top to the bottom, like from the fucking chancellor to the janitors, yeah. everyone is behaving with the IQ, with the mental acuity of a handicapped cucumber. And yeah, like we don't have smart individuals anymore either. You're right. Like it's it's really bad. They're as smart as the scene will allow them. Um, to be. So, but the same person who said that also argued that we know that Hera took Jason on missions because of the Rebels epilogue when the only thing we saw was her flying him around uh, in her ship. The, yeah, wait a minute. We didn't have Are... any context <laughs> what they were doing. They were just flying. Yeah, also, yeah, like, wait. They, they both awesome? looked happy and they, they were both like smiling, which obviously indicates they're not in a battle situation. Yeah, but, well, because yeah. I remember during, I mean, during that still... Rebels during that Rebels epilogue, they're... Uh, the narration mentions that uh, Hera fought in the Battle of Endor, but I, I don't think that just because mm -hmm. uh, Jason was in that scene while that narration was happening, I don't think that was suggesting that Jason was in the battle with her. I would really hope that she yeah, didn't bring think... Jason to the Battle of Endor. <laughs> no, Jason was actually one of the Ewoks all along. He's in the scene, <laughs> if you look carefully. That, that's the thing. That's the thing. It's out of character for either way. So even if Rebels concretely establish that Jason it, like goes along with Hera on dangerous firefights, like that's still an assassination. It's just one that took place in Rebels too. Yeah. yeah. The thing that always I, I think is funny about Jason, uh, just between Kanan and Hera, canonically, Kanan has never said the words "I love you" to Hera until just before he dies. So when the fuck did he fuck her? Did did they have sex? Like while they weren't like in a proper official ah. relationship, 
Well, you see, well, I guess they were. Like. Well, yeah, you you do understand. Not everyone upholds Christian ideals about sex after marriage. Well, no, but the uh, inference but no. is supposed you, to be a romantic relationship you, between you, these two. You see, rather than it being a, a flame. In season three, episode Twin Sons, Ezra goes into Kanan's room because he hears the holocron going off, and Kanan is in fact not there, despite it being the middle of the night. This implies that he was <laughs> elsewhere. This was the Uh-oh. night Jason was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, jo- joking aside, I-, I think we are meant to assume that it it happened at some point in between season three and four. <laughs> when you say we're yeah, meant to assume well, I mean... it happened at some point, like how else would Jason be here? <laughs> the Force, well, uh, the cl- yeah. cloning secrets only the Sith knew. Was that the thing about Kanan and Hera's relationship was that they obviously had like a like a sexual partnership, and also like were clearly in love with each other. They just never said it outright, like until the the scene where he died. But then also yeah. is another question of how the f- like someone has got to be cheating in this relationship because how does a half Human <laughs> half tweed, like, come out fully human. So either like I don't know how this well, hang on. works. Yeah, I say, well, it's like I say, how how well, would that work? So like, if Hera cheated with a human, yeah, would it still be a half brain? Unless yeah, unless you're yeah, saying Kanan out, got pregnant. Came out of the tweet, like, regardless, Kanan got yeah. Hera pregnant with someone else's child. <laughs> it's it's... Alice's child. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> it's gov- it's Governor Price's actually. It was, it's Kanan and Governor Price uh. on a thing. You know what? Actually, that makes sense because because we we all know that the best Star Wars relationships are between the ones that, where one person is being tortured by the other. Oh yeah, I mean that's oh, why everyone's man. been like everyone's been shipping Shin and Sabine, and I'm like, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I didn't ship like, I didn't ship Hera and Price until that scene where Price was fucking torturing her. Yeah, I I, I mean to be fair, it's not the worst shipping I've seen. I saw someone on Twitter. I think even on your Twitter, she where someone was like. Oh yeah, we should pair off Sabine with Luke. She should be the Mara Jade of this universe. I was like, oh, oh my god. god, no, 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 <laughs> no. Oh, by the way, there was joke a about that. I, I will murder you. I skipped past it, but Imp ALC for uh, for one ninety nine said, "How was extra galactic travel explored in Legends?" Um, I don't want to go on a full tangent, but I'll explain. Uh, in the EU. <laughs> there was this thing called the Outbound Flight Project, wherein basically uh, Jedi Master Joris Sabayoth, the original, not the clone, wanted to go to different galaxies and spread the good word of the Jedi Order. Um, However, the Yuuzhan Vong exist, and they they come from a different galaxy, and Palpatine knew about them, uh, as well as Thrawn. Uh, And so both of them had a vested interest in making sure that the Outbound Flight Project never reached the end of of Republic space. Uh, and they actually joined forces and teamed up. And this was the first time Palpatine and Thrawn ever met. And we're like, hey, we'll let, go ahead and sabotage that. And then they did. And that destroyed that. Um, otherwise, the only other times we've seen any extra galactic travel be done is through the Yuuzhan Vong. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Well, I, I want to mention something about that later. Um, you know, you, you talk about uh, yeah. outbound flight and the Vong. Um, I... I have some stuff to say uh, in relation to uh, the canon's version of the Vong um, that it seems increasingly. Uh, oh yeah. There's yeah, there's yeah, an increased yeah, yeah. chance that Filoni's going to ignore that and not go anywhere near that subject, despite it oh, yeah, being we're not, uh, very we're not important. To, yeah. <laughs> I bet she is simply insufferable in person. You would know. He 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 knows me in real life. That's the joke he's making. He's your cat. Thank um, you for the super chat, Brian. <laughs> He's my cat. <laughs> just, just, just tweeting from the other room. Uh, I guess, I guess we have to get to it then. So, I guess we have to start talking about it. The world between worlds. Yeah, is kind back, of putting, everybody. Like, I mean, I've been kind of putting it off. I mean, like, I don't want to talk about Anakin. Yeah, I know, but we have to. We have to get through mm-hmm. it. So, I'm sorry to drag everyone into this nightmare, but. Yeah, we knew we knew it was obviously we knew the world between worlds was back as of last episode, but now it's now it's back in full glory. The world between worlds, the Deus Ex Machina Central returns. Um, you, hey, uh, you look the same. You look old. Thanks, Anakin. I love dialogue. <laughs> dialogue is fun. <laughs> I, I like dialogue, and it would be great. Those... Oops. Joe, hello, my wonderful boyos. 
Uh, if you think the show is well executed, do you deserve to be ex- if you think the show was well executed? No, you, no, you don't deserve to be executed. For no. the show is good. You do deserve, yeah, however, shouldn't... to be very lightly ridiculed um, in a very playful way. Yeah, no one should be executed for wrong thing. You should, however, be like sat down kindly. You know, we'll buy you an ice cream. We'll put a hand around your shoulders and we'll, we'll kindly explain to you why this is a Maybe bad habit that, that you need to. Be. Yeah. That you need and then we'll walk you in a room where it's only me and these four walls, and you tell me that Andor is crap while Ahsoka is peak, and I will keep you in that mental hospital until the time that you think otherwise. You, you know what? You need to go home and rethink your life just like Elon Sleazebagano, or whatever his name was. <laughs> I mean, if his name yeah, was actually Elon, that would have been fucking great. It Wasn't is. It? It's I, it was e- like Elon or Elon. Elon, Elon Sleazebagano. How, how I was it of them. Long. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but yeah. So, I, I, do we do <clears> want to talk about? Yeah. Do we do we just go through the? Like, let's, yeah, let's just do it that way. Let's go through the events and then we can talk about what they mean, right? Because that way sure. we get through a good chunk of the episode before we get to the, the horror. So, yeah, they have a little bit of a chat where Ahsoka crosses her arms and doesn't emote, and uh, she's like, "I don't know what I'm doing here. What what's going on?" And Anakin's like, uh, "You lost your fight, and try like like trust me, you lost." Which I guess implies that she got killed. And, and then, then I, I, I like, I didn't so what are we doing here? That line. I, I thought it was more of like a playful thing, like you know, sort of between like the way they would they would banter in the Clone Wars, like, yeah, trust me, you lost. Uh, maybe maybe he well, did mean she so, died. <clears throat> I mean, here's the thing. I don't uh, to to go back real quick to the whole like uh you're old, you know, like the fact that Anakin's kind of <laughs> quipping at him a little bit throughout this whole thing. I mean, I don't necessarily have a problem with that since that's what the relation was in the Clone Wars but the problem I have is the fact that Ahsoka is not reacting in the way that she probably should well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang tried on, to kill her last this is a larger conversation that I think we should leave until we've done the whole event we, and then we can yeah, we gotta, what they we gotta break down so exactly mean. what happened All right. so so yeah um, Ahsoka's like what's, what's, what's going on what am I doing here and Anakin's like well I'm gonna finish your training and Ahsoka's like aha uh-huh. And then Anakin's like, yeah, the, the, you, you either live or die, and attacks her. And they have a bit of a lightsaber duel. It's kind of playful. She kicks him in the face, and she's like, ha, oh, you don't really have much left to teach me. And he's like, well, you know, there's always more to learn. Uh, swipes the floor out from under her. She falls. He cut the she beam! <laughs> he, cut, he cut the beam. <laughs> and then, then she drops, and suddenly she's... What's the actress's name? Ar- is it Ariana Greenblatt? Um, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. around the Greenblatt, young fourteen-year-old Ahsoka in the midst of the Clone Wars with uh, Anakin in Clone Wars garb. Was, oh my god, I creamed it's my the pants. Clone Wars. Yeah, oh, yes. Ahsoka's like it's the Clone Wars, and I'm like, no shit. Um, hey, there's a bunch <laughs> of the clones running around. What time period do you think this is? I like how even Anakin's Jeff, do you have like, any idea? <laughs> like even Anakin's like, yeah, no shit. Like where, where else did you think this was? <laughs> no shit, sure. Anyway, right. like. They run into battle. Ahsoka's like, what about my training? And Anakin's like, this is your training. And then it cuts to later on after like the first part of the battle's over and all the wounded are being cared for. And Ahsoka is clearly like upset uh, at seeing all this death and carnage. Sorry? I think... See, it's very it's very confused, but I'm pretty sure these are supposed to be two different places. Uh, like the, the pink fog place and then the yellow fog place where they have their conversation and like the wounded are being treated. Because it's different color f- fog... I, well, regardless, I don't regardless, know the, well, yeah. Um, whether it's one battlefield or two, it, it's it's just the Clone Wars montage, right? And like we get the scene where there's all these injured clones around, and Ahsoka's like feeling very cut up about it and upset. That there's all this carnage going on, um, and she basically confronts Anakin about this, where she's like, "Oh, so many people died, and like I feel like I'm responsible, and like all we do is death." And Anakin's like, "Well, it's a war. Uh, you have to you have to get on with things." And she's like, I don't, what if I don't want to get on with things? What if I don't want to fight anymore? And I can like, well, then you'll die. And as he stomps off, oh my god, he's suddenly Darth Vader in the fog. Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> um, this was the greatest cut- shot in all of Star Wars! Woo! Oh, yeah, no, no, then- that's the other one. That's the other shot. Yeah, it's, that's coming up. The thing is, the thing in the fog is like, in, in a good scene, that'd be like a, a neat pick. It's not the most genius thing to ever fucking do ever in the eternity of the galaxy. Like, it's as easy as pressing, no, oh look, one shiny. layer, then another layer. Oh my goodness. But, but no, shiny 
Honey, did you notice that when he was when he was Anakin, he was surrounded by his clones and his friends, and then when he transitioned to Vader, he was alone. Oh my God! Symbol. Did you notice that? So <laughs> meaningful. <laughs> it's. So I, I actually think that it was like just complete by accident that that happened, and then people just it's like, oh my God, the curtains, they're red because they mean blood. It's like no, well, no. Even if it curtains. was on. Even even if it was on purpose, it really does feel like that part in Kenobi episode six where like uh like you know Anakin is talking and the light is blue and then he starts talking as though he's Vader and the light is now red. And it's like <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Mm. So Citizen I'm, uh, I'm gonna subtlety. For the for the moment, I'm gonna skip over like where it cuts back to what uh Hera and and everyone's doing. I'm gonna just like do all the all the Anakin stuff and then we can talk about the other scenes and then we can talk mm -hmm. about what it all means. Yeah. So yeah, when we when we cut back to the Clone Wars flashback, suddenly we're in the Siege of Mandalore. Oh my god, I creamed my pants. Remember that? The Siege of Mandalore. I, was so I remember good. the Siege of Mandalore. <laughs> I, I saw I saw the clones in the slightly racist Tano makeup and I clapped. Um She should have been like, This is the Siege of Mandalore. Wait, she did say that actually. Just yeah, she, didn't yell she, it. she did. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it, you, you know what's especially funny? You know what's especially funny about that? Like the Siege of Mandalore is the one that we got in season seven, which was like the new season that we only got like a couple of years ago. And like they're already he's yeah. already relying on that for like nostalgia, even though that's like the new shit. Yeah. It's well, also like, very so funny because that, uh, like you could totally have just done flashbacks of different things that in Ahsoka's life that we haven't actually seen before, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> give, me, give me something new. Ooh, Don't just rely ooh, on, five, hey, I remember what a Twi'lek is, and I remember that she you fought mean, uh, in, on Mandalore once. You mean all five seconds of her life that we haven't yet had put on screen by Dave Filoni? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we well, have... We'll um, get to this more, but like, uh, there's obviously that huge gaping gap uh, between... Uh, I just said gaping gap. There's that there's that very <laughs> obvious gap in her in her history, uh, like during the OT that we still need to get filled, and like it's actually yeah, uh, imperative it's, that we do. So I'll never get gonna into happen. it more when we get when we can when we finally talk about this. But like, you want to set some flashbacks, you could set some there. And in fact, I can think of a few moments that would be key to not only giving us important context, but also like developing Ahsoka's feelings in these episodes. Oh yeah, uh, we'll it's almost like the that. one piece of information we have about what happened then is something we should really be getting more on, but we are not going to ever get talked about. Uh, anyway, so mm -hmm. yeah, the Siege of Mandalore's happening. Anakin, for some reason, doesn't seem to realize where it is, which is strange, because it's a battle he A, helped plan, B, gave her troops for, C, that was the only time they ever wore that face paint, and he was, he was aware of that, and D, she's using lightsabers mm -hmm. that she only ever used in that battle that he'd given her like hours beforehand. So it's strange fighting that he doesn't know where <laughs> Yeah, and fighting she's Mandalorians. Fighting some She's of them are painted to look like Darth actually. Maul. Not really fighting as much as just like kind of busting it down. Well, I mean, I, I just like the idea that there's Mandalorians running around. Anakin's like, "Who the fuck are these I people? Where, where are the they?" <laughs> well, it's it's Mandalorians like dressed up like Darth Maul, and he's like, "I don't know where we are." It's like Anakin, you dense motherfucker. We can't, <laughs> we can't tell what setting we're in because of all the fucking fog. <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> I can't I was... see what battle this is. Like, before okay. uh, before I proceed, I will give two points of praise. Actually, I'll give three points of praise. The first is, I liked seeing Rex. It's very shallow, I know, but it was nice to see him even briefly. That was cool. I liked that. Sure. Yeah. Um, Charlie, go fuck yourself. Don't have nostalgia. Don't give them praise for that. <laughs> well, no, no. As in, like, my point is, like, of all the nostalgia, because I'm drawing a comparison here, like, of all the nostalgia bait we got given in the episode, the only one that actually rang true as a nice moment was that. But basically because it was understated and, and it didn't, it wasn't shoved quite as directly in your face as everything else. Anakin um, it was a nod. Like you're praising them for not beating you in the face over and over <laughs> again with Captain Rex. Yeah, basically. Um, Fine, I'll, I'll, I'll let them have that. Yeah, the, they the restrained thing is, it to I, just the one moment. It was neat. I, w I will say, even though I agree, so she, you and I are in agreement with this. We're like, we think Ariana Greenblatt, uh, because she's got quite a young-looking face for her age. She was the perfect cast for a 14-year-old Ahsoka, not so much for a 17-year-old, because the idea that this person is going to fight Darth Maul and win in a couple of hours is, I mean, borderline hysterical. <laughs> but I will say, despite the fact that I don't think she looks the part in as a 17-year-old, I will say I think Ariana Greenblatt does a very good job of acting as young Ahsoka. Uh, a young yeah. Ahsoka with the kind of experiences of an older one. I think she does a fairly good job of that. So I think we should single her out for praise, because it's nice when that happens, particularly in a show where most of the actors seem to have forgotten how to act. Yeah, yeah, there's she actually had like a degree of charisma, which is something that this show was like lacking yeah. a lot 
I've heard a lot of people saying that she did a better job as Ahsoka than Rosario Dawson, and I can't say I disagree with that. Yeah, I'd yeah. Say I, I agree with that. I also think her lightsaber technique looks a lot more fluid and natural than Rosario's. Mm -hmm. um, there's also something like, again, I said this to Sheev, it's funny that Hayden Christensen's been away for like 20 years, and like he comes back, and even though the, the choreography is like very rote and, and insipid, it's very clear he knows what he's doing like, to a much greater degree than Rosario Dawson does. Like his, his actions are a lot more fluid. His stances are a lot more poised and like and refined. He's he just generally very better at it. Training there during the the films he was in. Yeah, yeah, he did, he did a yeah. lot of training for that that Mustafar fight. He Have you really seen uh, Ewan McGregor on like the one show where he shows off all the lightsaber moves that he's learned over the years? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I guess, like, it's a shame he didn't get to do more of that in Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the the one thing I will say as well, because I, 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 just as a brief hint, because I'll talk about this more later, because there's a ramification to this. Hayden really cares. Man, does Hayden really give a shit about like Anakin and Star Wars? And it's painful <sighs> to see how much more he cares than like nearly everybody else involved. Um, yeah, he deserved, he deserved a lot better than this. It's really upsetting to me that yeah. like it, everyone goes on and on about like, oh, Hayden's comeback. Here we go. But he keeps getting saddled with just like material that's arguably even actually not arguably like it is yeah, worse than the prequels. Worse, yeah, yeah. I'd even say that like this whole idea that oh he's back it's been so long is kind of muddled by the fact that Kenobi came out a year ago. That <laughs> he already came back. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, people really forget about these shows. <laughs> I'm convinced I guess, that they, yeah. they just they shot them back to back. To be honest, I mean I just wish I could forget about these shows. <laughs> Well, I wish but, Disney but, like, was forget about like, them. That's the thing is like I don't think it's good, but like at least there could have been the novelty of like yeah, we haven't seen Hayden Christensen on screen as Anakin for like almost twenty years. Like it's so cool, but it's like no, we saw him last year. <laughs> like I, it, you kind of ruined that. It's it's a little bit to to a much, uh, much less lesser extent. Like the whole. You know, you can't show Luke and Ahsoka having their first meeting now because, like, we've already seen it. It wouldn't be nearly as special. Yeah, it's a squandering of opportunities that we're never going to get back again. Like, we're never going to get, like, Hayden's first reintroduction. We're never going to get, like, to see Hayden and Ahsoka reconcile in a way that makes any kind of sense for their characters or is in any way interesting to watch on screen. That's gone now. That's done. And that's well, just such a yep. crying shame. Well, because that's what I think we were all, uh, you know, anybody going into this show and knowing that Anakin was going to be here, that's the one thing that I think people were looking forward to. It's not that Hayden is back again, since, like you said, we already got that in Kenobi. It's just the fact that this is uh, the first time that we're really going to get Force Ghost Anakin in like a post-Return of the Jedi timeline. So it's like, oh, you know, what's what's he going to talk about? What's he going to teach be. Ahsoka? You know, that kind of thing. Um, but then we they kind of squandered that, that in, uh, in uh, the sequels. But yeah, I guess since we didn't get that, like this could have been a really cool moment. Yeah. 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 Someone in the chat um, said we're toxic. One thing about we toxic. Hayden's... What are we saying? That's uh, toxic. Hey, hey, anyway, okay. about Hayden. Um, one thing that I, I noticed about his performance is that lines that seem to are supposed to be kind of a bit snippy and jokey, he plays very aggressively. Like the just as for inference, the the line where he says, You're old, it sounds like something you're supposed to say kind of like lighthearted with a smile. Like you know how um, would have been done by the, the the voice actor in Clone Wars, whom I'm already blanking on the name of, Matt Lanter. but instead Matt he, Lanter, Matt Lanter, like Matt Lanter would he would have done like uh, with a smile, he would have been a bit more high pitched and lighter in the tone, but Anakin does it. Or Hayden Christian's voice is very much you're old, like he, like he's trying to insult someone, which is what I think what makes the line very funny. Well, Hayden's one of those actors. Well, like, let's be absolutely <laughs> honest. Right? Hayden's never been the most gifted actor. That being said, he's perfectly adequate when he's given good directing. But like, as in the prequels, uh, you know, again now, that's not what he's getting. So, and again, like, mm -hmm. I, I want to come back to this because like, there's a behind the scenes thing that is really important to talk about, um, which we'll get to. But let's just finish off like what actually happens first before we get to all the thematic stuff that they failed to do. Yeah. Uh, um. So yeah. They're at the Siege of Mandalore. Uh, Ahsoka's like, Anakin's like, I don't recognize this. Ahsoka's like, well, you know, we'd already parted ways by this time. And Anakin's like, uh-huh. Uh, and basically he's like, yeah, you've, you're doing well. You've become everything I, I hoped you'd be. You're a warrior like I trained you to be. And Ahsoka's like, is that is that all I am? Is that is that all I'm going to be? And Anakin's like, well, that's not all you are. It's not all I am either. 
And Ahsoka's like, well, you're right, it's not all that you are, because basically you turn into a fucking monster, you heinous bastard. Uh, <laughs> and then Anakin's like, okay, so clearly you're not getting my point. Uh, let's go back to the beginning. And then he turns into dark side Anakin and just attacks her. And it's like, I right, clap when Darth die. Vader turned on his red lightsaber. <laughs> it, yeah, it really does have that feel. Anyway, they then fight for a bit. He pretty like handily like like beats her, uh, kicks her back into the world between worlds proper. She's back to being Rosario Dawson. They fight some more uh, through absolute contrived bullshit that makes no sense. She wins the fight. She has a brief little moment where it looks like she's going to go, oh, oh no, all dark side Ros uh, Rosario. And then she's like, no, I choose to live. And Anakin's like, ah, oh, <laughs> there's, there's hope there's hope for you yet. Um, and then he leaves her, she wakes up, uh, and she's in the ocean, uh, which like, oh, how are you not dead? But fuck it. <laughs> how, how have you not drowned after being there all this time? There's well, she's lot, either been uh, there all this time, or... Bad. Yeah, it, she's like only spends some time there. But even the time that we see her spend in the water, she should be like, um, you ever seen Sh uh, Agents of Shield where what's his face gets stuck in the water for an amount of time, and then he has like major brain damage because of oxygen starvation? Yeah, I don't uh, know. Fitz. I'm afraid, I'm afraid not. Yeah, no, yeah, he's Fitz. A Fitz has major brain damage, but he puts himself and in a situation like, yeah. to save Simmons, where he will be forced to essentially drown for like a good a good bit. Uh, he gets saved, but after like extensive brain damage has been done, so like for a while there, uh, his once prominent intellect is like is sort of gone. Um, he does eventually recover it over time, but yeah, it's like it's a neat little arc. But he the goes thing on. is, brain damage very bad, and do you know what happens when you you can't breathe and you're trapped underwater for a significant amount of time? Well, screw that. He she <laughs> should be dead. She should have drowned. Well, also shiny. So Let's be I guess, fair. If she if she had brain damage, how would we be able to tell? That's true. Yeah, true. Uh, she probably does have brain damage. Did you see her plan to find <laughs> Ezra and Thrawn at the end of the episode? <laughs> yeah. uh, well, again, so I want I want to keep that I want to keep that slightly separate for now. And like before we get to all the yeah. stuff that happened outside the world between worlds, let's talk now about what the fuck any of the stuff in the world between worlds actually meant. Because right. oh my so, god, what a what cost I wanted... of fuck. What I wanted to just quickly do first was like talk about like the logistics of of, of what exactly is going on with Ahsoka because you can interpret it a few different ways, right? Like either she fell off the cliff and she like hit the water or the rocks or whatever and she died, uh, and this was some sort of afterlife sort of thing. Um, at, at which point that the person she's talking to either is Anakin's Force ghost or the Force itself manif manifesting itself as a familiar figure, and we can talk more about that. That's either that, and then she went on her little vision quest or whatever, and then got resurrected, basically. Or she got physically pulled into the world between worlds as she was falling, which saved her from death. Uh, which means that that's just something that Anakin can do, like, at any time to save people that he cares about. as Like, from beyond the grave, he can just save people from falling to their deaths. Um, or she was still a alive somehow in the water physically but also mentally in the world between worlds and she didn't drown in all that time i don't know which yeah. which interpretation you guys have but i don't think any of them really make any sense also, also the, the portal that's in the is in the sky you can see that when she's looking down at the cliff there's no way that she accidentally fell through it she she would have like had to have fallen to the rocks because well, you know well, that the way you, saying, you drag someone into the world is by like physically pulling them through. Well, yeah, yeah that's that's like, kind so of the thing. Like, if, 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 falling, and then Anakin like reaches out and pulls her like horizontally into this world, and she lands <laughs> on uh, like the one of the fucking world between world road things. Um, like that's a that's what I'm imagining happened. Uh, as goofy as it sounds. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, because, look, I mean, say what you will about the world between worlds in Rebels. I mean, it obviously introduced a lot of problems, which is why we have what we have now. But at least in that, you had Ezra, who is a living person who's actually in there and is, like, pulling her through a portal. Like, at least there's something that we can latch onto while it's happening. But, like, with this, like, we don't see her fall into a portal. Like, we don't really, <laughs> I don't know. We don't see it. Again. We don't see it. it. She just appears. But it could yeah. happen. It could have happened 
off screen is is all I'm really saying. Can, can can you really accidentally fall through these portals because they're not they're only no, there not, on one side. I'm not saying she accidentally fell through. I'm saying that Anakin, with the intent to save her life, pulled her. Um, into so I, it. I, I hate to break this to everyone, but it is essentially confirmed in the episode that this is definitely Anakin, and that's what I was kind of hinting at before because yeah, when when she, she said, first starts I fighting her. You. And yeah, I like, I w- says I've heard that before. Yeah. yeah, which she would she has no way of knowing that unless for some reason Luke told her the specifics of 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 the dialogue, which I don't understand why he would or why she'd even ask. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, that very strongly implies that this is Anakin's Force Ghost, which means Anakin's Force Ghost is canonically here and has canonically got the power to save people whenever he wants uh, from death by just pulling them into this like safe dimension and to teach them well, like, jolly. You know, moral lessons. Isn't it great? He finally was. It, he's finally able to save the ones he loves from dying. This is the arc that well, he's been on this entire. Well, time. Well, you know, Chief, to cheat death is a power only one has achieved, except for like you know Marek <laughs> and every night sister and the fucking night zombies. Uh, you know, night trooper zombies and just I'm just, uh, Ahsoka's been resurrected from death now three different times. Yep. <laughs> uh, Actually, wait, just... wait a minute, wait a minute. Just thinking about the Mortis thing, that actually fucks up so much because Anakin, by that stage, has seen someone get resurrected by the Force. Yep. We had his mind wiped. This is all in my Clone Wars video. No, 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 no. no. He he remembers that that for some reason. I don't know why people think that. No, they retain everything that they saw on Mortis by the end of it. They talk about it. Oh wow, that's oh damn. Um, I mean, the only thing that Anakin. The only memory that Anakin lost was when he had he had the vision of the future. Uh, about what he would become, which made him turn to the dark side, and then the father erased that from his memory. But everything else he remembers. Yeah, I was about to say, like, as a side note on the Mortis arc, I just find it funny that like the fucking uh, owl, the you know the daughter avatar, like that mm-hmm. was so important all the way through Rebels. Just it has like nothing, nothing here. <laughs> no mention of the Mortis gods. No mention of the daughter. No mention of the fact that Ahsoka is literally like only alive because she is bonded at the level of her soul to an actual light side force goddess. Um, mm. I guess it's just not relevant. You think you think that's something Anakin might mention, or she might that, mention. That oh must well. be shit having a roommate that in your fucking soul. Well, yeah, I mean, like, what? <laughs> also, it's not just a roommate in your soul; it's a fucking owl that you have to clean and feed. I guess. I, mean, I don't know the, log- yeah. the, log- the logistics like, of how this pet like works. A, it's like having a fucking this happened pet too. worse. In seasons, this is actually one of my bigger criticisms of Clone Wars is that like shit, significant shit like this is almost never brought up again. But the one other time Mortis is mentioned is in season six, and Yoda and Anakin talk about events that happened there, um, oh dear. including like you know seeing oh Qui Gon Jinn. Yeah, no, they remember all of it. <laughs> Well, so to carry on from the I won't fight yourself, obviously, like, you know, the, the first and most major issue that is now and definitively Anakin and all the attendant character damage that that does for him going forwards into where the fuck he was during the sequels and why he didn't do anything to help anyone. Like why he didn't mm-hmm. tell Ahsoka about Palpatine being alive or Exegol or anything. <laughs> um, why Luke isn't told. Anyway, anyway, there's all that problems. There's actually like a kind of meta problem here, which is like one of the things that people like all the kind of Filoni fanatics on Twitter who are like, oh, Filoni is the savior of Star Wars. He's, he's you know, he's going to go, he's the guy who's going to reclaim it from the, the badness that it's been for ages. Um, and one of the kind of like things they use to justify this sentiment is like, well, Filoni's upset. He's a fan. He's a super fan. He's one of us. So he knows what's important. And I would just like to point out that there is a behind the scenes uh, show on Ahsoka where you can clearly see Hayden explaining to Filoni why and how Anakin should be reacting to a certain thing in the way that he wants him to and that Filoni hasn't written in. And it just it flashed my mind back to the Sam Witwer interview where he's like, he had to remind Filoni about Shmi and the fact that Padme had already met Shmi. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I was like, at this point, I'm, I'm seriously doubting like how much Filoni actually knows, like how much of a fan he actually is. It's just like I, very surface level. I apparently. keep going back to like, he doesn't even recognize that Luke is obviously a Jedi in Return of the Jedi because Yoda said... Um, that he has to be, he has to confront Vader first. Oh yeah, like, like the whole OT element in particular. I get this sense throughout this series. Um, you know, based on some of the stuff that we talked about uh, for the first two episodes as well, I get the sense that Filoni almost makes like a deliberate attempt to avoid anything relating to the OT, um, because I don't know that that would kind of uh, poke a lot of holes in the story that he wants to tell. It already is. Their is absence is noticeable. Any- so the, the same guy that called this toxic, I can't tell if he's a troll or not, because he just said Anakin didn't feel like talking to Luke. This sure. is, like, feels it, like a troll. This, fin- this feels like a troll. <laughs> this is a troll. Well, she, yeah, you know, Anakin, nev- Anakin never really cared for Luke, innocent or otherwise. 
Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Jolly knows just how to push my buttons. He just has to reference <laughs> Game of Thrones season eight. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, like there's, there's there's one other like major thing here before we get into like the lesson that Anakin was supposedly trying to teach and the actual like theme that is attempting to be conveyed. Okay, yeah, he's, he's kidding. And the first thing is, this is almost like a the er uh, example of the thing we've been talking about for all the previous episodes, like about Ahsoka and where her character is. Um, Ahsoka's last time seeing Anakin was Vader trying to kill her, a, a moment where she willingly tried to sacrifice her own life despite everything to save Vader from the exploding temple, knowing it was going to cause her death, where she chose to stay and die rather than betray Anakin once again, or in her own mind at least. Yeah. You know, Rebels, her whole arc was about the guilt she feels about leaving Anakin and what that means for her. I said it in the previous streams as well, like the, the, the shadow of Vader, the shadow of Anakin, the trauma, Which the sheer pain. I will point out is a little bit foxed by season seven. Uh, I mean, sort of, but like, but just to stick to the, the can, topic at hand. Yeah. Um, my point being is like Ahsoka's reaction to Anakin here is weird. Like he turns up, it's the first time she's seen him, and she's like, Oh, let's go back to crossing my arms and like lightly joking. Like, no, no, no. You should be either like one of two things, like angry and furious and full of pain and grief and loss and fear. Like, there should be some like real questions you're asking this man about whether or not that even is Anakin. Like, why do you know whether or not she even believes that she's actually seeing Anakin, whether she actually believes he was truly redeemed, what she what that means to her, what you know, so many questions to ask Anakin, so many things to say to him and about his own, his own feelings and hers. Or she should be a bit like, um, again, for people who've read the Legends books, you'll understand this reference. In the Legends books after Endor, like a couple of days after Endor, Anakin's force ghost turns up to Leia and he's like, oh, I'm really sorry about everything I did as Vader. Please, please forgive me. And she's like, no, fuck off. How would I ever forgive you? <laughs> you like, And like, he, he never comes back to visit her again, even though she does go on to forgive him yeah. later. And, and like, that's What's a possible great reaction that, from Ahsoka. Leia... What's great is that Leia goes on like an entire arc where she accepts what Anakin became and what he used to be, uh, and like l like learns over time to forgive him. Um, like it's it's very meaningful and personal, and it's just great. Yeah, and as as Ruskov is very understandable saying... that she would go tell him to fuck himself after she ba he basically <laughs> blew up everything that she ever knew. He tortured the man well, that, he yes. that she loves. He he tortured the man it's, that she it's... loves. It's one of those two things, right, where, like, because uh, Ruskov just put it out, and it's something I, I kind of hinted at earlier. The two reactions Ahsoka could have are, like, are either, like, a, a Leia-esque reaction of, fuck off, I don't I don't recognize you as being someone I should care about anymore, or it's, like, a great deal of pain and fear and anger and, and sadness and grief that she should be working through in a much more emotional sense. And, like, part of that is just, like, whether or not she believes this is Anakin at all, whether she knows he was redeemed, whether she believes he was redeemed, like, what that even means to her. Like, these are really important things. Like, did, did mm -hmm. Luke ever tell her? Also, by the way, given what she says about <laughs> Vader and, and Anakin, because obviously later on, you know, in this scene, in, in, sorry, in this episode, when Anakin's like, oh, you're, you're more than that and I'm more than that, and her response is like, oh, no, you're just a monster, basically, which sort of confirms that it should be the Leia reaction. But part of the funniness of that is, like, didn't she tell Luke that she was he was just like his father? Which, in retrospect now, <laughs> with this context, holy shit, was that an insult? Yeah, yeah well, like, that's... what the fuck do you mean? <laughs> Maybe that's why yeah. he gave her that look. Like, like what the fuck? Why, the, yeah, this like, doesn't also a child murderer. Yeah, like this doesn't add up. The the reactions that she has to Anakin, um, not only to his lessons throughout the flashbacks, but even the initial response, like you said, like, she should be like, "Why? Why did you try to kill me?" You know, like all all of that kind of shit. It's it just, I, I don't know. Like they, it's weird that they don't really go near the fact that she had met. Luke and surely he would have talked to her about some of these things. Um, it, it, it's also but, confusing. Like I, I don't really. Also, the the, the lack mean... of contrition from Anakin is kind of funny because there's a bit where she's like, you know, where she's like, "You're a monster." And he's like, "Oh, is that what this is about?" And he just sounds annoyed. And I'm like, "Yeah, Anakin, that's kind of important." <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, well, well, yeah it's just past that. Well, yeah, it's weird that it takes. Like, yeah, they meant that gets brought up, but it's weird that it takes that long for that to get brought up rather oh, yeah. than like yeah. right away. Well, because the show has to waste time. Yeah. Well, I, I guess the way you could have gotten around that was just be like, you know, if Ahsoka didn't really believe that was Anakin, if she's like, oh no, this is like, maybe I'm going crazy, maybe this is all in my head. And then like, that's the point when, like, you know, he brings that out when she suddenly realizes, like, no, this is actually Anakin. This is somehow Anakin is back. Because, I mean, does she even know about Force Ghosts? <laughs> depends on what Luke told know. her. That's really all I can say at this yeah. point. It's like, it just depends. On... The thing is, that, like, this episode deals with the whole thing, like, the whole concept of legacy and stuff. And, like, if Luke told her what happened, 
I don't know why she would believe that Anakin's legacy is ultimately one of death and destruction and not of, you know, saving the galaxy and redeeming himself and like, you know, helping restore the Jedi order in a sense. It, it's really you frustrating. One of like the first things that she would ask, Hey, the son of the, my, the, my close personal friend that, you know, you saw him last time uh, I did before his death. It, what happened to him? Like how, how, what happened? Could you tell me? Did you it's not ask like, any of these questions? Yeah, it's like the Mandoverse would have us believe that during the meeting that she had with Luke, the subject of Anakin just never came up. That's what it feels like. It's like, yeah, I, other, I don't other, buy that. Other, I don't buy that at all. Insult. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> does Luke not have any questions about like what happened to Vader during the prequels? Well, also, like, do, you not think Luke, do you not think Luke would be like really interested to talk to Ahsoka as someone who knew his father for years before he yeah, had anything? What he's saying, yeah, like he would be so he, he'd want to hear every single story Ahsoka could tell him about what he got up to in the Clone Wars, what he was like, you know, like what kind of things. Oh, yeah, there's a time that uh, he kept fucking Padme and uh, everyone uh, he thought no one knew, but yeah, we all knew this entire time because canonically <laughs> Obi Wan knows, yeah. Well, Ahsoka knows too, she yeah, says she does as know. Much. They, they all five. know that Padme and Anakin were fucking this the whole time. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be fair, they weren't subtle about it. So. <laughs> she, she's like, there was that one time that he sold me into slavery, but that was just for a mission. <laughs> <laughs> he sold a fucking minor. He was like, what was she, like 16, 15 at the time? She was like 15, yeah. yeah. In a, was like like a scandalous fucking slaved costume into slavery. <laughs> well, I like the, the, you know, I, I, Luke's like, so what was my dad like before he turned evil? And she's like, well, that was that time he like strangled a prisoner of war. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no wait it's so... no it, it's, it's that walter white meme where he's like see you were always like this yeah <laughs> no so clarity the comment from uh clarity 2199 they just stood next to each other and stared for months without a question coming up i mean in this like mandoverse <laughs> that's been created i wouldn't put it past them for that to be the case well, like in they, this mandoverse yeah. that's canonical like it can't be yeah. anything else Exactly. It's just, I don't buy that. I don't buy that both characters wouldn't have like a million questions for each other. Which I guess brings us neatly onto the topic of, so everyone, what was Anakin's lesson? Great question. Because no, no one seems to know. <laughs> don't I have no fucking give idea. <laughs> you give you, up and you, you should, die. You, you have to fight to live. Fighting is bad, but it can also be good. But you should, you need to live. And then she says, I want to live. Uh, get busy living or get busy dying. I, well, I so that's goddamn right. I shall, shall I shall I tell you what I think they were going for, and then tell you all the ways in which I think they failed utterly to pay that off? Um, sure. So <laughs> what I think what I think they were going for is the fairly quite obvious one of Ahsoka is worried that she'll never be anything more than a warrior, that and that being a warrior only precipitates like a cycle of violence and pain. That you know, being a soldier yeah. condemns you to always be fighting a war, and wars are bad. Very simplistic, but that seems to be what they're going for. Now. Yeah. They kind of pay that, I'll pay that off because they don't pay it off, but they kind of hark to that interpretation, I think, a little bit when uh, we have the, the wounded clone scene and then we have this whole like Ahsoka is being unwilling to take responsibility for leading others to their deaths, even if it's in a worthy cause, right? Um, and what, which, like, sure, I guess, fair. The, the, the problem um, here is like twofold. The first is like Anakin's lesson, presumably, therefore, should be to vocalize the idea that, like, yeah, sometimes you only have bad choices. But you still have to choose. Like you know, inaction is a choice in itself, and it's a very selfish one. And like, just because you don't want to fight, you know, if you don't fight and evil rises, you're responsible for what happens. You know, ultimately. Um, mm -hmm. But like, so Plus there is the, a, there... It's the civil war, like Spider-Man thing. Like, yeah. you have the powers that I have, and you and the bad things happen. And you didn't do anything about it. You know, then it's your fault. Yeah, and the thing is, like, if, if that's what they were going for, there were some really interesting things they could have done. So, for example, like, maybe Ahsoka could see, you know, maybe she's like, the reason I don't want to fight is that I feel like if you keep on fighting, that becoming Vader or something like Vader is the inevitable result. Like, if, if, you just, if you're just if you stuck in this cycle of violence where all you know how to do is fight, eventually you become so lost in battle that you no longer know why you're even trying to end it. Like, you only exist for the battle. You're, just, you're helping to keep it going at that point. It's almost like that thing in, in uh, Civil War, right? Not Civil War, sorry. Um, Age of Ultron, where Cap is trying to like go, oh, everyone you know, put their weapons down. And Ultron's like, oh, Captain America, pretending you could live without a war. Um, you know, like, hmm. that, that's, that, that's her fear. Almost like this dichotomy of like, knowing when you have to pick up a sword, knowing when you have to fight, which is like the Anakin part, and then knowing when to put it down, which is the, the Luke part, and would have been 
the perfect point to bring in Luke and how this and how he relates to their understanding of each other. Um, but none of this is paid off. It's none of this is adequately set up. Nothing in the series in general has addressed Ahsoka's issues at all. So there can be no meaningful growth because there's been no meaningful place for her to start that growth from. Well, um, also her, her view of Vader is incredibly mm -hmm. simplistic and reductive. The only um, the only thing that we have la to latch on to for the from the previous episodes um, would have been the fact that she mentions uh, she left Anakin and she left Sabine as well. You know, you have a little bit of that connective tissue, which I think they should have honed in on um, rather than like trying to muddy the waters with like a million different lessons. They should have, I think, honed in on the fact that she feels guilty that she's going to let down people around her. She feels like she let down Anakin and he fell to the dark side as a result. And the same thing's going to happen with Sabine. Sabine is lost without her. Well, um, and well, then that's she like it. feels like she let Sabine down already. She even apparently yeah. is responsible, at least according to Sabine, for the death of Sabine's family. Um, also, like, yeah. So okay. that's what they that's what they should have focused on. They should have honed in on that yeah. rather than like the five other the, lessons. No, well, no, the, no, pro wait, the problem wait, wait, is wait, wait. stop, 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 stop. Rewind. What the fuck was that about the family? Oh, her family's dead because uh, so says, we're told. Sorry, go on, Chief. Balin says to Sabine in episode four um, that her entire family is dead because her master didn't trust her. And this seems to be something that Sabine fully believes is the case. So whatever happened to Sabine's family, which we're still not entirely sure about, was apparently, at least according to Sabine, uh, something that Ahsoka is out fault for in some way. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, I, missed I know. this completely. Yeah. It's it's not good. Yeah. Uh, also, <laughs> also uh, Odrin, like here's the thing, like in the abstract, I agree with you, but the problem is because the way in which they set up the whole like uh, you know I'm I'm scared of failing people theme, like because of how threadbare that was, it actually doesn't even it doesn't connect. It actually contradicts this theme because this theme is I don't want to fight because I feel like by fighting I'm just going to contribute to more death and violence. No, no, I, I agree. What what I'm saying is that like they should have not even done the whole fighting theme at all. Like I'm totally agreeing with you. The the whole fighting thing is it doesn't connect with uh, any of what little setup we had, what little threads well, we had. Uh, I guess from my point the is like episodes. it's 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 not just that it doesn't connect; it's that it outright contradicts. Because one side of it is I don't want to fight because fighting leads to to death, and the other side is yeah. I'm afraid of doing anything well, because apparently that also leads to death. So she's afraid of action and inaction at this point. Yeah. Well, so what I what I was gonna get into is that. Um, Again, we have that gap in Ahsoka's story that absolutely needs to be filled for any of this to make sense, which is what she was doing during the OT, where she and Sabine were during the Mandalorian Purge, and what happened that caused Sabine's family to be killed. Um, and what you could have done, if you want to do this arc where she doubts herself, she doubts her legacy, she doubts what she might become if she continues to like uh, constantly fight, is uh, maybe the reason that Sabine's family was killed in, in whatever way like happened because maybe uh, like Ahsoka doubted herself or she gave into fear or she did something Anakin like where maybe she was more fixated on the war and on the fighting than saving the people that needed to be saved uh, something to that effect right and then you could actually show this in the flashbacks instead of just bringing us to these battles that we've already seen before and re retelling essentially the same the same stories um, that could then feed into her saying like yeah Ultimately, I'm becoming just like you, or at least, like, if I continue down this path, I will. And I don't. I am afraid of that, and I don't want to do that. Yeah, and you um, can also then link that link that very neatly know. to her feelings about Sabine as an apprentice, right? Because if it was the case that like Sabine's family died because Ahsoka prioritized to fight over over what you know over feelings and and family, maybe she's worried that like she, that's what she's going to teach Sabine to do. That Sabine is ultimately going to prioritize the fight over family. Although <laughs> the last episode really spits in the face of that one, eh? <laughs> Uh, Sabine <laughs> very clearly does not. Sabine very clearly does not prioritize the fight over the people she cares about to an almost hilarious degree. Um, in fact, she well, I, and I mean that, that could even kind of inform. That could even kind of inform a lot of the way Sabine uh, like feels in the show and the way she acts is that like she used to prioritize the fight over the people that she cared about. She used to be st like steadfast in her belief that it that um you know you have to put aside your personal feelings in order to do what's right or whatever and that got her family killed and maybe she's not willing to let that happen with Ezra um yeah. even if it means giving over like like uh, the means of Thrawn's return to the empire so you still have to do a lot of like, legwork yeah. but i'm saying like you could lay the groundwork for it there right you could try like, get, yeah 
you could try and lay some groundwork. I guess the problem is like that is such a 180 shift that I just don't. It's, it's, this is almost the Luke problem again. Like, could you have made Luke a hermit successfully with enough setup? It's like you could have, but the problem is like it's extremely difficult because of the, the very fundamental nature of who Luke is. And I'd, I'd argue what the you know thematically, why would you even want to? What's the point of that? What's what? Why is it worth doing that? And the same thing would be true with Sabine. Like, yeah. Sabine, Sabine being like, oh, I've learned to go the other way and prioritize the immediate people I care about, even to the exclusion and deaths of millions of other people, and also Hera and Zeb and Jason. <laughs> um, at that point, I'm like, no, you're, you're completely insane, Sabine. And in fact, as we'll get on to the next episode, Sabine has gone beyond being insane and is now outright villainous. Um, but Malicious. we'll get there when we get there. No, no, yeah. no, 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 uh, Jolly, you, you must understand, because it was the only choice she could have made, okay? Oh, f- Fuck off! <laughs> yeah, that that opening scene of episode six annoys the hell out of me. It annoyed yeah. the hell out of me when uh, Hera tries to defend Sabine in like the fact that she selfishly stole the map when she agreed to not do that fi- that exact thing like five seconds before it was then stolen from her, and she nearly got herself killed. It's like Hera, stop the fucking defending her and this bullshit. It's stupid. Yeah, I, I agree. F- one. One final point on the world between worlds before we move on to the rest of the episode. And what happened there is just like, I just love it how how death just doesn't mean anything anymore. Like even before we get to like zombies <laughs> and night sister magic, like we have a character who's been resurrected from actual death fully corporally three times. The first time by the introduction of a literal god, the second time by introducing actual time travel, and then the third time by having mm. a literal god essentially drag her through that time travel mechanism. And I'm just like, well, why should I ever be afraid of her dying? At this point, she's just going to become the new god. That's what I was saying. It's like either Anakin saved her and then sent her back and then she's she's fine. Or she actually died and was resurrected. Either way, like, how am I supposed to give a shit anymore if Ahsoka dies? I can't can't ever believe she's really gone. Well, you know what's kind of No one's ever really gone. People people always like to uh, bring up the Gandalf the White connections. Uh, The fundamental difference here with Gandalf the White is that we know right from the outset, the moment that Gandalf returns, we know that he's on, like, borrowed time. He's only here long Mm -hmm. enough, you know, basically to complete the task of stopping Sauron. Um, But, like, if they were to do something similar there with Ahsoka, where, like, ever since she got saved by uh, the daughter or whatever, um, it's like she's going to die once she fulfills some sort of task. I mean, the problem is, I don't feel like Filoni actually has that, like, in mind. Well, like, also, when, at this when point, he did that. that means that she's lived more the majority of her life on this borrowed time. Well, yeah, like, exactly. Her, she, more life's been spent on it than out of it. Yeah, and, and if, like, his post-TROS comments are to be believed, she might hypothetically survive, like, into the sequel era, which means that she's outlived, like, the entire Skywalker family. Which is like, yeah, that's some borrowed time, isn't there? Well, like, given that the world, given that the world between worlds allows her to communicate in the Force even when not dead, she might be alive as of the end of the Rise of Skywalker. She might just be in another galaxy. Who the fuck knows? We do know that her, yeah. her ghostly voice appeared with all the rest. So, yeah. Well, I mean, voice, maybe, though, maybe, maybe, maybe they're all hanging out in the world between worlds. <laughs> I just hate this idea <laughs> that she she is Ahsoka the White. It's just like Gandalf. Uh, like, fuck God. off. Literally, yeah. well, again, fuck once, once again, that, Filoni have an original idea challenge level impossible. <laughs> but he, he, for some reason, he but, thinks but, this but is it, meaningful. But it's just he, 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 but like Gandalf is an actual character, and like his death and resurrection was meaningful and had weight. And also, he's not even. She's not. Like, G- Gandalf's resurrection is only possible because he's literally like an angel. Like Boromir isn't coming back. You know, like we were. I was never yeah. watching Two Towers going like, well, now that Gandalf's back, I guess anyone's back. Whereas with Ahsoka, I'm like, well, Anakin mm-hmm. could just save anyone at any point, for any reason. He could. No one could die. Yeah. yeah. I think three is definitely pushing it, like in terms of resurrections. I mean, one is pushing, one is pushing it. Pushing th- it. Th- yeah. By, yeah. By three, I'm just like, what are you doing, you complete idiots? <laughs> yeah. Crazy. It's getting ridiculous at this, this point. Oh, was a religious experience for Filoni. I mean, I'm, I'm, we're two steps away from like having one of those like resurrection Vita chambers from like Bioshock, where like we literally see like Sabine's head get cut off and then she just walks back around the corner again. Like she's like, she like President <laughs> Nixon, just a head in a jar. <laughs> like, just, you know, it's like Dude, lo- rumors of my death were greatly spirit. exaggerated. <laughs> but with with the, I think it's funny that he said, "Okay, look, 
I, I've got rid of the ending of Rebels, where she, you know, get her the fuck out of the, the cloak. She's not Ahsoka the White. She needs to earn that. And we're going to have this show <laughs> where she earns how she's Ahsoka the White, and then just puts on and a, I think a white it, robe, and then that's it. Nothing I changes. think it's really funny, too, because in the Rebels epilogue, originally, the context was that she died and came back, and that's why she was Ahsoka the White. Like, this was already her second <laughs> resurrection, um, you know, yeah. and so... So she's clearly different from it, or like the experience has changed her or whatever. She's a soak of the white now. But now it's like, no, no, no we're actually going to undo that so we can have her then do it again. Uh, but this time, even even worse somehow. And then and then, she, then she'll be a soak of the white. And it's like, okay. Also, for the person in the comments being like, could, uh, but why? For the person in the comments being like, well, Loki has died double the times as Ahsoka has. Like, yeah, and it got to the point where like it was a fucking joke, and they even like they, they even lampshaded it. Like, we got to the point where the films were like, oh, no, you know. Old Loki, he's not really going to be dead, is he? Like, well, and I think the thing is that the, it made it the most impactful that he actually died for real in Infinity War because everyone was like, "Well, he's coming back, surely, surely," and he never did. No, well, then, you well, then, then, the then he did. Because... That's, I mean, at least that's a different version of him. <laughs> I don't know, man. I just yeah the point with the white robe as well is like you have to, you know Gandalf the white represents a, an attainment of new knowledge a, a next step in the journey with the circus like we can't even agree on what the lesson Anakin was trying to teach her was and even if we like and, and the lesson the most like logical lesson we 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 supplied for the writers who didn't do it themselves is not thematically paid off it's not thematically thematically supported so what has she learned I'm fucked if I know I have no idea um, fighting yeah, can like... be good sometimes I guess. Like, like she didn't it, already it would know be... that. Like she hasn't saved all sorts of people by fighting. Like she hasn't done more good than harm by being a warrior. Like what? What is this lesson? I don't know. Yeah, that like... Dave has already turned Ahsoka into basically a paragon, uh, where she's like she's pure good, she's like pure skill, and at that point he's kind of stunted her in ways that he doesn't know how to write. Because there's way, plenty of ways that you can write a paragon, and there's many Superman stories and plenty of stories in like superhero um, worlds where they've managed to take a character who is just very powerful and very pure of spirit and don't, doesn't have many flaws and write them into stories where they have to face very difficult challenges, which is very unique to tackle with that kind of character. But Filoni just seems to write Ahsoka... Well, now she doesn't have any flaws... He, he doesn't know what to fucking take her with what to learn. She just learns an arbitrary lesson, like she's in the middle of the fucking Clone Wars. Like this, that was most of the Clone Wars format, where she's like, "Oh, this week Ahsoka's going to learn about patience, and this week she's going to learn about not disobeying orders, but the way that she learns that is by instead taking the orders instead, while well, giving them out. That's the Ryloff Storm of Ryloff one." And yeah. it's a very basic way of having a character grow. It's just, here's a basic lesson of the week. And now he's like, okay, don't die. Well, yeah, at it's, least, it's, thank it's, you. It's, that's something. Well, and uh, it's, okay. it's amazing way, that, like... Well, hang on, hang on, most, let Odrin talk. Because Odrin's been I was just going to say, yeah. The, Sorry. It's just amazing that, like, the most obvious setup um, that we've had since Malachor, since her fight with Vader, the, the only real connective through line that we've had is she is afraid of getting close to anyone of wanting to train anyone because she's afraid of letting them down like she did with Anakin. Uh, hence why she doesn't want to train Grogu. Hence why uh, she like let down Sabine or whatever. Like th there's one obvious setup that you could go for and Filoni managed to not even like do that. Yeah, he So like, I, I don't, <laughs> sorry, and go if, ahead. If, if but, uh... Sabine really did believe Ahsoka was responsible for the death of her family, why isn't she more pissed off at her? Good question. Mm -hmm. We yeah, no, we got into all this like... in the last stream. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, by the way, dead. I, I think we are meant to take it that she was physically in the water the entire episode, either like that she was dead or that this was all a dream or something. Because like, uh, and we're going to get to like the, the chopper Jason Hera stuff in a second. But like, there is that part where Jason comes in to Hera and is like, hey, chopper picked up a life signal. Uh, you know, you're going to have to go to these coordinates and go really low. And like, that's apparently Chopper is sensing Ahsoka. This happened well before she finished her lesson and then came back from the world between worlds. So he was detecting life signals from inside the ocean 
as as early as like five minutes before, like five show minutes before uh, the, uh, the her, she actually gets pulled out from the ocean. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that, that's a good point. Yeah, to breathe seawater is a power only one has achieved. But if we work together, Sheev, I know we can discover the secrets. <laughs> So the joke that I'm giving was a Fisto the entire time. Hang on, hang on. There was a super chat. chat, There there was a super chat. I'm going to get to it in a second. But the joke that I'm going to make in my video is like, you know how people are saying that like, oh, it doesn't matter that she didn't used to have psychometry. She just learned that. I'm basically just going to be like, yeah, it doesn't matter that she didn't used to be semi-aquatic. She just learned that. (laughs) (laughs) She she, uh, she Uh, really followed in the footsteps of Kit Fisto. (laughs) So also here gave me a five pound super chat. Thank you very much. Hi, Sheev. Just wanted to say I love your content and found your Andor view really inspiring to not drop out of my college course. Keep being you. Thank you. And yeah, good. Keep at it. Seriously. Um, I'm glad I was able to influence you in that way. That's that's really nice. Oh, this poor lad. Apparently he doesn't know that you're just a grifter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could have dropped he doesn't out. Know you could have dropped out. Yeah, you could have dropped out of college to become a YouTube grifter. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't do that. Done what speaking, I, don't, speak, please speaking don't do that. Speak, speaking as someone who teaches at university, I'm begging you not to do that because I need a job. So, you know, please mm. come and learn. <laughs> well, speaking as someone who didn't go to college because he figured he'd take off on YouTube, don't don't take that gamble. Get get a good Did degree really? and then and then maybe well, it was it was a little more than that. I didn't have the money nor the the time or the will to go to college, but I was like it's fine because I'm just going to get fair. Just gonna take off on YouTube. It'll be fine. The American education system at work. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but yeah, but don't do well, that. That's, that's not a good I mean, idea. To be fair, at least American schools aren't crumbling by the hundreds. Mm. So. <laughs> the fun thing is, is that I, I, I didn't know how much American university cost until I talked to my my girlfriend about it, and she she showed me the cost. It's like the fuck out. You you're paying how much? I only pay nine thousand yeah. a year. Like the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I don't even want to think. I mean, like I pay more because PhD fees, but, but like when I was first like going to uni, I remember my school were like, we think you should also like try out for the American university. So they put me forward for like SATs and to do like, you know, to go for like Harvard and places like that. And I was like, cool, how much would that cost me? And they're like, yeah, something like a hundred grand. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you know what? I'm good. I'm fine, actually. Yeah, no, college <laughs> tuition, at least in America, is pretty bad. Yep. So like you got to either get a fucking scholarship in high school or you're screwed. Or you, or you take out student loans and pay them off until you're in your 30s or 40s. Used to be free well, here. I mean, I, sa- I saved a ton of money by going to like community college for two years and then transferring, so that definitely helped. Yeah, yeah that's how um, I lasted it. But um, yeah. you know, in Scotland, it's still free, and I'm really jealous only, of my only if you're friends. Only if you're Scottish, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I well, yeah, in Scotland, an, it would an, be free for s- Scottish people. That that's just makes sense. What about like my point is like so there used to be a thing when when Britain was in the EU that like EU citizens could also apply to Scottish universities for free and speaking as a as a Frenchman that was really helpful I can't do that anymore so now I have to work <laughs> loads of jobs and have grants and things thanks voters you fucks um, anyway that's just my business democracy doesn't work I just thought it'd be really <laughs> funny to say college is a sham while on a stream with a college professor <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Right, so anyway, there's a to get back into the hilarity, so the first Jason caught a wave, you know, after the World Between Worlds, when we first come back to Jason, Carson Taver says something really fucking funny. Carson Taver's <laughs> like, so, Senator Organa is covering for us. And I'm like, Leia mm-hmm. knows about all this? Leia knows. Yep. Mm-hmm. She didn't yep. tell Luke. Also, by yep, this yep. point, Leia herself has canonically been trained as a Jedi, so she should oh, really yeah. care about this. Well, you know, she only did it for like a few weeks and then she gave up. I don't fucking know. I don't remember right. Well, e- every well, that's pretty consistent. I mean, everybody who Luke teaches uh, ends up either dying or just fucking off because he's or such just a leaving teacher, him. Apparently, so yeah, <laughs> that's he's thanks really for that. Bad Thank at you, this. Disney Canon. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate that, Disney Canon. <laughs> yeah. Also, just yeah, a quick yeah, she... Yes, 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 John Monroe. Yes, John Monroe in ta- in Scotland, the taxpayers do pay for it, and that is a good system. Mm. I, I, I'm so t- mm. side note. This is not just limited to Americans. It's also a thing that happens in some places here and obviously elsewhere. Like, I'm really tired of people like acting as though taxes are like some grotesque imposition on their life, rather than just the fabric by which society fucking functions. Anyway, well, it, it's more about like <laughs> thing where taxes 
like when they're being misused that's the problem like of the like, every yeah but that's true of anything for your ro- yeah that is true that, that is very true it's like oh you know this is bad because the taxes the government might misuse your taxes like whereas private companies never misuse your money <laughs> I don't know. It's it's also fucking stupid. Anyway, I don't want to get bogged down on that because it's just wow. Really Jolly's angry, getting so. political. <laughs> this is a stream about Ahsoka, and we're talking yeah. about the education system and fucking taxes. Yeah, <laughs> I mean to be fair, it's more it's more interesting than Ahsoka. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone who complained about the taxation of trade routes and Phantom Menace being boring, bet you wish we were doing that right now instead oh, of Ahsoka. Please bring that back, please. I'm begging you. <laughs> no, but uh, real quick about the uh, the Leia thing. Um, I mean, part of me feels like, at, at the very least, I'm glad that they have finally tied one of those people in, you know, because it's what we said in the first episode. It's like, why the hell is Luke not being involved in these discussions? Why is Leia not being involved in these discussions? I mean, apparently she is because she's the one who's stalling for them, like in the Senate, I guess. But again, I'm like, why is she not like more involved? Stalling. Like, I, Sorry. Sorry. Um, no, I was making a SpongeBob reference. It was stupid. Uh, but the no, I don't. I don't know. I I still stand that she should have been on uh, Mothma's small council. Oh, oh yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, like the, the just that the show is acknowledging that she exists and then is like, yeah. So where where is she then? Exactly. She yeah, she Why should she be more that? involved. The Luke should be more involved. The two of them, like. Hmm. I mean, well, and fuck it. Now, now we know. Now we know that Leia knows. So where's Han? Where's Chewie? Where's any? Are, are none of the OT characters at all invested in stopping the return of the fucking Empire? Apparently not. No. Just okay. any number of people, really. Well, like, Sabine I, I just... isn't interested in even stopping the Empire. So how is? How do you think anyone else is going to be invested? <laughs> I mean, the thing is, and we'll get to this in episode six. There's almost there's almost like a funny like flip side of this. I have no idea why Thrawn is invested in bringing back the Empire. <laughs> well, yeah, they can't. They well, yeah, can't go really near that it. subject. They can't go near that subject unless they actually try to do the whole Grisk thing, which I don't think Filoni has any intention of doing. No, they're not doing that. They're not touching <sighs> that. They're not. So yeah, to. why does he? Why does he care then? Why does he care so much about bringing back the Empire? I don't Who know. Who knows? Why, I mean, like, why do the Night Sisters care? Why do the, like, we'll get to that? We'll get to it. Yeah. For yeah, now, yeah. Uh, we'll Jason's. Jason's further contribution to this episode is like he can sense because he's force sensitive um, the fight going on in the world between worlds and he's like mom come here and a hero stands beside him and he's like listen I can and she's like what to the sea and it's like no there are lightsabers and she listens and someone uh, please clue me in on this because I wasn't sure what they're going for are they saying Hera could actually hear it it seemed like it yeah that was my interpretation so is she I mean, so is she's force sensitive too I guess everyone is no now. jolly it's one of, you don't it's seem one to understand. two options yeah, everyone can can access the force now, so it's okay. Well, it, it's one of two options. Either it's that, either it's her very, very, very like tiny force sensitivity that is allowing her to hear this, or for some reason, this location it has some sort of connection to the world between worlds. Like there's some sort of like I don't know space in between that allows you to get glimpses of what's going on in there. I it don't know. Sp- like standing thing, in the exact like, right you, you spot, someone. like. Go ahead. Be- because I guess they're right next to where Ahsoka got kicked off the cliff. I, no, don't, I don't know. It's like a phone signal thing. Like if you're standing in the exact right spot, you can just like vaguely connect to the world between worlds <laughs> hotspot. I'm, just, Im- I'm yeah. just imagining like, you know how back in the day you had to like wave your phone around like above your head trying to get a signal. They're just, like, <laughs> they're just doing that with Jason. We're like, they're just holding him over there. has been like, can you hear it now? How about now? Is it fainter? Louder? <laughs> oh, like, uh, Dag- Dag- Dagon's sp- Dagged spear. I kind of felt like Jason was connecting it to his mom, though the force does flow through all living things or whatever. So he's like a Wi-Fi router. He, yeah, he's a thinking. force router. <laughs> he a force connected router. her. He brought her into the Discord call or oh, the yeah. Skype call or whatever. No, just imagine Tava like hanging back, and then he like va- like faintly hears it too, and he's like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, the, <laughs> he, he won't find he out that his, like, that his great that his great grandfather was actually Mace Windu's second cousin's. Uh, Great grandfather. No, Carson Taylor's Carson Taylor's great grandfather was Urel Poof. <laughs> oh god, it's also depressing. Anyway, yes, <laughs> that happens. And then Carson Taylor's like, oh, uh, you know, here it's like, okay, we're gonna need to you to go and do like running your scans over the water. And Carson's like, okay, didn't we already do that? 
And she's like, yeah, but now it's going to be different because Jedi stuff. And Hoi Yang's like, yeah, uh, Jason's father was a Jedi. And Tava gives like a response, which is like a summary of exactly how I feel about the show. Where he just stares at Hoi Yang for a second and goes, all right, f- f- yeah, sure, fuck it. Yeah, let's go. But, uh, <laughs> oh, I, I, guess, I, I guess. That was like one of the more blatant like exposition dumps too, where they were like, yeah, I guess we need to let the audience know why Jason is force sensitive. And it's like, I don't think you need to tell us that. Like, that's one of the things that we don't really need much information on. We can just kind of deduce that for ourselves, can't we? Jason is force sensitive because Jason is force sensitive. The show does very little to reestablish a lot of what we're watching. Like, say, for example, anyone that hasn't seen Rebels and it's like it's only just seen like the Mando and the main films has got no idea who the fuck Thrawn is. And the way that they just say the word Thrawn, they expect everyone to already know. So they don't they don't reestablish Thrawn. They don't reestablish like who the fuck Sabine is. They don't reestablish who Ahsoka is very much, I, and they they barely even touch fucking Hera. And this is the, the one thing that they felt that they had to reestablish was that his the fucking thingy's parent was a fucking Jedi. Well, I, I was gonna say. I mean, maybe it's for the best that they don't try to like reestablish some of these things because apparently, whenever Filoni tries to do that, he does it in the most like ham handed way possible. It's like. His father, Kanan Jarrus, was a Jedi. Kanan Jarrus was a character from Rebels. Like, imagine if he had just started like going <laughs> super meta. That would have been funny. <laughs> he starts reading Kanan's Wikipedia page. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Born yeah, no, in the Kanan, year 18. Caleb Dune, so, known later so as Kanan is, uh... Jarrus, was a human male Jedi. Well, so what happened was like <laughs> Kanan left one of those like video diaries like Lando has in Solo, where like they just they pull it out and Kanan's like, the Kanan Chronicles, chapter one. There I was, with Hera, and like they just follow that the whole way through. I just, I, I'm, I'm so baffled by every decision that gets made in terms of what characters are introduced and expo- what exposition is given and what's known and not known. I just, the writers' room must have been fascinatingly terrible. Yeah, good point, uh, Von Lustre. I don't know where Zeb and Callus are. That's a good question. I guess Callus is still on wherever Zeb's people are from, right? Like he's on that planet, and Zeb is. Well, he was at Adelphi base, which is where Tava was. So I guess Zeb just doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Look, the amount of money made to, uh, you know, do the CGI for him and everything, it's too expensive. Um, can't do it. Yeah, the, fi- the Feige bot intervened and was like, we need that for Daredevil Born Again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to be great. Oh, it's going to be awful. It's it's actually it's kind of it's yeah, almost so impressive. The, uh, that, like, I don't know what's in a worse state now, Star Wars or the MCU. They're both so absolutely broken. I I think the MCU, but like, but I don't know. What well, I, I don't the know. The I mean, after this show, my, it's like, like that's the thing, right? The discussion I was having with my sister was like, what's worse, Multiverse of Madness or Ahsoka? And I was like, you know what? It's actually close. I, I, I that's a coin flip. I don't know which is worse. I actually think Ahsoka's worse than Multiverse of Madness. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm leaning that I, way, I have to say. I would say so, yeah. <laughs> Which I don't even know how that's How possible. can you guys call yourself Star Wars fans when all you ever do is hate? I saw that in the chat earlier. Well, hang on, hang on. I don't, I don't just hate. That's not all I am. You know, I'm, sometimes I'm like Anakin. Sometimes I kill children. Um... Sometimes I seethe <laughs> and sometimes I rage, which is completely different from hating, I promise. Occasionally, I cope as well, you know. And and, and if you're very lucky, you might catch me in a molding mood. Yeah, <laughs> Lasats hibernate this time of year. Callus <laughs> <laughs> is hibernating as well. He just joined in. He sort of <laughs> he's all snuggled up tribe. on him. Uh, anyway, yeah, they find they find Ahsoka in the water and they pull her out, and she's somehow not dead. And then we're told, is it one rotation? Like, so a day has passed. And then Ahsoka yeah. wakes up, yeah. and um, you know she comes ah! out and she's like, "What? Bald Ahsoka? Whoa. Oh yeah, bald Ahsoka. The, the grotesque hideousness oh, of bald Ahsoka." Oh, no. Um, and then the dialogue is really like bland. Nothing much happens here other than like uh, Ahsoka surprised that Jason's there, which like yeah, that is kind of surprising. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then so, uh, here is like, so where is Sabine? And Ahsoka's like, well, I've got this new great new force power that you should, that's going to be really useful called psychometry. I'll, I'll just go and touch the uh, the map, and it'll tell me everything about what happened with Sabine. I was like, that's uh, that's mighty convenient. She's going to touch the ball. <laughs> she touched the ball, and yeah, she touches the ball. She touches Sab- Balin's ex ball, and <laughs> um, finds out that Sabine betrayed them all. 
which is great. Um, which is then information that she does not relate to anyone else yeah. until, um, except for Hu Ying, and that's not till next episode. Yeah, it's. Uh, you think she'd then, be a little bit more pissed about that? Yeah, you really. Didn't, you, you would think, think, that. think that, wouldn't you? <laughs> like the way this that she is, so describes remember... it to Yuang, she just kind of sounds like she's just gone to fucking Tesco's and back, and she's forgotten the milk. <laughs> well, so here's the thing: is like, wait, she forgot the milk? Like, in episode oh, two, son of a bitch. <laughs> in episode two, Sabine, or in episode one rather, Sabine fucked up royally. She took the map, even though Ahsoka expressly told her not to because it could start another war. Uh, and then that got her stabbed and like all the evidence destroyed. And then Shin got away with the map. Ahsoka should have been pissed. Instead, she was pretty calm and pretty reserved. And, you know, like there was clearly like the implied tension between them, apparently. Like she was mad, but she wasn't showing it or something but she said things like oh you've done enough things like that and then you know throughout the episode Hera is like trying to talk to Ahsoka like you know you could give her another chance she's doing her best that that sort of thing and that's like the extent of it like when Sabine fucks up royally Ahsoka will be quote unquote mad but all it'll like it, it won't show you won't see that in her expressions at all you know and and the thing is, you want to argue like, yeah, well, she's stoic or whatever, and and she's trying to keep herself zen or whatever because she's a Jedi master, um, which is like, sure. Now, a good actor, and I know Rosario is a good actor, can do it to where you you can tell that this whole thing, this whole zen state that she's in, this calm you know demeanor that she's that she's keeping is all a facade, and that just beneath the surface, like she's ready to fucking burst, right? A good actor could subtly display that, um, that she's actually secretly really fucking mad and that she's trying not to take it out on Sabine. Um, uh, like uh, Now here like, it's like, like she has fucked everything up. Everything is, is completely over now. She had a chance to destroy the map and she didn't. And now Thrawn's coming. Um, so when they do inevitably reunite, I'm expecting an absolute fucking explosion from her, but we're not going to get one. No, we're not. Um, I'm well, willing to bet that Sabine will do at least one more thing before the show ends, which is just another thing, just royally cocking everything up. Oh, don't worry, she does. In the very next episode, she she commits to a course of action that is outright. <laughs> well, she she does something that's really fucking stupid, and then like later on, she commits to a choice that is outright villainous. Like, ah, oh, what have yeah. they done to Sabine? Well, and, Sabine yeah. has been dead for a and while. Speaking... And speaking of characters reacting to the things that Sabine does, um, I'm also hoping that Ezra is pissed off with her the next time, uh, like when he eventually figures out what happened. But that's that's again jumping ahead because we haven't seen how that plays out yet. Be, be really funny if it both happened at the same time, right? Like the way Ezra finds out is that Ahsoka turns up and is like, so Sabine betrayed us all. <laughs> well, Being a that's Jedi isn't I mean, meant they... to be a facade. It's meant to be an inner feeling of letting go. So I don't... I think that's no, kind of a no. misread of how Jedi are. Like they they have emotions and they feel things the same way that anyone else does, but like they are trained and they're taught to put those feelings aside. Um because but you know almost, there's no place for them as, as servants of the force. It's almost like it's not that they just don't reason. feel emotions. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's almost like, and I know Mando went back on this with Luke, but it's almost like Luke's entire arc and his rep, what he represents in terms of the Jedi and compared to the prequel Jedi was that the prequel Jedi got it wrong. They cut themselves off from people they should be caring about, and that led to disaster. Luke was meant to be something new, a new kind of Jedi, a real Jedi, much more in the mold of Qui-Gon. And, but no, we, apparently to be a Jedi means being a robot. Ugh, sure. What, yeah, being a, a and, fucking uh, Vulcan. Yeah. Well, and that uh, you know, someone someone made a comment earlier, but it, it was a while ago, and I could, I'm not going to dig it up again. But somebody mentioned the fact that like, uh, it would have been so much better, um, or so much more enjoyable to just have a series of Ahsoka and Luke trying to build a new Jedi, and like Balin and Shin trying to stop them. It's like, wow, you're <laughs> don't make me think of a better show than this. It sounds like a Sunday morning cartoon, but would probably be better than this. Yeah, yeah. I was say, like it kind of feels like a One Division, but just with Luke and, uh, and Ahsoka. <laughs> <laughs> they're just there homesteading for a while hmm. <laughs> but, um, oh, man. Yeah, I got anyway. really annoyed when uh, was it in Boba Fett that Luke goes to Grogu a small infant child if you choose attachment you're out of here you make one mistake <laughs> like, yeah, you're, you're, you're not you're the path your, of the yeah. Jedi you're out on your ass I'm going to send you on my X-Wing by yourself and I'm going to dump you on fucking Tatooine with some random person that I don't know. I will send <laughs> I'm R2 going to by himself 
It's because we all know that this is historically R2 by himself on Tatooine is very capable of taking <laughs> care of himself. Listen, infant, <laughs> do you want to go to a liberal arts college or to a trade school? Make your choice now. <laughs> <laughs> Shit's yeah, diaper. Grogu's like, Grogu's like, well, I would stay with you, Luke, but I can't afford the uh, the student loans anymore. So, <laughs> back I go. <laughs> but it's just funny the fact that he's making a child make a decision that's going to impact their entire fucking life. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like it's wildly out of character for Luke. It's almost like that's something <laughs> Luke Skywalker would never have done. Yeah. But yeah, it's just the Jedi. Mm. The whole point, I think, is that like the Jedi in general, uh, like these Jedi, the ones that we have now, Luke, Ahsoka, etc., uh, they shouldn't be behaving this way. They really shouldn't. Mm. Um, and it's it's just it's very strange. Um, and in this case, it just seems like cope. It seems like cope and an excuse to explain why Rosario and Ahsoka are not giving off like really any sort of emotion whatsoever. Well, I mean, be, be careful, Odrin. That word cope, uh, throwing it around, it can lead to all sorts of problems, so I hear. Mm. Um, oh, you, you, you card, you rascal, oh, you, you I know. scallion. <laughs> it's the N word of the debate world. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Grogu chooses chooses a shiny wink. shirt, kicks, kicks, gets kicked out of school, doesn't know why. <laughs> 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 I, I just like the idea that it's, like that, yeah, it's that scene from a. It's that scene from Return of the King where, like, uh, you know, Ahsoka turns up to Luke and it's like, oh, the Mandalorian left him the shiny shirt. And Luke's just like, hands off that shiny shirt. That's mine. <laughs> I'm just picturing Grogu saying that now. Those would be his first words, his like first ever words. I just find it funnier that uh, Grogu, uh, Luke looks at Grogu, he's like, do you did you know was it uh, Master Yoda and Gogu's like, this fucking child doesn't know fucking anything? It's like going to <laughs> like going to a black child and say, "Hey, do you know Mace Windu? You're both the same race, why?" Yeah, it was very yeah. strange. <laughs> hey, so, so, kind so, of like, Mace, it's like is, you, you're a black person. Here's Mace Windu's lightsaber. It's like you, you know how, as a joke, people like when a Rodian shows up in anything, people will be like, "Oh, it's a Greedo." Like that's a joke. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. Saying, that, that he is a Greedo. Well, it's, do you remember when um when when Din Jaren did that when he was like went to the Ugnots? It was like I knew Quill, and they're like, great. Who the fuck I is know that? <laughs> what is it with Star Wars is always being accidentally him. racist? Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, like and all the clones wearing a Soka face, and like I, I really yeah. like they did. They genuinely, they genuinely thought that was like really flattering. And she's like, wow, in Tegruta culture, that's really offensive, actually. <laughs> It'd be even funnier if Mace Windu just walked down the stairs one day and all the clothes like, look, sir, we painted that on this to look like you. Wait, maybe Ahsoka, the, maybe... Ahsoka shows up to oh, meet Luke for the first time and he's just like, oh my God, it's Shock T. <laughs> no, this is actually true. In, in a, yeah, uh, he did. In a canon book, like a reference book, he compared Ahsoka to Shock T. <laughs> wait, wait, really? Really? I didn't even see that comment. Yeah. Oh, oh, was that the the book of the Jedi or something? The Path of Jedi? That the book? Yeah, Secrets manual of the Jedi. Wait, what? <laughs> the of the Jedi, Jedi, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. I, I, I think oh, it's just every, it's everyone. Is, it's just everyone as well. Obi Wan is racist to droids in like uh, the deleted scene of Re Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> so like, everyone's just a racist. He's racist apparently. to droids in re in in the actual movies. Yeah, he is. <laughs> What the fuck? All Twi'leks are the same. Uh, all of Yoda's species are the same, you know? All of Yoda's <laughs> mystery species, yeah. Well, I, I can't, well, yeah, the thing is, Yaddle then came along and proved that Yoda could be speaking normally, but just chooses not to for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we should, like, let's, let's finish out this episode, and then we can have sure. a gap between them. So, yeah. yeah. Carson Tavis turns back up, and he's like, oh, Hera, so um, there are three cruisers on their way. The fleet's on their way. For, and he was like, "Oh, great! They're finally coming to help." He's like, "Oh, they're not here to help." Too. Yeah, and I'm like, "So that that whole thing in the last episode, or in episode three rather, when the senators were like, we can't spare the resources to like mount a mission against the Imperial remnants, but we can spare three whole battle cruisers to arrest one mutineering general who is probably going to come quietly." Um. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> I actually, Hayden guys. knows that Hera's not going to come quietly. Sure. I mean, okay. Well, so, well, and is it because, like, uh, yeah, I, I don't understand the logic. Is it because, like, oh, they're wasting resources? It's like, what resources? Like, uh, some fuel for X-Wings? Like, who gives a shit? 
Well, I mean, even if the argument is like, oh, we're stretched thin, like, you know, we ha we're, we're putting out all these fires in the mid rim, like the Mando said, right? Like, there's all these pirates and stuff, and, like, we don't want to spare on what we think is a wild goose chase. That's fine. But then you can't have three cruisers turn up in the next, like, couple of episodes just because. Well, and I don't even know that I accept mm. that anyway, because it's like, Hera was just, like, chilling at, at, like, their fleet, and they weren't doing anything. They were just kind of sitting there. Like I don't know why you couldn't just send a few of them to go. Like why it wouldn't it would be not allowed to just send a few of them to go check it out real quick. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it was. She was like basically Mon Mothma knows that if you if you tell Hera about danger, she will bring Jason there. So like in, in you know <laughs> to keep him to keep him safe, we're just gonna tell Hera that nothing's going on right now. <laughs> keep her. What? Keep, keep her she open. actively like she actively like uh, distracts Hera from going on missions because she's afraid for Jason's life. Yeah, it's like the last time we She's sent you on a mission, like we told you behind the scenes to adopt him. Yeah, it's like last time well, we went on a mission, we told you there was a minefield, and you sent Jason out first. Well, and you know, <laughs> and Hera's like he has the force. He was gonna sense where the danger was. It's like he's missing both his legs now. All right. Yeah, Hera, like she is like complete. Bed. She she treats she treats her children in the same way that like fucking Odin from God of War Ragnarok treats his children. They're just like completely <laughs> utilitarian. Doesn't give a shit about them at all. It's like, you just have to serve my whims. Like Jason like comes out of the wow. ship. He's like, Can I, is it safe now? And he was like, oh, don't creep up on me. God damn. It's she like that, fucking that shoots Meg. at him. Get back! <laughs> <laughs> it's like that scene from Family Guy when Meg comes out and Peter just hits her in the head with a baseball bat. It's like, shut up, Jason. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> shut up. Well, and to the, and as for the point on, like, you know, if, if the idea that they don't want to send these ships because they want to keep their fleet in a defense in a defensive posture, like that argument doesn't work either because they don't think that there's like a, a realistic empire threat out there. Like, what are they defending against? Uh, like, it's, <laughs> Sorry. if they're not defending just... against anything, then why do they like? Why do they care if the ships are withdrawn from defending wherever? Sorry, I've just seen General Grievous' comment of like, is Jason safe? Is he all right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so yes, uh, the, 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 fleet, the, the entire fleet has turned up to arrest Hera, and they're like, what do we do? And Ahsoka's like, I've worked out a way to get to this other galaxy, which like, god damn, man, <laughs> okay. I was like, what's the, what's the plan, Ahsoka? Are you going to fix the map? Just, is that what's going to happen? I like, want to no, preface no. here that I tweeted on Twitter, I tweeted on Twitter that um, this was like unironically the plan that they went with and nobody seems to have a problem with that. And the the amount of cope that I received as as like uh, like arguments against that in uh, like from Ahsoka fans, like guys, please stop yeah. just accepting whatever you're given. I please yeah, I'm so not saying just... this to be a dick. I'm not trying to gatekeep. I'm like, please just have some standards. Well, let's 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 have examine exactly where this goes wrong, right? So the plan is Ahsoka is gonna go and speak to the space whales, the Pargol, who are pandily just around, and she'll convince the biggest mm -hmm. one to let let them hop her ship inside its mouth, and then it'll transport them via ludicrous speed, quite literally, to this other galaxy. Um, it'll know exactly where to go. It won't take any detours or go anywhere else that it's physically capable of going. It'll go straight there. Um, what a handy, handy Uber service this whale has become. But <laughs> other than the, obvi the obvious silliness of this goddamn scene um, and the accompanying really cringe Carson Tava tries to delay the, the fleet from arresting Hera while this is all going on. Um, Which is not funny. All like, yeah, it's really not funny at all. But there's something that Sheev brought up uh, before I did. But like, I have a second part to add to this, which is that apparently, in addition to being able to travel at ludicrous speed between galaxies, these whales must have like inertia dampeners in their mouth, because otherwise, the second it launched into like ludicrous speed, the ship that Ahsoka was in would come out the back of it like a bullet, um, mm -hmm. and Ahsoka would be dead, and the whale would be dead. So apparently, yeah, they have inertial dampeners in their mouth. A go figure. <laughs> Well, and the thing is, so I argued with my roommate about this because he's a huge Rebels defender, re like huge defender of the show. Um, not to put him on blast or anything, but I figured this argument was worth bringing up. He's saying that because these are creatures that have biologically evolved to the point where they can jump into hyperspace must also mean they have biologically evolved to the point where they have to be able to keep their food that they're digesting from shooting out of them 
uh, by some sort of iner inertial dampening system, like in their bodies. Like it has to be that way. Um, so, so there's so much to say about this. The first is like the, the idea that these things <laughs> biologically evolved to go into hyperspace at all is already very funny. But let's skip past mm. that because we've already talked about that and just talk about like the difference between. So, we can do this with humans, right? Like, if you swallow a sandwich and then you, I uh, put you on, and I strap you to the front of a bullet train, um, the sandwich, for all intents and purposes, is like part of you at that point. Like, it's mixed in with the rest of like your your fluids and organs, and like your acceleration and its acceleration are going to be, you know, you and it are going to be accelerating at the same speed because it's quite literally attached to you. Um, that is not yeah. true. If I put like if I put like a metal ball in your mouth or like a bullet in your mouth, um, and like somehow like you know somehow like hovered it on your tongue basically. And then I accelerated you very quickly to like hundreds of miles per hour. That bullet is going to hit the back of your throat at a, at the speed that you accelerated, because it's not accelerating with you, at least not until it hits the back of your throat and starts having some force applied to it. Um, because that's how inertia works. Uh, <laughs> there's a reason why there's a reason why spaceships have to have inertia dampeners. It's because if the spaceship suddenly jumps to light speed and you're not jumping into light speed at the same time, you're going to catapult into the back of the ship at light speed. Which will kill you, like obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so, and by the way, they're not sitting in the whale's mouth and in the whale's stomach. They are sitting in the whale's mouth. Um, so they're not like suspended in a liquid that is also traveling at the same speed as the rest of the of, of, uh, as, as the whale. You know, it's not having the same force applied at the same time. They're sitting on the top of its tongue, so they're just going to fly backwards. Because uh, yeah, obviously. Yeah. There's also, by the way, a side note here, which is like the other funny thing is that these whales are flying in atmosphere whilst not really moving. So these whales also have natural anti-grav, yeah. apparently. Like, is there anything these whales can't fucking yeah. do at this point? Because they don't, they don't have wings, so they're in atmosphere just kind of floating around. They can just do that, apparently. Just again, like, what we proposed the theory that this extragalactic race that we might be introduced to in the show bioengineered these creatures. Because it doesn't make sense that they would ever sense. evolve to be able to do the things that they can do. Or, you know what? I'll even throw this out there. Since force gods are a thing that exists, you could, like, just tell me that the Celestials fucking created them. I, I would accept that. I would accept it. I wouldn't like it, but I would accept it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, like, it's there, so you might as well tie it in. Yeah. And, and again, the whales are going to become relevant again in terms of, like, their ridiculous powers because, you know having all these powers makes their biological evolution nigh on impossible, but I would just argue it's just outright an impossibility. And so the solution, like, like Steve said, uh, that we proposed was that the reason they go to the same place that the Pridian map is, is angled towards is because the whales were literally sent by the, the species or were in some way the, lo the locomotive power behind that species travel, which does turn out to be sort of true, except that these whales are not engineered. They're apparently entirely natural and the Pridians just like hopped inside their mouth one day um, yep. Alrighty then, and like, it becomes even funnier when you find out who the Peridians <laughs> actually are. But we're yeah. we're getting ahead of ourselves. So yeah, they 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 barrel off at ludicrous speed. By the way, robbing Hera of her only witness to that might be able to like support her at her upcoming like court martial for mutiny. So I guess Hera's just well, fucked. But there's a threat. There's a clear and present threat. So wait, another thing about this too is that like Ahsoka admits that she has no idea if the whale even knows where to take them. This oh is, yeah, there's that. What is this plan, guys? She so doesn't she even know where to, they're going. She spoke to the whale and was like, can you go to ludicrous speed? And the whale was like, yes, I can. And she's like, great, I hope you do that in the right direction and get to its mouth. See, and so I guess it's worth getting into, like, I always assumed that the ability to, uh, like, you know, talk to animals, I guess, through the forest, the way Ezra is, is proficient in doing, and we've seen other characters do it too. Uh, like Anakin tamed the Reek in Attack of the Clones, that sort of thing. I always assumed, at least, that there was some sort of universal communication that both, like, a, like sort of a, almost a language within the Force or whatever that both uh, human and animal could understand and that they could understand each other. Um, if not, like, outright talk to each other in this in this language, then at least, like, have a have a fundamental understanding of e of each other's intentions Wait. and what Hang they on, and what they're trying to do. Sorry to interrupt you, Shiv, just because like ugh, this is worth explaining. So comment pro last media, um, and Dagan Spear just underneath you. There is a reason this matters, right? And so first of all, uh, 
you can't like it's not just you can just jump to spaceships uh, warp in spaceships and be fine the spaceships have to have inertia dampeners that's a canonical part of their design that there is a thing that stops mm. you from being splattered against the back of them like so much like wet paint um that is something they're mentioned they in actually, the films yeah they are actually mentioned in the movies these things exist they had to develop a technology to get around this problem now for why it matters that you keep an internal physics consistent to your world building it's because that's the most basic level of your world that's what sets the very binary, like the most basic elements of your stakes when you're creating the story. If if the, if that's just contradicted on a whim, then at that point, n n every, like the entire story just falls apart. It's not a story anymore. It's just a collage of random events. Um, mm -hmm. That's just like well, the thing so is, when you say things like Jolly, Jolly's talked to me about this before in terms of like with films like that deal in things like time travel, right? Like when the fundamental physics of the world are the world building in question. That is contingent on the rest of the story making sense. You have to make damn sure that it does make sense and that it doesn't contradict itself. Because if it does, then the world building is just intrinsically broken before you've even told the story. Yeah, and that's not to say because again, like I'm, I'm, I'm primarily gonna, my first video coming out soon is one on hyperspace and specifically the, the, you know, specifically the world building that we're currently discussing. But I have a larger one coming out on like why world building matters in general, where I talk about multiverse movies. And part of what mm. I say there is like when you have like. A film that has like a magic system or physics that diverge from our own world it you know it's not a fair ask to ask an author to like create a perfectly mathematical co mathematically coherent to the finest level model of physics to make that world possible that's just like not feasible it's not even feasible in our own world our own models of physics aren't, aren't that coherent um so what really matters then is like what the audience's attention is being directed towards and on what bits of your world building the plot rests right the example i gave to Sheev was like there's a bit in um, one of the later Harry Potters where they say like a unicorn hair is worth like eight galleons or something, but then in book one a wand is worth like five, which uses a, a you know uses a, a unicorn hair in its construction, which which seems to mean like, the economy is mm -hmm. broken. Now there are all sorts of reasons what, that you could ex use to explain away that discrepancy that makes sense, but we're not given them. However, so like in, in its you know so in the context we have, it's a plot hole. How, however, or, or rather, it's a world building hole. However, that world building hole is irrelevant to the plot. The plot in no way matters, like rests on it. It is just a, a, an inconsequential detail thrown out as part of like to flesh out the kind of like depth of the world. And therefore, even if it's broken, its effects do not extend beyond itself. The story is still intact. And like that's just generally true of like muddling world building in general. Like t backwards time travel is physically impossible for all sorts of reasons to do with like how motion even works. It's fine for you to make backwards time travel movies just so long as the internal rules make sense and you're not drawing the audience's attention to some fundamental principle that you then break on screen later, right? It's, it's, it's not a pet, we're not asking for pedantry, we're asking for consistency. That's all. Mm -hmm. So if you have whales that can do all these bloody things and there is no coherent explanation for why they exist, where they come from, or why no one else has exploited this incredible resource before, um, you have a problem, particularly if your entire plot then rests on the, on the capabilities that only these whales damn well have up until now. It's also just a very like, convenient. Just like, oh, we need to have this thing happen. Just whales. Just whales come in and they save <laughs> Lothal at the last moment and they uh, Ezra called them to do this and for some reason they just thought hey there's some ships here let's attach ourselves to them yeah. and we'll drag them to another galaxy and Ezra's like ah shit he, I'm stuck here people act like and it's... <laughs> people act like the the criticism of the episode where the Purgle are first introduced is that it's filler and therefore it's fine because it actually ended up paying off in the end and it's like that's not the reason that that episode's bad yeah, it's, I, it's I that you. they introduced this world breaking concept and again, that's just the thing that to round tweet I showed you. Hang on, where, um, hang on, hang on. Sorry, just, sorry, just want to round this because it'll take one minute. So, pro, pro lost meter again. Just uh, it was like, well, the, you know, the issue here is like it doesn't break suspension of disbelief. And I'm like, no, it does. That's the point. That's the point I'm making, right? This does break suspension of disbelief. If you stop to think about it for more than a second, it breaks your suspension of disbelief quite badly. Um, that's why it's an issue. Now, maybe it doesn't personally for you, and that's fine. That's a subjective perspective. However. Even those people, like most people I've talked to, have seen this episode, right? Casual fans, detailed fans, doesn't matter. Most people, when I've asked them, I've been like, "Yeah, there is something a bit off about the Purgle, or something that's bothering me. I can't quite put my finger on it, but it is like it nags at me when I watch the episode. It draws me out of the story. It is slightly annoying. In other words, it's damaging their suspension of disbelief. Even if they can't fully mm -hmm. articulate why, they are aware on the subconscious level that there is a problem here, that there is dissonance happening. That's why it matters." 
Ahsoka doesn't even know what the fuck she's doing, and then they're just like, oh, the space whales go get we're <laughs> off now. <laughs> Into the space whale we go, boys. It's plan. Yeah. It's like no, you were saying that the no, Night Sisters did this. Like the Night Sisters just jumped in the fucking space whale and we're gonna off. get to that. We're about to <laughs> we're we're gonna get to that when we get to episode six. But like you were saying something. Ah uh, shit. Um what what was something about a tweet? What was I saying? Oh yeah, oh yeah, the, the you tweet. Said something about a tweet. Like, you're, you're you're okay with the space whales and rebels, but you're not okay with it here, Sheev. Yeah, people said that to me, and I was like, I don't remember ever saying I was okay with them in Rebels. What? And, and, uh, and it always comes back to it's like, yeah, but you like this thing. It's like, yeah, I like Rebels, and I, I think a lot of it is pretty good. That does not mean that I think it's perfect, and that does not mean that I don't have any criticisms of it whatsoever. It introduced Purgle, and it introduced the world between worlds. These are two things that I think are pretty world breaking concepts, and they've gone they've gone on to do a lot of significant damage to the world it's okay to criticize those things even if i like the show oh my god sorry i just it just, it just keeps on it doesn't matter if there's like nothing ugh. you can't just have like oh the whales have one impossible ability therefore it doesn't matter if we add another that's not an <laughs> argument i'm sorry it's like oh yeah the whales can do one thing they should definitely not be able to do therefore it's fine if we add another insane thing that they can do it's like first of all no, that's not fine. And secondly, you do realize that like piling one mistake on top of another just increases the like the magnitude of how obvious the mistake is. Like the hyperspace ram in the last Jedi should have taught people this, but like in Rise of Skywalker, when they were then like, oh, it's one in a million, and then the last shot of the movie shows that someone did it again. Like <laughs> that makes it worse, and people understood that. Ah, <sighs> okay. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to leave that there in, with that in one. In science fiction, you can't just do anything you want to because that. Or, doesn't become particularly believable. What, it's just storytelling. You can't just do whatever you want to if, just because you want to do it. If the Purgle can go ludicrous speed, would that not imply that they can also brute force their way across anywhere in the galaxy uh, seemingly yeah, instantaneously? Can. That's, yeah, oh can. man, that, that's something. Yeah, you think people would have noticed that ability beforehand and that would be really something that would be exploited in 20,000 years, but oh well. well the, they didn't even Man. know the Purgle went to hyperspace until that one Rebels episode. How do they not know that? How have they know? Like, they did. You can detect this is big no, reveal that's not... at the very end. No, 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 You're, that's not true. Hera literally says that their ability to jump into hyperspace is what inspired the people in the, re in the galaxy to develop that technology. Are you sure? When's the last time you saw yep. the episode? It's been a very long time since I've seen it. I, I do remember seeing it's been a while, I saw the episode that. a couple of weeks ago. Well, I watched it a couple of weeks ago as part of my like research for my video, and I'm pretty sure that she's right. The thing is, I think you're right too, Shiny. I think she does express surprise at the end that they do jump to hyperspace, so it's just a contradiction in the episode. Because she expresses both points yeah, of view. Because yeah, I, I remember that exact moment where they're like, Oh my goodness, the Purgle can go to hyperspace, and everyone in the castle like, Oh my goodness. Yeah, I That's think that is I true. Remember. But also, Sheev is correct. She does reference at the beginning the thing about how they inspired hyperspace travel. Um, she I also mentioned her talking about how like she fucking hates them because they always cause like hyper hyperspace collisions by going into hyperspace yeah, lanes. Yeah, like pilots yeah, fear she, them they, because they they constantly like fucking cause crashes and shit. Yeah, they just wander into hyperspace lanes, which I guess makes sense, right? Because they don't give a shit about hyperspace lanes <laughs> if they can go this fast. Yeah, but then then it's a bit like trying to shoot a bullet with a bullet at that point. Well, no, yeah, it, I was going to say like it, <sighs> it seems unlikely that you would ever really it, like crash into a pergol, right? If well, no, like, so the, no, I, again, I I, I don't want to get sidetracked here because like again, whole video coming out on this and it, it, the math is complicated. But no, hyperspace is so much smaller than regular space, and the gravity shadows therefore loom so much larger that like it's actually like threading a needle going to hyperspace. There's very little places you can go in hyperspace where you won't just immediately be pulled out. So if a wandering pack of True. giant whales was to wander across your path, that's that's enough mass to pull you out, which means you'll hit them. Well, all right then. Where were we? Um, I think I think I, that's, I think that's the end of the episode, right? Because like, yeah, yeah, that's Ahsoka's plan, and then and then they take off, and then we cut to credits. Um. It, it, it's a disaster. <laughs> it's awful. And again, to, just to clarify my feelings on this, right? Like, because I've been getting quite vociferously upset and and irritated. Chat and commenters, all of them, even the ones I reference, you're not what's annoying me. Like, you're free to think what you think, and I, I value your input. And uh, it's gen genuinely nice to have you guys here 
as it always is. I'm just so frustrated with the state of storytelling, particularly when you see an episode like this that is so fundamentally like screwed on every level that I'm glad some of you can find something to pull out of it that you like. I really, I'm really glad for you. I'm really uh, genuinely thrilled. I just wish that like that was possible for everyone without having to wade through gargantuan piles of awfulness. I wish I could turn my brain Someone off. said, if Han has to calculate the road before going to hyperspace, don't the whales need to, or, or are they, I don't know what the rest of the question was supposed to be. No, that's what we're saying. If you can jump into hyperspace and go as fast as they're shown to go, you, like, you know, it, you it would be harder for gravity of, yeah. to pull you out of hyperspace. You can just brute force your way anywhere you want. Yeah, short of them running go. into like a black, short of them running into a black hole, and again, maybe not even then, depending on how fast ludicrous speed actually is, they can just ignore gravitational effects. Like, unless they literally jump into them like, right across a singularity, they could pretty much just brute force their way past anything. Um, mass would not be able to, not, yeah. no amount of mass would be able to pull them out. Yeah. So yeah, they can just ignore hyperspace. Well, hyperspace this lanes are really... say. Dave Filoni's just style of writing. He writes himself <laughs> into a hole. It's like, ah, shit. Oh, you know, the, the, the antagonists have got the map. What the fuck do the protagonists do now? Oh, I guess Ahsoka just comes here the next day, chops off a droid's helmet. It's like, well, this is be our next path. Oh, oh no, the, you know, the I... map's destroyed. And, and they, they've, they've gotten away with Sabine. And there's literally nothing the protagonists can do. How about they just I remember the mouth of a space whale? I remember, like almost begrudgingly theorizing that they were going to pull some stupid shit where like Ahsoka gets to the other galaxy through the world between worlds. I somehow think that might've actually been better than what we got. <laughs> yeah, this, this is significantly worse. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, uh, to be fair, to be fair, there is one positive to be pulled out of this, which is the fucking memes that have come out of her, like jumping in a whale are amazing. So I've seen like Giuseppe <laughs> from Pinocchio. I've seen like the one I'm going to use in my video is like Dory speaking whale from Finding Nemo. It was like Ahsoka's like, yeah. can you give us directions? Come back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get like the clip from uh, from Aquaman where he literally is like he and Mera are getting into the whale's mouth, and she's like, "What are you doing?" It's like, trust me, this works for Pinocchio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these you know what's funny is well, because someone kind of brought it up in chat, and I didn't mention it, but like it's. They were correct, which is the whales grabbing onto the chimera, like physically, and pulling it with them when they jump to hyperspace actually makes more sense than jumping in its mouth, because at least then inertia is accounted for. I mean, there's the other problem of the chimera well, not having functioning windows at that point, which means they should all be. Yeah, damaged, that's but... the thing. It's like, can that still factor into it if they have uh, no windows? Quote unquote. Well, the no windows thing should for kill them for different reasons, which is there is no air in hyperspace. Oh my. God, TK, why? <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> so, do you want to hear a defense that I've heard about the Thrawn's window in hyperspace? Oh my God, Please. go for it. Let's hear they, it. They told me to my face that we don't know that hyperspace is a vacuum. What? Oh. No, 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 no. So, uh, no, you I'll, can't I'll, do I'll, that. I wanna, I wanna... So hang on. So <laughs> hyperspace, hyperspace canonically a place that has no mass, right? No objects that have mass can normally enter hyperspace unless you're using a hyperdrive. But air could be in there. Uh, I, ex no, ex ex explain that one to me. The same person told me we don't know space is a vacuum because there's sound in space in Star Wars. Oh my god. We don't know space is a vacuum. We've just seen people get launched into space and die <laughs> because that's how that works. Well, no, because they also use the same reference for when they defended uh, Leia. Kill me. Look, here's the thing: like, the, the, there's a legitimate, funny point to be made about the sound in space in Star Wars being like, yeah, that implies there's air in space, and that's kind of hilarious. There are there are ways to argue around that. I would argue that they're a bit, a bit silly without you know justification to, to support them. However, I don't think it's a crime. Well, I think we all know that wait, it's supposed to be for our benefit. Wait, that's what that's one of those things I was referring to earlier with like the Harry Potter example I brought up, which is like that is an example of like, yes, that is a world break, but it's so minor and so inconsequential to any thing that happens that it's like it's you're it's it's fine to let it go. Like it's a problem, don't get me wrong. It, it is still a problem. Story. Yeah, but it's a very minor problem. Like it's it's one small blemish on what is otherwise like a very well crafted piece of media if we're talking about the OTs, the OT movies. See, and I always, and this could be just me uh, coping, 
but um, I always just interpreted it as part of the sound design, like part of the score itself. Um, you know, just in the same way that the music isn't part of, isn't actually being heard in universe, like neither are the blaster fire. Yeah, it's not relevant because you never hear so, like someone on another starship. That, hey, did you hear something happen outside? Well, that's the thing, right? No one's ever coordinating in, in like you know in space battles when like when they're trying to rescue the Chancellor, for example. Like they're not co coordinating enemy attacks from hearing sounds behind them. So the sounds aren't relevant right. to what the characters are doing. It's just there for our benefits. Yeah. But anyway, anyway so that, that was episode that was, five. That was one of the stupid defenses. Um, also, um, another one that I heard from another person was that Thrawn would be okay because a tentacle's holding him. Oh my God. <laughs> he's, he's, he's in the Purgle's warm embrace. <laughs> like, he's still going to suffocate to death over the course of a fucking hour, but at least he's not sucked out into space. Also, it's amazing that Purgle didn't just crush him. Like, goddamn. Awesome. Just... Yeah, it's true. Well, it's uh, amazing. Yeah, that was, was... Again, like, I don't. I don't. I don't think that uh, inertia. Iner inertia blah, blah, blah. I don't think that inertial dampeners are going to uh, to apply here anyway because of the broken windows. So like, it's amazing that Thrawn and Ezra didn't immediately die from the whiplash. Well, I guess that's why they're holding Thrawn, right, to try to account for that. But like, yeah, his head should still be being snapped back. His, head. his chest might be fine. Yeah, and Ezra, his head's gone. Ezra's not even being <laughs> held. He was he was standing uh, just in the middle of the bridge, right? Oh, it'd be so funny if, like, you know the, the night troopers in the next episode, it turns out that underneath the armor they are literally just, like, liquid. They're just paint. Because they've been <laughs> they've been liquidized by the force of that, of that inertia jump. <laughs> so I have a question. How do we know the night troopers are, are zombies? Uh, we don't, I'll but, like, let's... I don't I think we have all these references laid out. Let's be fair, that's absolutely what they are. Like, we don't know for certain it's, yet, but that is are. definitely what they are. Yeah, probably. We, I, I really don't like that. that. I will... I will explain why they are most definitely zombies, um, even though it hasn't Guys, been officially it, confirmed it make, yet. It, it makes sense that all the uniforms are destroyed, but all the TIE fighters and all the stuff behind <laughs> them is completely 100% intact. I guess they repaired that with a gold filigree as well. That gold filigree, man, is that useful shit? Yeah, but but so TK, you jumped in right after we finished our episode 5 coverage. We have, we, we have yeah. talked about that episode without you. Damn. <laughs> I had so much to say on yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. There's plenty to say about well, the next one too. Oh, <laughs> um, I think. Yeah, I guess. We, uh, I guess we'll just, before just we get carry into on, it, right? Well, hang on. Before we carry on, this might be an opportune time for people to like have a quick toilet break and get a drink if they want to refresh. Just give us two minutes to like pause and do draw too. thoughts. Oh. Um, I mean, I'm good. I'm just gonna kind of let's see what shots oh, yeah, yeah. up I to. Just, yeah, I was thinking, like, I'm good too, but I just think it's nice to have a, a bit of an intermission between the second, first and second episode we're dealing with. The thing is, I do actually want to get a drink, but I've run out of the drink that I want to get, so I'm going to have to go to the store after the stream. But I can't do what that it, now, obviously. Drink? <laughs> in the middle of was it, was it, was it White Pepper. Claw? Are you, are, uh, not, so you're not a basic white girl. It's not White Claw. I don't even fucking know what White Claw is. Isn't it like, I swear that's the American thing, right? Isn't it like the the like weird? I, I keep seeing like weird cans. I'm gonna look at up. I swear it's a thing. Or am I just mispronouncing? It, it's something? like an alcoholic seltzer drink, I think. Yeah. White Claw vodka. Yeah, it's a, it's an alcoholic seltzer water beverage manufactured by the Mark Anthony Group, um, in the U.S. and Canada. Eight percent to five percent alcohol by volume. That is fucking nothing. That's pathetic. <sighs> Where oh, is your booze? Just as an aside. Why do these characters keep calling them star whales? Because they also have seen Treasure Planet. <laughs> oh, also, one thing I did want to mention. This is a very small thing. I wouldn't even call this a nitpick. It's literally just an observation that's annoying me. Uh, when Ahsoka wakes up uh, and she's bald and whatever. Or, or actually, I'll, I'll even roll it back a second more. When she gets saved, she's still wearing her headdress. And on the headdress, there's a little middle piece there um, that, you know, sort of completes the ensemble, so to speak. Then she wakes up the next day and she's bald or whatever. And it's like, ah, gross, scary. And then the next time we see her wearing the headdress, the middle piece is gone. And I don't know where it's, I don't know where it went because it's not like it, it, it she lost it in the ocean or anything. It's just, it's just not there anymore. And it's something that's just, distracting me every single time I see her on screen going forward. She's wearing the headdress without the middle piece. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's also quite an ugly design choice. Also, she, 
EMP ALC has a funny comment that maybe should be addressed. Uh, let's see. Wait, Jolly, couldn't you say the same? Uh, the same with Force Lightning, for example. They never explicitly explain the ability, uh, and how does telekinesis cause lightning to appear? With what you're saying with the Pergil. So what I guess he, the comparison is being made. Well, I guess the comparison is being made is like I was like it's it it beggars belief that all these abilities can be assigned to the Pergil. That's that seems to be very world breaking. I guess he's like, well, couldn't you say the same thing about Force Lightning? Like, how does someone ge generate lightning from their fingers? What exactly like force... does Force Lightning break? Yeah. Though? Well, yeah, Do, a, are, Force Lightning doesn't break. Are we anything. saying and that secondly... Pergil are canonically Force sensitive, and that that's what allows them to do the things that they're doing? Which, by the way, that means that it's possible by using the force to give yourself the power of anti-gravity. Uh, well, I guess Ray's confirmed well, that actually. I, I think... But like anti-gravity, <laughs> inertial dampening, and also ludicrous speed hyperspace jumps. I think what maybe well, to be he's fair, saying, not that the Purgles are doing it through the force, but he's saying that they didn't need to explain how like force lightning works. But that's you, because you, but that's because it's part uh, of a magic because system. It didn't comes, need to be yeah, I, I I know that that's the way I, I yeah. was going to like when you enter go into Star Wars. One of the things that you have to do to suspend your disbelief are the fact that this, the world is telling you that there is this magic system of the Force that makes everything work. That is a foundational part of the text that you have to accept going into it. Whereas this one is, is a brand mm. new piece that is being thrown on top of it that is just, it makes no sense with what we know. And it's just also used nonsensically in the story to do, oh, Dave Filoni needs them to go to the other galaxy, but he doesn't have a way for them to do it. Space Whale! Yeah. Solves all the problems. Um, I was going to say, like, another thing that Rebels decided to introduce randomly was that there are, like, like wolves on Lethal that have the ability to jump into hyperspace and take the characters to the other side of the planet. I guess, so I, oh, I guess God, where yeah. we are saying <laughs> that the Force can, can allow you to jump into hyperspace. I don't fucking know. Oh, no. But this is... So this oh, is no. the problem, right? But like again, it's, this comes down to like just because we have had a thing established before doesn't mean that you can't establish something on top of it that's that makes it really silly, right? This is this is the whole mm -hmm. the dyad resurrecting people from the dead, force healing, force flight. Like having a, a simple magic system with like very clearly established rules, or not, not even necessarily like very clearly, but just like established rules where like there are very clear reasons why like I don't know, Luke couldn't just use the force to make Darth Vader's head explode, you know, things like that give us stakes because we know what is and isn't possible like, you know as an audience member when a character goes into a situation we know what is and isn't possible for them to do when you start introducing powers like this though where like retroactively they would have been extremely useful and then it makes our characters incompetent for not using them um or incompetent for not learning about them at all um or all those powers just break what is possible in ways that are like fundamentally silly like I don't know. Let's let's say in the next movie, Ray just has like, oh, she's like, oh, I've I've discovered force exploding. I can kill anyone from across the galaxy <laughs> wherever I am just because by saying their sparky, name. Just sparky, sparky, boom, man. Yeah, and it's just like, well, at that point, what the hell am I watching? Like, what's the, what, are, what are the stakes of the story? You've, yeah, sure. Like, oh, it's magic that explains it. It's like, okay, but even if that magic explains it in universe, that still breaks my story apart. Like, that's O two O P. This is like when you have characters introduced to gaming or like powers introduced into multiplayer gaming, which are like just incredibly overpowered and have to be nerfed like even if there's like some technical explanation that makes them like canonically okay they still break the game they still break the story they render it unlikable and unwatchable and unplayable uh, you need Bob to be very Skywalker, careful as a storyteller for, the for you introduce these uh, i think a better question is what kind of evolutionary pressures cause something uh, causes something like space whales to come into being good um, question <laughs> It, I guess it would have to be like food, right? Like they're running out of whatever food source they have and they have to be able to find it elsewhere in the galaxy. But like, I don't know well, how that tracks. This is the thing. Like I can imagine a spacefaring creature. Like I can imagine a, a, a creature that lives in the vacuum of space being able to survive. In fact, like this, you know, the space worm, the asteroid worm was this. And even yeah. the silly um, Cthulhu monster from Solo, right? Fundamentally, there's nothing wrong with the idea in Star Wars that there are creatures that have evolved to live in the vacuum of space. However, the evolutionary pressures that I can just about imagine leading to that over the course of time of a galactic civilization and or, you know, billions of years of evolution, that's very different from being like, there is an evolutionary pressure to push creatures into hyperspace and go light speed. That is insane. Mm -hmm. There is no evolutionary pressure possible, I would argue, that could lead to a creature evolving that capacity, whether it's even biologically possible to maintain it all. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, it's silly, is what I'm saying. It, it, there's a lot of questions that are raised, and none of them will get answered. Yeah, like the They're force, just... like the hyperspace loft wolves. <laughs> <laughs> What, oh, what man. would be worse Season four is if, really if the, <laughs> the way ah- Ahsoka got to the, the other galaxy was that she saw some wolves and then went into a cave, and the next thing you knew, she walked out the other side of the galaxy. No, it's just going to turn out that Shin and uh, Balin are both actually just like the, those wolves in human form. They're actually just force werewolves, and they can just they can just <laughs> jump through hyperspace because they're actually a lot of wolves. Oh my god! Skull I, oh my god! I can I can genuinely imagine Dave Filoni introducing the idea of force werewolves. That's something oh, I can yeah. genuinely imagine him doing. Oh, Don't give him ideas! <laughs> one thing I want to say, one thing that kind of annoyed me too about Rebel Season 4 with the Purgles is, uh, you know, the Bendu uh, prophesizes Thrawn's defeat. Uh, I, I forget what the exact wording is, but he says, like, uh, oh, a uh, bunch of defeat. arms surrounding you. I see you. your, yeah, I I see see your defeat. Uh, uh, many arms wrapping you in a cold embrace. Yeah. Now, when I first like saw that episode, I thought I assumed that he was going to get defeated by like a numerically superior rebel fleet or something. You know, uh, like he, he somehow gets out outsmarted, uh, tactically maneuvered, and defeated by a superior force. Um, but then it turns out to literally just be like arms from the Purgles. You know, I, I just find that kind of like annoying in hindsight. Well, I guess like, I mean, like it's it's not metaphorical; it's like literal. Okay. To be to be I fair, to be like fair, that in a way. Yeah, to, to give it, it's one hundred percent like you. Like I still, I mean, I'm I'm in the same boat. I think it's a silly decision, but to give it its credit, the idea that Thrawn is ultimately defeated by like the intervention of a of an of an agency or a force that he just does not understand, in much the way the same way that Palpatine was defeated by just not being able to understand love, right? Like that Thrawn's militaristic brain mm. really just cannot encompass the idea of the force. And what it represents, like, it doesn't even say that, or he's like, "I have, li- I have no understanding of this of Jedi magic," and he calls the Bendu like Jedi yeah, devilry. Does. Um, like that's mm-hmm. fine. Although, uh, explain to me, everyone, then in the next episode, why he's now using night sister magic. But <laughs> like, well, yeah, well, I don't well, know. It's more so satis- the thing is, me personally, it's it, it's more satisfying to me that because tactics, military tactics, are Thrawn's biggest thing, and he constantly uh, like wins on that basis. I like the idea that eventually somebody gets the better of him on like his playing field. It, it might take a while. It might take a lot of defeats, what, but eventually somebody defeats say, him through tactics. What I was going to say to like to Jolly's point is like I actually appreciate that as a as a growing point that Thrawn realized there were aspects of his understanding that were limited or not at all there um, because he just did not want to get into shit like the Force and magic or whatever. So now. Um, he he meets these night sisters and they're saying, Yeah, we can get you back to the main galaxy. You just kind of have to trust us and like listen to us and, and shit like that. And he'd be like, Okay, I'm down. Fuck it, let's do this. That's fine. So long as that I'm, I'm cool. I, I agree with you. What I need is like explanation from the like I, I this can't this is a character this is a this is a big character moment of character growth, right? And I, I hate it when this, these things all happen off screen. I'm happy for that to be the case. What mm-hmm. I want, therefore, is like for him to have some kind of dialogue where he talks about needing to adapt or learning from the past or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like some kind of hint that that is actually what has happened, that he's, you know, that he has utilized those traits that made him the character he was just in a new context rather than just that he's completely at odds with who he used to be. I 100% don't believe what was that once that just this was intentionally is now a devastating supposed- reality for those who may oppose us. I don't believe that Dave Filoni sat there and thought, okay, this is going to be Thrawn's arc, that he's he didn't understand magic, so that way he sought to, he pounded himself and he thought, I'm going to team up with the Night Sisters, and that's supposed to be his growth. I think he genuinely just put the Night Sisters in there, and then anything you can derive no, from yeah, that, I, uh, totally wasn't. I don't believe that Dave Filoni cares, or like, like just just has a, a, even a basic understanding of how stories are like supposed to be written to the point where he even thought of it like, yeah, character arc. What? Sure. Let's give Thrawn an arc. Let's have him learn from his mistakes. Yeah. Uh, Deedle fake. Uh, I maybe I didn't explain myself very well. I'm I'm not suggesting that I want Thrawn to be defeated by uh, numerically superior numbers like alone. You know, I would want him to be outsmarted in the process. Um, but I mean, when he ultimately gets defeated, you know, I'm just referencing the whole like. Uh, you know, a, a bunch of arms surrounding you. Um, you know, I would want that end result to come about. 
by him getting like uh, tactically outmaneuvered by somebody else. I'm not suggesting that like he only gets defeated because he has a smaller fleet that's going up against a larger fleet. That's not so that's not what I was saying. What was actually going to happen when they mean like you know like many arms surrounding you in a cold embrace is that he's going to be hugged to death by like the night troopers. <laughs> they're all just gonna like we'll go in for a cuddle and swarm him so with the bendu was anyone else really shocked that it turned out to be tom Vake, baker who did the voice because i didn't I mean, realize that the voice is really obvious i don't know how you wouldn't get that it, it sounds I, exactly I, suppose like I, I was like 16 when i first watched the show and like i didn't put it together but it's like I, I haven't re-watched rebels in such a long time and when i saw the like people talk about it, it was like Tom Baker's voice. I was just completely fucking shocked. It's like, what the fuck was he doing in Star Wars? That reminds me. At some point, she, when we've done like mod modern Who, I really want to show you like some of Tom Baker's old episodes because those are hilarious. Oh yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> the talents of Wen Chiang is one that's set in Victorian London, and then one of the villains is a giant rat, like literally, like massive. Like, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I think you told me about this one. Yeah, um, it's, it's, own, it's amazing. The only episode I've I'm seen gonna... of Tom Baker's Doctor Who is when like the the big robots there and they, they put a fucking toy tank across a table in front of the camera. It's like, don't worry, Doctor, we've got something that can deal with this toy tank. Comes across the screen. Oh yeah, that's it's destroyed immediately. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to rein us back in so we can talk about episode six now. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Let's do it. So. Yeah, so I guess the first thing that happens in this episode is we get the scene where Ahsoka and Huyang are riding around. Oh, another super chat. Uh, I'll address this first because, wow, what a hefty, wow, confused cabal. Thank you. Um, I genuinely thought the map burning Ahsoka's hand would come back into play somehow, but the show keeps finding new ways to surprise me. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, I think it's just over now. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a Raiders of the Lost Ark ripoff, but we would, we didn't weirdly in a subversion for Dave Filoni, we didn't get a ripoff. Yeah, I was going to say I'm actually glad that that <laughs> didn't happen because I I didn't want him aping Raiders of the Lost Ark again. Um, uh, Chief, I wouldn't get too excited about that super chat. It amounts to about eight dollars. I was thinking, yeah, what does that mean? And I looked it up. <laughs> still, though, very cool. I mean, yeah, I'm a, eight dollars is still a generous amount. Thank you very much, Confused That's Cabal. No, I, yeah, I just didn't want him to get too excited about was it 129 Mexican dollars. <laughs> she was like, I'm rich now. I don't have to do this YouTube <laughs> thing anymore. <laughs> yeah, fuck you guys. I'm I quit. <laughs> I've never seen a hundred dollars before. <laughs> <laughs> just cares about the money. She, she just gives up on his empire, just says, I don't, I'm done with this emperor shit. He's out. Yeah, she just goes to space my channel. Um all right, episode but six. yeah, so the yeah. first scene is just uh, Ahsoka and Hu Yang riding around in ludicrous speed in the whale's mouth. Um, and so Hu Yang says, they're, they're, they're basically talking, this is where Ahsoka tells him about what, Ahsoka, what Sabine did. And he has this line where he says, perhaps for Sabine, it was the only choice. And Ahsoka says, a choice she made for herself. Uh, to which he responds, that is your fear. What does that mean exactly? What are they saying here? Well, I um, guess that like Sabine was self. He's like Sabine was selfish, and 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 he always like, well, that's just your, your worst fear of it, right? Like that you're you're worried Sabine did it out of selfishness. And I'm like, yeah, but she did though. <laughs> like, sorry, she literally I did. Yeah, that makes sense. I maybe it was just like the way uh, Rosario delivered the line when she said a choice she made is, for herself. Like I thought she was saying that uh, as, that she chose this herself. That like. I don't know. That's why I was confused. I didn't know what she meant by that. And, and so, like, I thought they were saying something along, like, to the effect that Ahsoka is afraid of her having her agency or something, but that's not what well, she maybe meant, they're I just guess. like maybe, maybe it's the extent of the betrayal, right? Maybe she's like, I'm, I'm hoping this was a moment of weakness rather than a calculated decision to fuck us all over and support the <laughs> Empire. Hey, and I'm confused by, like, a message in the chat here. It says, stop making excuses for her. It was selfish. Are you saying that no, I, the show I, is stop, trying to stop making? talking to the character. That, that The, the oh. show makes excuses. Yeah. Okay. Which ah. I, I think that's actually fairly apt, yeah. I think it is I think it is trying to be like, oh, she's not really that bad a person. Like, she just loves Ezra so much that there wasn't really any other option. And, like, that's horrendous. Even though there were. Like, that's actually, like, it's like, oh, but she really loved Ezra. Like, okay, then her love is extremely toxic, and she's a bad person. Um, yeah. I don't know what you know how I mean, Ezra sacrificed himself to make sure that, like, Thrawn was, like, taken to another galaxy? Uh, how about, like, just, just fucking undo that? 
Yeah, let's just like yeah. let's just bring well, back and, the, the faction that killed my entire family, planet, and culture. The thing is, like, you know how like the whole point of Anakin's arc in the prequels is that he gives in to selfish attachments, uh, and that causes him to fall to the dark side and lose everything he cares about and destroy everything that that is good, basically. Like, I, I Sabine is still assassinated, but at the very least, I want the show to meaningfully acknowledge that she's done something wrong. And like they so won't. far, they kind of haven't. They were. Would wouldn't it be nice if we even had a moment where like Anakin's Force Ghost turned up to talk to Sabine and she didn't even know who it was, and he was just like, "Oh, I made a decision like yours once, and it was really bad, and like maybe you should rethink this. Maybe you should like try not to mm -hmm. be like that much of an asshole." Actually, well, again, yeah, I mean, this goes back to the last episode. The like they, they... Not... he could say something to the effect that it's like never too late to to turn things around and make a difference and be good. I don't know. <laughs> well, that, that, like, that's that's the lesson. Treat that lesson. <laughs> That's the lesson that that should have been the core lesson in the last episode. Like, especially with the whole Sabine thing. Like, that's what he should have been telling Ahsoka, but we didn't get that. Yeah. No, you see, what, what, what will actually happen is uh, Ahsoka will scold her for her failings, and then Yoda will turn up and be like, oh, but, you know, failure the greatest is, this is the greatest teacher. And I'm like, oh, Yoda, you're so wise. <laughs> Sabine, I forgive you. Really, it was my failing yeah. as a master for not letting you do whatever you wanted. Yeah. Yeah, but which is good because failure is a good teacher. So I'll continue to do that. That I'll ca I'll carry on failing. <laughs> also, didn't like didn't you like the meta breaks that they did in this episode? Wait, so a long you, time ago you, in a galaxy far, far away. If you uh, intend to so fail cringe. and then you fail on purpose, does that mean you succeeded in failing and have therefore failed to fail? Don't bring your first Just, freshman class uh, philosophy bullshit in here, Sheev. I will crush you. <laughs> I will crush you like a ripe walnut. Yeah, that is a good point, though. What if the you fuck fail? Get out of my sight before I demolish you. <laughs> How much fail could a failure fail if a failure could fail fails? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I have uh, an yeah, uh, A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. That was that was that pissed me off. I a I, lot. I winced. Yeah. I literally winced when I heard that line. I was like, oh god, Dave, what do you know? <laughs> I mean, like history, blind parts one, to this two, and three. When it, when it first dropped um, in my server, and everyone in the call was just cringing so hard, and like and like cursing the show out and shit. It was it was so funny. I just like that that Hoi Yang like looks straight into camera and just winks as he says it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to imagine that it's Star Wars so series so chat was going nuts. They probably like loved it. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Also, does this mean that R so who's um, telling the obviously wasn't the wasn't the previous canon that R two D two was telling the story to like the Wills? I guess Hoi Yang is now the one doing that. I, d I don't even know anymore. Like, do the Wills only talk to I robots? Don't, I don't know that it was ever confirmed. There was the uh, Star Wars Adventures comic in the EU that was like never officially considered canon. I think where like it was actually some aliens found C three PO's remains in a cave like hundreds of years later, and they activated him and he started telling the story. Well, we're getting things like that so much in media lately, and it's always in like really shitty content. Like at the end of uh, Game of Thrones, where they reference a song of ice and fire, like in the book. I'm oh just my like, God. It's yeah. so fucking annoying. It's always in these. Which they could have. No, 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 no. The thing is that they could have done that, and that could have been really cool, but like it wasn't earned at all. Well, it's just, it's just everyone's ripping off Lord of the Rings, right? It was like, oh, you know, the Lord of the Rings by Frodo Baggins. It's like, yeah, but like Frodo's the narrator. This is not the same thing. Also, those yeah. films are good. Mm -hmm. Those films are those films are well executed. <laughs> this yeah, is, they deserve to do whenever, it. Yeah, whenever it happens in bad media, you're just like, oh god, you're so pretentious. Like, stop it. Yeah, it's, it's a very hard thing mm -hmm. to earn. Like, Lord of the Rings manages to earn it by like just the sheer scope and scale of what it manages to pull off. Well, it's and really difficult to not come across like a pretentious blowhard by doing that. Well, and Lord of the Rings, like throughout the series, Sam and Frodo, like they'll bring this up a few times. Like they talk about stories and they talk about like heroes being remembered um, because they do the right thing, even though they had all these opportunities to go back and go back home. Um, but they kept at their journey anyway. You know, they talk about like stories and stuff. So it kind of like fits. Just like the idea that we're going to get like the Star Wars version of that ending scene with Tyrion, where like Anakin's Force Ghost is talking to a will and he's like, oh, a history of the, of the Star Wars galaxy. Uh, you know what, what do they say about me? And the world's like, oh, we don't think you're mentioned. I, I want it to be like <laughs> you, you know in horrible histories where they have stupid deaths and there's like a panel of judges every time that someone dies. I I want it to the ending of Star Wars to be that where it's just uh, every character that, that comes across dead 
And it's the stupid death, stupid death. Shine it. Funny because they're who, true. Shine it. And I who know, among us has a better story it. than Sabine the Broken? Oh, God. How how uh, would it be unironically if they had like Terry Deary, the horrible history's author, just come in and like do a song? <laughs> like... <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway you want to move on? Let's isn't proceed. this fun? What's happened to this franchise? Oh yeah, it's thrilling. No, it's great. I'm at that it's... point where I'm just like, I can't even feel bad for it anymore. You just gotta laugh. You gotta dance in the flames. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Chief, why don't you why don't you pause back on course? Where are we going next? Sure. All right. So yeah, we have that scene, and then then we jump to the opening credits and stuff, and then uh, we cut to the hyperspace ring, essentially on its way to Peridia. They are still in ludicrous speed, I think, at this point, right? And then Balin yeah. uh, like visits Sabine in her cell, and uh, is basically just talking to her. There's one line. This isn't a criticism or anything. I'm gonna just I'm gonna play it so many times in the in the Ahsoka and Clone Wars video that I inevitably do. Where he says, um, he says, I would think this would be an opportunity for reflection. And Sabine says, I try to avoid that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, he's... I do have a very minor criticism, which is not even criticism, just a question. Why does the hyperspace ring have cells? Were they planning on like imprisoning people in the giant hyperspace? Uh, ring? Well, I, maybe it's like standard protocol. You're building a ship of some kind. You want to have like a brig. I, I um, guess, yeah, I guess Morgan was intending this to be like her flagship or whatever i don't know okay maybe it's a nice. bedroom and they just threw someone in it yeah balen just has a very sparse and aesthetic <laughs> and it's actually just where he normally sleeps yeah he's a minimalist at heart so he doesn't like to have any possessions with him <laughs> he's so minimalist yeah. he doesn't even have his life with him anymore i'm sorry that was dark um I'm this sorry, is Ray all that, that was dark. oh <laughs> yeah wow I love you. I love oh, you, Ray. Man. I'm very sorry. I'm very. I'm genuinely very sad yeah. that he's gone. But there was a dark joke line there, and you're someone so had to pick it up. Kick Are you jolly. sure you're not from the DC universe? Yes, that is where I'm from. I might kick. You're so yeah, edgy. That. That you got so many edges. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. This is also the scene where they sort of start to hint at the idea that he doesn't actually intend to keep his word. Uh, Which you know, the is deal really annoying. Yeah, yeah, that, and and like, that huh. really annoyed. <laughs> yeah, go yeah. ahead. No, I was just gonna say, yeah, like that. Um, that honestly frustrated the hell out of me. And honestly, like if it had just been a one-off thing, I would have been like, all right, uh, whatever. He's just fucking with her for some reason in this moment. Um, but then later on, uh, they seem to double down on it. Um, considering well, yeah, and, the fact like that, like the next scene, uh, Morgan is like, "So, do you actually intend to keep your word?" And he, and she's just like, "Well." Her her desire to find Ezra could be useful for us, and like again, yeah, I'm still just like I think he's just lying about this, right? Like he's not actually uh, saying uh, we're just going to use her. I don't actually care about honoring my deal or whatever. It's just it's it's all a ploy. I thought that that he was just saying that to convince Morgan that he's not a softy or something. Um, but like the way the rest of the episode plays out, kind of makes it seem like he doesn't actually care about upholding his deal or like being honorable, and I do not like that. Yeah, that, that makes him so much more boring. It's like, okay, he's just a backstabbing bastard, just like any other villain. Now it's like, oh, okay. Well, also, well, yeah, that's also retroactively quite damaging talk... because, like, why didn't why didn't he kill her when he had the chance? Then <laughs> I like, again, it's like I guess he, he he could have. Like, I guess he killer. thought that she could help. The thing is, he couldn't have known what the state of things were over on Peridia if Thrawn or Ezra are even really alive. Like the plan is to then use her to try to well, find no, Ezra, no, but they, he they he would have had no way of knowing that Ezra wasn't there. He he knows well, so it's, it's, Morgan knows that Thrawn is alive because the Night Sisters are telling her that to come get Thrawn. Yeah, Balin knows that Morgan thinks she's a th thinks he's alive. I, I don't really know that Balin knows for a fact that that that's actually true. Then again, he seems to just kind of know whatever the plot needs him to know at any given time. Yeah. So maybe he does know. His knowledge is inexplicable. But the point that I was making is that if the only reason he actually did quote unquote honor the deal initially was so that she might be able to be used to find Ezra once they get to Peridia, he couldn't have possibly known that Ezra was even in need of finding. Like, for all we know, that like he was with Thrawn or he's in prison or something. I don't know. So I don't know. I get he wanted to honor the deal, but then changed his mind. 
I don't know. Characters, yeah, consistency, no what is that? I mean, the, the, the thing about you know, it is I, like we've been, we've continually talked about Balin being like the only real character that we find all that intriguing, and like he hasn't gotten much characterization, but what he has been given has been interesting. But now it's like, but what 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 little characterization you have given him, you're already kind of going back on or contradicting, and like it's just frustrating. Well, yep. and the the one bit of I don't want to have any hope for this show at this point, but. The one, the one thing I'm hoping for is that just because he and Shin set out uh, allegedly to track down uh, Ezra and uh, Sabine and kill them, might not actually be the case. He might be searching for whatever he claims to be searching for, which is like uh, a means yeah. to get back to the beginning. I, I don't know. Yeah, uh, maybe he was just telling Thrawn vague. that he was gonna. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. He was it's actually vague, searching for it's the vague crowd what people. he's actually after. But he thinks there's something on this planet that can help him achieve whatever that goal is. Some some power that allows him to undo the his, the wrongs of history or something. Um, or like, you know, break the cycle or whatever. But like, but like yeah, and I, maybe he thinks that Sabine and Ezra can help him with that? Question mark? Well, well, I mean, not to get ahead of myself, but one way or the other, uh, whether it's that or whether it's because uh, Thrawn and Morgan end up turning on them um, or like trying to abandon them and leave them here. I do actually think that uh, Ezra, Ahsoka and Sabine are going to team up with Balin and Shin. Yeah, I think so too. Probably. I mean, there is that line where he says the enemy of my enemy or of our, of our enemy is our friend or whatever. Like it's probably setting that up. <laughs> that that line is really funny in context when we get to it. But anyway, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then they they jump out of uh, ludicrous hyperspace speed thing, and boom, we're at Peridia. Look at you know, take it in, guys. This is the very first planet in this other galaxy that we are visiting, um, and like we see all sorts of like uh, purgle skulls and shit floating around because apparently this is a purgle graveyard. This is just where they migrate to to die, um, for whatever reason. So that's interesting, I guess. Uh, let's see. And then we go down to the planet and the, like we, so first of all, and I'm going to get into more of this in just a second, but like, it's just a complete desolate wasteland. There are like statues and towers and shit erected, but otherwise there is no, there are no signs of life really at all. Um, which yeah, I find is very, um, the aesthetic is very similar to like Prometheus and alien covenant, you know, like the whole, like, um, yeah. the, the engineer civilization. And I'm like, again, I, uh, Dave Filoni, please can you have an original idea? There's also, by the way, like some link. This is skipping ahead a little bit, but it's not plot relevant. It's just it's just um, set design. There's a bit where Thrawn is standing in front of like a large wall, and the glyphs on the wall are the same glyphs that you can find on the Zepho temples from Jedi Survivor. Yeah. Uh, 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 specifically, yeah, the Kujet one referencing yeah, Kujet being the evil sage who was based on Dathomir. But like, they're not the Night Sisters. They're a very different species. So, are the Zepho from Peridia? Was the kingdom of Peridia originally the Zepho and the uh, Night Sisters? Of British... I'd... What the uh, hell's going on? I, I don't Could know. Be. We don't know how long ago the Zepho lived. So for all we know, they established something there on Peridia, and maybe they enslaved the witches there or something. And then maybe the, the Night Sisters like like overthrew them. Uh, maybe. And then they both, for know. some reason, and then they both, for some reason, decided to come back to, to, to travel to the main galaxy. I, I don't know why. Um, like both the Zeppo yeah. and the Night Sisters, I, I, I don't, I don't Vi get it. Via whale, did yeah. yeah? Did the Zeppo also decide to ride the mouths of Purgles? <laughs> Is that how we're saying they left the galaxy? Because that's so fucking lame. Ride I the whale know. sounds like an innuendo for drugs. <laughs> I mean, I'm just imagining. Uh, I'm just imagining Cordova spending all this time like trying to figure out where <laughs> they went and like how to track them down, and then he and then he eventually learns it's like they fucking. Got into the mouths of space whales? <laughs> Are you fucking with me? <laughs> but, but I Steve, devoted my life episode, to this. In Empire Strikes Back, there's a giant space worm that they go into the mouth of. Yeah, but that's actually to be <laughs> a side note. That's oh, when Shiva and I went through that movie. That was like one of our only real major, major criticisms. Like they should be dead when they get out of the mouth of, when yeah. they get out of their ship in, the, in that in that fucking worm. They should be very, very yeah. dead. But oh well. Because there wouldn't be oxygen in the worm's like esophagus no. mouth thing, right? Like how would there be? 
the also the the worm's mouth is um, open and exposed to the vacuum of space, so it's <laughs> like they should be pulled straight out. Where where are yeah. all the day sisters? A good question. Where are the day sisters? <laughs> the day but sisters. Golly, we don't know that space is a vacuum in Star Wars. Oh yes, we do. Oh, yeah, there's a line. Right. In, there's a line in Rogue One. Rogue One literally has a line that says it's a vacuum. Mm -hmm. Like Rogue we even needed canon. that. Come on, Jolly. Yeah, space. <laughs> Sounds like space isn't a vacuum. I'm like, get out of my sight. <laughs> you're kind you're of done. Feel, this kind of feels like a, a certain person that I will not name saying we don't know that <laughs> certain characters would know certain things about basic laws of physics. Yeah, mm. how, how do we know that these people in Star Wars are good at science? I don't understand. <laughs> oh, it's all so broken and terrible. Anyway, yeah. So back to back yeah. to the the whale graveyard. But yeah, I I guess what I I'll get into it now. This is our first ever planet in another galaxy in Star Wars. So the thing is, I've always found this concept very interesting. And despite all the reservations that I've had about Ahsoka going forward, um, I you know like there was that part of me that was like you know, but like we could explore another galaxy. Like imagine the potential there, right? Uh, like the kinds of worlds we would see, the kinds of aliens we'd see, what kind of technology they use. Are they behind, advanced? Do they have like similar weaponry like blasters, but maybe it's like a different principle or like they use different material to make it. Uh, the energy beams look different, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, we could we could land on a planet that's, that, that's just teeming with life and like some great civilization uh, or whatever. You know, we could like see these aliens that apparently visited all these thousands of years ago and left behind this map. Um, but instead it's like, yeah, no, it's just a wasteland. There's some statues. That's it. And look, there's three night sisters here. That's like, that's it. Well, oh, again, which, this, by so the this way, is the first time it's, this confirms that the night sisters are, are from Peridia, which like, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, which, which is a whole thing. But that, by the way, I think we mentioned this in the last stream that proves that the, the schematics for building the hyperdrive ring uh, that we that I initially was inferring like maybe the the advanced aliens left them there and that's how they were able to build this thing. No, actually, th that's just a thing that you can build in the main galaxy that you have the means to and the know how to. Yeah, you can build so the hyperspace ring no... that allows you to brute force your way through throughout the galaxy. Yeah, there's now no reason why the Empire couldn't have just teleported whatever they wanted wherever they wanted in the galaxy during the OT. Like it's uh... yep, uh... yeah, anger. Imagine if the Death Star had that kind of hyperspace capability. Yeah, it just pops up right behind Yavin. Doesn't even have to wait because obviously in the main continuity, it, like it had to go around that planet, it had to like wait to orbit the planets, and that's what gave them like a, a ticking clock. Not anymore. Mm. Now we can just zoom straight through that planet, pop up on the other side, and blow them to the smithereens. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Depressing. But yeah, but yeah. So and yeah, we're establishing that the Night Sisters are from. Peridia. We 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 uh, meet these three characters. They call themselves the Great Mothers. They're basically just Talzin times three, which is great because I love Talzin. Um, well, also, they're um, and it's also they're doing. Explicitly, they're explicitly named after the three yeah. Greek, the, 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 the three fates from Greek mythology. That's what I was going to get into. Is yeah, this is just very clearly a ripoff of the 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 fates. It's like yeah, there's another thing that Dave has ripped. It's, it, and here's the thing. Don't don't get me wrong. Like you can obviously inspire characters off of certain other mythologies. Like obviously, but like they're literally named like, basically the exact same thing as the as the fates themselves. They look and act like what you might imagine the fates to look like. They come in threes. They they speak in prophecies I, and shit like that. And you're like, oh, so it's just the fates. They they talk about the threads of fate like the fates would. Yeah. Well, and it just makes me roll my eyes uh, whenever you do something like this it, and something that's just so fucking pedestrian as a show like this, something that's just, it's just such a mm. poorly written uh, well, show. And like Filoni doesn't really, he doesn't know how to like use nuance in most cases. So I just find it funny how he tries to like employ, uh, you know, homage and all this and, and it just it falls flat on its face. I have a terrible, terrible worry about all this. Um, so, so I, I earlier yesterday, I got into a Twitter, very brief Twitter conversation with a, a YouTuber called Jesse Gender, who is a, a very uh, nice uh, trans uh, YouTuber who she mostly covers like sci-fi and fantasy issues, but she also covers trans stuff as well. She's great. Um, I recommend her very highly. Anyway, she was trying to make the case that like, oh, you know, because 
Balin Skull and Shin Hati. Skull and Hati are the wolves in, in the Ragnarok cycle who eat the sun and the moon, thereby kicking off Ragnarok, which is like the end of time and the destruction of like the cycle of history, the endless cycle of history. It's the breaking of the wheel of history, basically, is Ragnarok. And Balin's motivations in the show is like he wants to end the, you know, he views the Jedi and the Sith as like the two sides of a coin that's like constantly flipping, like a co- as this circle of violence going on and on and on. And he wants to destroy that. He's looking to the big picture. And now we have the three fates who are literal embodiments of the idea of fate, of the wheel. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I wonder, because well, this, this was Jesse's uh, argument, was that like maybe what they're going for here is like almost a Darth Treya slash Kreia from KOTOR situation of like Balin wants to kill the Force or he wants to like destroy destiny and predestination in some way. And I'm like, that could be really interesting because Kreia's philosophy is fascinating. In a better written show... I don't want this show to touch anything near those kinds of topics. <laughs> well, yeah, the, this is the thing. I, I know we haven't really gotten to that scene yet, but like the, the thing with that is it, it's kind of annoying me that they're teasing the idea that it, they keep doing this, I feel like, with this show. They keep teasing the idea that there's going to be some massive shakeup um, that's going to actually like influence a lot of what happens in this franchise, potentially. Um, but it, it's not going to happen. Like, I, I don't, Filoni's not going to go that far. He's not going to. He's going to tease the idea of it and make it like a motivation of Balin's, but it's like, it's not going to actually happen. I just don't see it. Well, also, it can't happen because we, we Rebels showed us from when Ezra went into the world between worlds, he heard the voices of Kylo and Maz Kanata and Rey. So that future is determined. It's happening. Yeah, the universe means, is deterministic. Yeah. So Balin yeah. has failed. Whatever Balin tries here, he's going to fail because the universe will proceed as Ezra saw it was going to. Um, yeah. Golly, you might even say that that's that he's fated to fail. Um, oh, and that it's all poetic hey, irony or something. And I don't hey, want him to. Like I want him to succeed because I freaking hate this timeline at this point. Well, <laughs> that's that's the thing, right? I'm like, also even even if it's just like a kill the force and a crayer like sense, that's really interesting if it's done right. But also, yeah, it is just a. Hey, do you remember when God of War Ragnarok literally did this whole, like, can you change your fate within a deterministic cycle thing, but actually did it well? Can you imagine if we'd had that in Star Wars, how fucking interesting that would have been? But no, no, we've got this, we've got really this cool. shit instead. Yeah. Uh, you could have even tied that into, oh my fucking god, God of War Ragnarok even had the Ahsoka thing of, like, we have to be better, right? We need to try and be better than what came before. Mm-hmm. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you basically what I'm saying better, is... Senator. <laughs> basically the chat what i'm saying is if you if you want the themes of the show but done well go and play god of war ragnarok um don't don't watch this fucking mess yeah but it, it is something that needs to be just like paid attention to um like the naming conventions of certain characters and, and like what they represent in the story are very apparent uh you know balin and shin representing the wolves from ragnarok obviously Maroc being a monster transformed or like a knight transformed into a monster by a witch named Morgan. Uh, you know, that's from Arthurian legend. You know, and so, and, and I'm going to pull all of those references when we start talking about Enoch and about the the night troopers, but we're not there yet. Um, but yeah, it is confirmed. The night sisters are from Peridia. So that's neat. Uh, I mean, what's I kind guess, of, I guess, because... I mean, the one thing I'll say on that is that people have been saying about Night Sisters for a while that it's like, why does their magic function in such a different way uh, compared to like other Force users and stuff? It's like, well, I don't know. I guess there this is at least some attempt to try and explain that the fact that they're from like a different galaxy. I, I don't know. It, it, I said an attempt. Does that mean that the <laughs> Force works? I, I don't think they were thinking galaxy. <laughs> yeah. So is the Force just like yeah. one galaxy-specific superorganism then? Like it doesn't exist elsewhere. Uh, I don't know, but I'm just saying at least this feels almost like uh, Filoni, like, I I mean, probably not, though. Filoni, I don't think, listens to criticism, but um, maybe he heard that criticism come up at some point, and this was him, his attempt to try and explain that. I wish he hadn't bothered. (laughs) Yeah, it might have been for the best. He just doesn't. He just does not listen to criticisms, clearly, because he still has not acknowledged where Ahsoka was during the OT. If he hears he's these criticisms, and I'm, I'm sure he does, I'm sure he hears them. He just does not feel that he has to deal with it. It's not his problem. Yeah, he'd just rather not no. touch it. Like if there's something that's like inconvenient to his story, he's just not going to go near it. I and I, I think I've said this. That's why he hasn't explained what Ahsoka was doing during the OT, um, because he doesn't know the answer to that, and he doesn't want to have to explain it because the ex- I don't think weird. he could come up with a good explanation. I don't see why not. It's not that hard. You could come up with reasons that she's not there. 
apparently he can't. The, be the best Just one that I've heard brain? is... Uh, the best one that I've heard, people have said... Uh, she did it out of fear like she deliberately avoided the conflict uh, and like oh, avoided helping no. Luke because I of, heard that yeah I don't know I, I mean it's yeah I mean let's be fair the best explanation for why she wasn't in the OT was that she was dead then um, well no obviously but you know barring that <laughs> then I don't know what does death even mean Ahsoka for has like died Ahsoka before Tano? yeah Ahsoka has died so many times before <laughs> at this point <laughs> Jesus I mean, um, yeah, yeah, spawn back, spawn back after Endor. I mean, yeah, you could have done that as well, but uh, at that point, it would just feel forced for the sole purpose of like avoiding the OT. But I don't know. Do you think? Do you think every time Ahsoka dies, she becomes like an extra concentrated Force ghost? Like, you know, like she's, she's already <laughs> gone through it once. She's at the like the like the like super Saiyan stage of like being a Force ghost. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> you're referencing anyway. weeb shit, and I know nothing about it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what you. Maybe that was a funny joke. Oh uh, wait, there, there's one line from Shin that I found kind of. We talk about like ham-fisted dialogue. Uh, there was one from her where she's like, "More witches." It's like uh, I think that was literally yeah. just for the audience to like tell people that like, yeah, they're they're witches. We, because we, we couldn't witches, tell that know. these red-clad, fucking white face painted, fucking magic wielders are witches. Like I couldn't tell. Thank you, Shin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dave, for telling me that. No, but so, that. so yeah, they they land on this like tower that the the three night sisters are standing on, and then there's a line that just had me so confused. So I'm going to read it out now. One of the great mothers says, "Long have we waited for you, and you came as Thrawn promised." So, does that mean that Thrawn uh -huh. told them that? the nights that Morgan was coming? See, because I interpreted the, well, that they obviously were, like, spouting these prophecies to him, right? Like, they were assuring him that destiny called to him and that and that he would return to the galaxy and that, like, people would come for him eventually. Uh, and, like, they were communicating with, with uh, Morgan and all that through time, space, magic shit. But, like, they say this line, and I'm like, so is it? Are you just... What do you mean Thrawn promised that it would... What do you mean? Well, I, no, I guess, I guess the, the idea that... I don't know. I, this is if I'm giving maximum like benefit of the doubt here. Uh, maybe Thrawn told them that he has a Night Sister ally back in the galaxy. So it's like, I don't know, try to reach out to her. And if she hears you, she will... She is loyal to me. I know her well. And if she hears your calls, she will come for us. I guess that's the idea. I guess, but I wish that... like, if, they, if if they can reach out across space, I mean, like that's the I would agree with you. I think that's the best interpretation. But like, if that is what's happening, these guys can reach across space and time and put dreams into her head, but they can't tell yeah. whether she's gonna the... answer. I, okay. Yeah, it, I think, it's that's I think it's really more funny, OP. But... Sorry, because we talk about the fact that Thrawn is like not somebody who really paid. Like like previously, paid attention to things like the Force or magic and like you know the supernatural elements. He didn't understand them. He didn't like them. He didn't want to fucking deal with them. Apparently, he also just had a Night Sister friend, colleague in the Empire. Yeah, and uh, apparently, um, yeah. Darth Sidious was cool with this. Apparently, Darth Sidious was like, "Oh, one a Night Sister survived. Oh, I'm I'm not going to do anything <laughs> about that." Again, I guess yeah, it's still it's just so called the Empire. It, she it was, yeah. So she had everything. fucking factories on Corellia. And, and we know that she's a survivor. So she survived what happened on Dathomir. And then she decided to become a powerful person within the Empire, despite the fact that she's still traumatized about her entire family getting slaughtered. Well, I guess this comes back to the question of like motives. Like, why is any character doing what they're doing? It's like, why is Morgan want to help Thrawn? Why does she want to help the Empire come back to power? I was like, I don't know. It doesn't really make any sense, yeah. but like, I was like, yeah, okay, what? Why does Thrawn want to come back? It's like, I don't know. There's no any reason for that either. Why does he care about the Empire? Well, I really just feel like, like yeah. uh, these characters are good, so they fight against the Empire. These characters are evil, so they fight for the Empire. And it's like, eh, I I do appreciate nuance now and again. Yeah, like these, like the, 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 the great mothers, like these three night sisters, like who are apparently all that's left of a once great <laughs> kingdom in Peridia. Um, The idea of night sisters having a king, my God. But <laughs> that's one side. Yeah. I just, I just like the idea that these nice is like, yeah, we're gonna help. We, we want Thrawn to get back to the main galaxy, and everyone's like, what, why though? And they're like, oh, so that he'll reinstigate the Empire. And everyone's like, okay, but why do you want maybe, that? 
maybe for whatever reason they just want to go to the galaxy so they don't really don't... care about the empire they just want to be there on in the galaxy oh my god well, yeah, right at, the at that point well at that, at that, that point well at that point just ignore thrawn and go talk to ezra like he can come yeah. on the space whales just do that also i don't know why you can't come on the space whales since that's apparently how you made it across before how did that knowledge get lost yeah i mean <laughs> I don't even want to get into the freaking motivation of the the mothers because we we don't even know the motivations of a lot of like the core characters of the show like you just said let alone their motivations and it's just I don't know a lot of the stuff it, it just raises more questions like questions that you could have interesting answers for like for instance Morgan's uh, motivation and her backstory within the empire but again like we're not going to get answers to any of these things So yeah. since we're we're really we only have two episodes that, left that, after this, right? My sisters and Thrawn turn up. So Thrawn has a fully functioning spaceship and decides to sit on this shithole. Well, so potentially the explanation for that is that uh, now we in, in, in initially believed that these extra galactic uh, aliens that came to the the galaxy were like super advanced and that they came you know with like ships or whatever. But apparently it was the Night Sisters and they came through the mouths of Purgle. So, like, maybe they don't have, like, very well-mapped lanes, like, hyperspace lanes for their own galaxy. Maybe Thrawn didn't want to risk leaving the planet and, like, trying to go to other places in the galaxy. At yeah, which point, like, I don't know where have... he got the resources for a lot of the things that he did, that he, like, fixing up the Chimera, but sure. Yeah, like, I guess maybe he doesn't have the fuel to, like... Uh, all right, but the thing that... But really he has the fuel to me... hover in the atmosphere constantly for days so, on end, for the, years. Yeah, well, fuel... well, it... <sighs> It, Fuel you know is going to be really a factor uh, in the conversation here in a minute, but I do think I'm going to give this to the episode. I do think that Thrawn never flew the Chimera unless absolutely necessary. Like, yeah, he just he's hovering over, over the planet constantly. Yeah, he's conserving what like limited resources he has left. Like, I get that. And uh, I mean, the thing that's kind of interesting to me is that there's like marauders on this planet that have like blasters and stuff from the regular galaxy. So that would suggest to me that perhaps there are people in this this new galaxy that also have ships and shit. So it's like, I don't know, you maybe you would be able to... I'm surprised well, Thrawn, considering he's like so good at surely, like being diplomatic and stuff, he would have talked to some of these well, people well, that, that actually to get to a, more ships. That actually leads to a different problem, which is, why does anyone in this galaxy speak Galactic Basic? Uh, well, yeah, oh god. Yeah. Like, the Night Sisters apparently just Unless speak... we're trying to say that the Night Sisters... Unless we're trying to say that the Night Sisters here were constantly in communication with the ones on Daphimir. Um and so they were uh, able to like yeah. learn Galactic Basic that way. And and they it, never told those those Night Sisters, hey, you can always like escape the Empire by getting in the mouths of whales and coming here. It's just yeah, there's so <laughs> many questions. And it's just and it's yet another like insanely ridiculous OP Night Sister power. The fact that, you know, they, they could communicate across galaxies. It's like, well, that's another one to add to their long list of crazy abilities. Mm -hmm. Zara, Zara Miller in the chat's like, I have shit. Zara Miller in the chat's like, I have so many questions. Like, yeah, Zara, same. Like, yeah, I don't understand I don't, what's yeah. going on. with What is the state of affairs of this galaxy? Does it? Do they have hyperdrives? Do they have like a galactic civilization or or space varying civilizations? But of that's their own? the thing. I was I was going to say they have to at least have mastered some like in ancient past. Like they have to have at least mastered like a very rudimentary level of space travel, right? Because like surely they didn't just get in the mouths of whales without having like a ship or something to carry them. Again, surely we're not knows? saying they rode in the Purgle's mouths just as <laughs> the Night Sisters were just standing on their tongues. Yeah, yeah also, like, imagine... how did they yeah, get bro. out of the other end? Like the whales stop <laughs> the whales like stop out in space, and the like, guy's like, okay, open your mouth now. And the whales like, Are you sure? Alrighty then. Well, I, I just know the whale it would be, it would be funny if the... and once they were in atmosphere, they just spat them out. Well, I, yeah, I, I joked that it would be funny if, like, rather than transporting Ahsoka to this galaxy, like, the whale just shits her ship out. <laughs> also, I'd like to point like, out, by the way, that, um, oh. like, ba Balin explicitly calls Peridia, like, he's talking to Shin, and he's like, oh, the la the lost great kingdom of the Night Sisters of, of, the, of the Witches of Dathomir. I'm like, wait, hang on. So not only was Peridia, like, a thing that apparently loads of people knew about through, like, folk stories and stuff, like, extra galactic travel's been well known about for ages, but everyone knew that the Dathomirians were from that other galaxy? Like that Apparently. was just common knowledge. Uh, I don't know. Jesus, <laughs> I kind of would think that if 
instead of the planet being like maybe a rogue planet that orbits the galaxy or maybe somewhere deep in the wild space would be far fucking better than this. I mean, it'd also have to be around a rogue sun, otherwise that thing would be frozen solid. But yeah, I, I take it. Right, yeah. Yeah, well, because everybody had just assumed early on that Thrawn was somewhere in the unknown regions. But it's like, wow, Filoni, for some reason, felt that it was necessary to go a step further, 10 steps further, and take them to a new galaxy. I, I just, I don't understand the necessity of any of this. Yeah, um... I, I, I want to get into Thrawn's motivations, but I, I will we'll hold off because there's so much to say, not just about that, but about like what they could have done, uh, what they could have explored, elements from the books that are canon that they could have pulled into this, uh, the storytelling potential uh, like about Ezra and Thrawn and everything. But before we even continue on, I'll read out this super chat from Bob Skywalker for four ninety nine. I'm more shocked that Thrawn hasn't carved out his own pocket empire. He, he seems pretty ambitious, unless I misunderstood Thrawn as character. I mean, how would he have? He's been stranded, right? Well, I guess he the idea is like, why, do why doesn't he just try and establish like a new empire on Perdia? And I'm like, because Thrawn was never interested in to empire rule over what? For the sake of empire. Well, that's the thing. Like, Thrawn was never interested in ruling things for the sake of ruling them. He's not interested in power for the sake of power. <laughs> Thrawn uh... in the original canon and in the EU, like his motivations was to gain power to save the Chiss from an incoming invasion. Like, well, maybe not anymore. Well, that's the thing. Like now, I don't know what he wants, but yeah. Uh... Oh, and there's one point because um, you had mentioned earlier uh, the 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 great mothers or whatever, whatever the hell they're called. Um, how do they? Maybe they're in contact constantly with uh, Night Sister survivors or whoever uh, in the regular galaxy. Um, I, I think that actually is true because there is another line from them in this scene where they say uh, Sabine stinks of Jedi. So they know about mm. the Jedi and like they apparently know what they quote unquote smell well, like, whatever that means. <laughs> so <laughs> I we, guess we need to we, we need to take into account that obviously these Night Sisters probably know about Ezra and Thrawn has probably told them a great deal about certain things like what Jedi are and what the Empire is and that sort of thing. Even if they true. haven't been in contact with the Night Sisters for all these all these years. Would yeah, that true. mean they know what Jedi smell like? Well, I, I guess if we go be, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's be, let's be good. I know it's Ezra hard, is the let's... frame of reference. <laughs> well, that's things like let's. I know it's. I know it's hard, given that the show makes it impossible to be like this. But let's be good faith here and be like, maybe by smell they're talking about like some kind of force sensitivity. Like he feels like a, you know, someone feels like a Jedi in the force, and by Jedi yeah. they mean like essentially a light side user. And I'm like, no, okay, I know that. Got... I know that. I know that's what they mean. But I, well, I, I don't mean literally. That's why smell, they didn't but... smell Balin and Shin. <laughs> well, yeah. So the question is like, so so Sabine, who has almost no force sensitivity, smells like Jedi. But Balin, who literally was one for thirty years, and Shin, who's been trained as effectively one, don't smell well, of, of the. Okay. Also, how how long yeah. range is this smell thing? Because how the fuck did they not find Ezra if they can smell his ass from all the way around the planet? I, I, I just find it funny that what, smell what, what can is they the smell? fucking word they chose. I'm sorry, Chief. They can smell his what? They sniffed his we, behind. We can smell <laughs> Jedi ass. <laughs> Ezra is just really, Ezra's just really unhygienic. Doesn't ever use his toilet roll, and they're like, yeah, we know, we know. Yeah, that's what's around. even though even though his current camp is like next to a, a river or something, it wasn't there a lake in the background or something like that. Yep. Well, Whatever I mean, to be fair, was. to be fair, we we have no idea what the crabs smell like. Maybe the crabs smell even worse. Maybe that's why he's hiding there. <laughs> crab people. <laughs> It'll hide my Jackson. You know, yeah, like in Percy that's... Jackson, half blood could be smelled by monsters. So Percy's mom <laughs> got with like a really gross, disgusting man, so that they could throw off his scent that way. Yeah, <laughs> that's what the crabs are for. <laughs> uh, Ezra, Ezra, Ezra has farts. crabs. E Ezra force farts <laughs> every day to troll the mothers. <laughs> also, I don't know if this is confirmed, but I remember someone someone tweeted uh, like, "Oh, apparently his chainmail shirt is like made of like stormtrooper dog tags." I was like, "I really yeah, hope that's not true," uh, because oh my wait, god, wait, Ezra's. A, well, so someone was like, you know, because he's wearing like a chainmail vest underneath his robes, and someone was like, "Oh." Those to those chain like links are made from like the dog tags of dead stormtroopers. I was like, Jesus, <laughs> Ezra's a psychopath. Oh my god. Yeah, and someone it's someone unironically movies. defended that by saying, uh, well, we know he likes to collect stormtrooper helmets, so it's really the same thing. <laughs> yeah. 
occasionally collecting a helmet from like most people who are mostly knocked out or even just killed when they're trying to kill you versus systematically hunting down enough troopers to like make a fucking shirt out of their tags <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's specifically making clothing out of an item that you're using to celebrate your victory compared to hey you've got a cool helmet i'm gonna paint this Hey, she, you know what you should do is like, you know that bit in Clone Wars where there's that, that clone who like collects the fingers of droids and they're all uh-huh. like, you're sick. There's something wrong with you. <laughs> um, but anyway, so yeah, and, and, that, and that's what happens. They're basically like, well, what the fuck is she doing here? And then they, they take uh, Sabine into a cell because she can't be trusted. And while she's in the cell, she tries to use the force again. And um, well, I guess I won't get to I won't get into this yet because this is also the scene where like Balin sort of establishes his motivations that we sort of we talked we talked about a, a minute ago about wanting to end some kind of historical cycle. Um, one thing I just worth noting is just like I don't know why Shin doesn't know what his motivations are, at least to an well, extent. Get- like maybe he isn't telling her everything, but like, come on. Well, I wonder if that's, I mean, in, in the hands of a more competent writer, you could use that to hint at like some level of distrust between Master and Apprentice, where he's like, yeah, you're very powerful, but like you're still like overly proud and hungry for power. And like, I don't know if it's a good idea to tell you this plan I just, yet. I don't know why she would follow him if she doesn't even know what he's trying to do. Uh, well, again, we don't know. Like, there's, like, there's only a number of reasons why she might, but I have no idea because we don't have anything on her. Maybe she, maybe he raised her. Maybe he's effectively her dad. I don't fucking know. The show doesn't fucking know. The character, the actress, probably doesn't fucking know. Like, I'm assuming that he took her in when she was very young, so it could be just that she does see him as something of a father, or like you know, you know, something like that. Um, it's kind of like a D- Darth the Zana kind of thing. But uh, yeah, but yeah, at the same time, it. if I'm if I'm her. I'd be like, you, you know, I've, I've, we've been doing this shit for thirty fucking years. Can you please tell me, like, what you're actually <laughs> trying to do? Maybe I could help you. I, you know, like, how frustrating well, would no, that no, be? No, Every no, time but, you but ask she... him a question, he just gives you a bunch of vague non-answers. But that's exactly what he fucking does when she, she's told to go find uh, Sabine. She just, hey, Sabine's on Lethal. Bye. Like, what the fuck am <laughs> I supposed to do? I don't know. <laughs> you know, Lothal is a planet, so <laughs> I guess I'll just kind of narrow it down. Well, but see, yeah, you know, no. well, yeah, and it's obvious that like Balin doesn't explain these things because uh, then we would be telling the audience that, and we got to keep them in suspense. So, uh, like, that's the only reason. It's only a meta explanation. There's not like an in-universe. So maybe reason. just don't have these scenes at all. Yeah, yeah. Maybe let's not. No. Have I know you want to vaguely There's... hint to some kind of greater character, but like, come on, guys. There is one very funny thing about Sabine when she's put in the cell, which is the cell door takes a bloody age to close. She could have walked out. Oh, I saw that. I noticed that too on my rewatch. Yeah. Like, she could have just, like, walked (laughs) straight out and gone looking for Ezra. (laughs) Like, Yeah. But yeah, while she's in the cell, she starts trying to use the Force again. Uh, It's just another bit of setup to that that payoff that I'm sure is coming. Inevitable Where she finally does master telekinesis. They, They do that thing where they kind of subvert you, quote unquote, where they're like, Oh shit! It's working. It's shaking, and then oh no, no, it's actually just like a star destroyer is looming overhead. Um, which does that cause structures underneath it to start rumbling? I, I guess mean, I don't it know. does. I don't know. I, I don't. Maybe know how it's these like when stay people <laughs> like rev up their engines to be assholes when they're going through a neighborhood. And they want their engine to be really loud. Maybe Thrawn just really, really likes revving his <laughs> ship's engine <laughs> to cause earthquakes. I mean, I he's already, like, can... already traced it out with like the spinning gold rims, so yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a little weird <laughs> since it's like since it's like a pretty solid like stone structure, this like temple or whatever that they're in. You'd think it wouldn't rumble like rumble to that degree, but uh, I could, I guess, uh, yeah, you'd think. imagine that it would rumble a little, just like the the engines on the thrusters of like a big ship like that. Like you would, there would probably be like, you know, some rumbling if you're if you were close by to it. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So, but yeah, and the and the star destroyer is you know souped out. He's got all that fucking gold on there now. Um, here's the thing. I guess we, I, I think of this now. Thrawn and Ezra should never have survived the journey. Just period. We, we we've already touched on this earlier. Like the fact that there were no windows in the bridge where they were at would mean that the second they enter the vacuum, they're fucking dead. Um, let alone traveling all the way to another galaxy. 
then like either when they came out of hyperspace, they were outside of the planet and therefore the vacuum should have killed them there. Or they came out of hyperspace in atmosphere and would have just crashed immediately and died that way. Either way, not only should they be dead, but the, the, the chimera should be in total disrepair, like not possibly fixing that. But like instead, it's like, well, we found some gold metal, I guess, and patched it up a little bit here and there. And now it's as good as new. Well, yeah, it seems like the like, the damage that's okay. the damage that's been repaired. It seems like the the damage that's been repaired was the initial damage that it took when the Purgle slammed into it during the Battle of Lothal. Like that's the it seems like yeah, that's the that's only I mean. damage apparently that they needed to repair. I, I, I don't know. I guess yeah, that's I don't believe really that. That's yeah. Um, and and yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's maybe, weird. Maybe and, like, the fucking and whales. Got, Maybe the fucking right. whales put the chimera in their mouth so that they could be safe from the vacuum. <laughs> oh God, I mean, uh, Ahsoka's <laughs> ship is one thing, but like his entire the chimera, like okay, that's got to be like one that, big whale. Have to be a big I just like the idea that uh, I just like the idea that what Ezra actually told the space whales was that the chimera was a space whale and they were actually just trying to mate with it. That's that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that explains the damage, the structural damage. Yeah, I mean, see the thing is, and it. it it's I've always given it. To, I've always given it to rebels. I've always given it to rebels that, um, like Thrawn and Ezra's di survival rather was never confirmed in the text. Like, obviously, it was heavily implied, but like because that's an issue, I'm willing to say that rebels gets off the hook potentially for not confirming it. But of course, now that's not possible. They're alive. They survived. Okay. Well, cool. we, we all knew yeah. that they survived. Well, yeah, we knew that they were they weren't just gonna like not do it another thing of to that course. story. But, yeah. What I'm no, saying is like I'm Star Wars no, 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 no. They even say explicitly, like, oh, Ezra's out there and we need to find him. No, no so yeah, Star they Wars, have a character. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everyone, sorry. Star Wars droid theory. Hang no. On. <laughs> no. Oh, oh I read I, that. I, yeah. We can't yeah. have this. Oh, comment now. We can't uh... have this. Well, no, I, I mean, I kind of get what they're... They made a comment before, by the way. Uh, this person's theory is that Ezra and Thrawn, I think, are actually dead. And they themselves are zombies that are being controlled by the Night I Sisters. I saw that. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. Oh, no. I just... I just... We can't. Please, please, can we demand more from media than this? Please? I really hope... I want, I want... I, I want more things like I, Arcane I, and Westworld season one. I don't want more of this shit. See, I, I want to think that eventually it'll get to, it, it'll finally get absurd enough to a point where fans will like, no, like everyone will just unanimously be like, that was fucking stupid. Right. Like eventually we have to reach that breaking point. Right. Surely. But like, surely. Um, and at that point, then yet. maybe, but yeah, it's some. Now it hasn't happened yet, but like surely when that does happen, then everyone will finally be like, "Wow, we really should have demanded more," and then there we we can start getting some real effective pushback. That's my hope. I don't think it's going to happen though, considering again, like we've kind know. of reached I, that I, point I thought, already, I, and somehow people still defend shit like this. I thought that we got. I thought hopefully that we had gotten to that point with Andor, but it turns out we we didn't. I don't know. Well, like haven't you heard? Andor was really yeah. boring. Apparently, yeah, it's boring. <laughs> No, but what I was saying is, um, no, yeah, obviously the show is telling us that Ezra, uh, Rebels rather, is telling us that Ezra survived. But what I'm saying is that all we really have officially is Sabine saying he's out there and I'm totally I like, I, I'm, and I'm going to find him. And like the thing is, like, she could yeah. obviously just like be telling herself something that isn't true. You know, all I'm saying is that Rebels doesn't outright confirm it. No, it's true. Yeah, but this does. And, uh... I don't know. There's there's a lot of uh, the moment that Thra the Chimera arrives again, um, and uh, like we see the gold plated ship and everything. It's just uh, there's a lot of questions again right off the bat. I mean, I don't know. I guess Peridia is like rich in gold or some side of some sort of gold like material because Enoch like his mask has it. Some of the other stormtroopers mm -hmm. like I, I don't know. I guess they've been taking this resource and supplementing their own uh, items with it. So that's that's one thing. Um, another question I have is, uh, why are Thrawn and Ezra separated? Because the last time we saw them, like uh, Thrawn was at Ezra's mercy. So like, I don't really understand how they ended up separated. Well, they must the have design. crashed, and then I guess like when everyone kind of came to, 
Ezra found himself outnumbered by all the stormtroopers that I guess survived as well as Thrawn. And yeah. then like they chased him out or he had to run or I don't know, something like that. Or maybe I mean, he just he got captured and then escaped over the course of however many years they've been there. Well, the, the other yes. the other question is, um, and this again this comes down to motivations of like why is Thrawn not looking for him? Because the problem is, is like as you know, before you know, other than banking on Morgan Elsbeth to develop a, a hitherto unknown technology to come and grab him back, Thrawn's only way of getting out of this planet that he has in any, has in any way got control over even potentially, is like, if he can capture Ezra, Ezra can talk to the whales. Maybe the, maybe he can get Ezra to take mm -hmm. them all back. Wouldn't he be looking for Ezra? And even, yeah, if, he, yeah. and even if he... I mean, if, if he not... Uh, Ezra's still a threat, he should, yeah. He should, yeah, he should consider Ezra a threat, because if he try, if he does find, like, a viable means of escape, there's a chance that Ezra will ob obstruct his escape with the whales, like he did last time. Um, Ezra... I just like the idea that this entire by, time... Can take him home or kill him. That Thr every time Thrawn tries to escape, like a Sunday cartoon, Ezra just foils all of his plans. He's like, "I'll get you next time, Ezra." <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like, well, Dick it's like Dick Dossel in Wacky Races. Well, and it's worth <laughs> mentioning that, uh, like, it, it's worth mentioning the fact that uh, one of the prevailing theories that a lot of people had going into this show was that uh, when we finally saw Ezra and Thrawn again. They would actually be like working together. Like Ezra would have actually put aside his differences with Thrawn willingly once Thrawn actually explained some, like more of his motivations, his motivations to protect the galaxy and his own people from the Grisks and stuff. Um, it's like, well, uh, that that didn't happen. Um, and in fact, Thrawn just simply wants Ezra dead again because you know, like Sheev said, he thinks that Ezra is going to hinder any of his efforts to get back home. So the thought of uh, like trying to mm -hmm. uh, let bygones be bygones and make a truce with Ezra, like that apparently hasn't even entered Thrawn's mind. Um, I don't know. Right. And and so the, the bottom line here being that Thrawn would want to find Ezra. Um, and as we lay out what then happens throughout the episode, it's going to become apparent that Thrawn has to actually be brain dead in order to have not found Ezra by now. Yeah. Um, like, Sabine found him pretty easily. Sabine later. found him... <laughs> Sabine found him in like an afternoon. <laughs> Going off and of I information know... that Thrawn gave her, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know they gave her intel or whatever, but like, yeah. Like, fly some drops. That's what I'm saying. Is that is hey, that look, there's a village if here? She... Oh, what what is in the village? You know what? You, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah, let's get into it now. Fuck it. Um, he essentially decides. Yeah, I'm I'm quote unquote honoring the deal that you made with Balin by letting you go. I'm giving you provisions. I'm giving you arms. Um, and then he sends her out when in actuality, what he wants is for her to use that Intel that he gave her, uh, like regarding Ezra's general location, like his last known whereabouts to then find Ezra. And then through a bunch of bullshit, she, she finds like these rock people, these like, uh, fucking crabs that like have rock shells and they rec like one of them recognizes the rebel symbol on her armor, uh, pieces together that she is with Ezra. Or like she knows Ezra, and then she takes, and then they take her to Ezra, and he's like, in, like a little camp by the lakeside. That's not hard to find or spot um, for anyone looking. It's not even that far away from where Thrawn sent her, um, and she's able to find him within the span of a few hours. So like, come on, guys! Like it's 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 impossible. Like yeah, it is impossible unless Thrawn is actually an idiot that he never found Ezra in all this time. Yeah, um, I guess maybe he um, was afraid. That maybe he was fearful because he does mention at one point that um, we our numbers have thinned, uh, our numbers have dwindled since we arrived here. So the risk of I, you know, and Ezra's a Jedi and stuff, and so I guess uh, although he's a Jedi without a lightsaber, as far as we know, um, unless he somehow yeah, built a new a one, I don't know how he would. Um, so well, I was, I was gonna say, like, Kanan on his Star Destroyer, right? So maybe Ezra got a hold of that. Oh, I forgot about that. Is that still where it would be? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that would actually not. be interesting if he has Kanan's lightsaber. That actually would be kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Okay. I guess it, let, let's assume let's let's assume for the sake of the argument that he has Kanan's lightsaber. I guess the idea is that like he doesn't want to like risk more of his troops going after Ezra. Um, 
considering his numbers have dwindled. Why not? And I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Like this is. I'm just trying to come up with an explanation. Well, the thing is, even if we were accepting that, it is almost a certainty that the stormtroopers that we see in this episode are zombies, and I'm about to lay out why. So the whole like dwindling numbers thing just doesn't work because it's like, oh, we'll just resurrect them. It's okay. Yeah, apparently they can do that. Yeah, like, we have, like we have all the resources extra. we need. Mm -hmm. yeah, and but yeah, God, so, so just real quick, when it, when it comes to the whole freaking zombie thing, I actually think it would have been just so much more interesting if you had the, this wayward regiment of stormtroopers, like actual stormtroopers that somehow survived. I mean, Thrawn and Ezra somehow survived, so why not the stormtrooper crew? Um, you know, and they... It would be interesting yeah, just to explore to like, like what their like mentality is. And, like, yeah, I mean, they, they would have to somehow you, feed themselves this whole time, like an entire regiment. Um, but mm -hmm. I don't know. It's it, Barring all that, it would have been interesting just to see like what their perspective is and what their whole like the, the culture of this regiment is after they've been stranded for over 10 years. But if they are zombies, like I doubt we're going to actually explore that. Yeah. yeah. Um I just again I just don't think we have the time. We only have two episodes left. But um but yeah, so I told you guys to pay attention to the fact that like the naming convention in the show is very unsubtle, obviously. And so now we're introduced to Thrawn and all of his stormtroopers. They have like busted up armor and shit. They're called night troopers in the captions. And you know, then there's Captain Enoch, who is uh, the person in Odrin's profile picture here. Um, that's just what his helmet looks like for some reason. I, I don't know why. Um, and Enoch is the name of a biblical uh, patriarch from like the pre-flood era before Noah's Ark. Uh, who? Let's see. How did I just? How is it written in in Hebrews eleven five? Uh, blah 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 blah. Looking in my notes. Where the fuck is it? Had the exact quote and everything. Here it is. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. It is very heavily implied by this name and the leaks that we got like a while back that Thrawn is like the space night king or whatever. Um, that this is a character who has not been touched by death or that has somehow subverted death in some way. And that would apply to all the other uh, zombies or the night, the night troopers rather. Um, I, th I thought that, I thought that it was a reference. Disagree with that. Nope. I thought it was a reference to Enoch Thompson from uh, boardwalk empire. Yeah. It's actually Enoch <laughs> from Ben 10. You know, hmm. I was going to say, yeah, Enoch from Ben 10 looks very similar to Enoch in this show. So I guess there's another one. Yeah, it's another, off another rip off from Dave. Yeah, no, I mean, like it's it's a pretty good theory, and and honestly, I I think you're right. I, I think they're they're gonna be zombies, and that's just like, oh god. I mean, the, the best maybe it's a red herring. True, like, well, it, the best thing I can hope for if they actually turn out to be like zombies is that that's only going to be contained to this series. It, it's not going to be some bullshit that we heard in those leaks months ago, where like Thrawn, Thrawn's end game is going to like. He's going to launch a, a zombie invasion on the galaxy. Fucking hell. It doesn't matter. because The thing is, if if we are establishing that you have the means to just resurrect your army, then the stakes are gone. Well, like, what even is the villain's uh, um, force at that point? Unless it's like, uh, unless it's a fucking Phantom Menace thing where, like, killing the Great Mothers kills all of their respective zombies. Well, and the, I was... The White Walkers. Well, I was going to say, like, the Great Mothers, if they end up dead by the end of this series, then, yeah. But, like, again, I'm saying, like, is it White Walker rules where, like, if you kill one of the Great Mothers, then all the zombies that they've resurrected just drop dead? Well, Probably. Like was, I mean, that, that was, that's, that's what it was in the Clone Wars, right? When they started yeah, yeah. zombie lady, she, all the zombies went down. Daka, yeah, once they killed Daka, uh, then they all went down. Well, again, like... I, I feel like these are different things, maybe, because the zombies in the Clone Wars were, like, actual zombies. They were just reanimated corpses that were being controlled, whereas in this show, they seem to be a lot more sophisticated. They seem to actually be able to walk and talk and think and act. Um, yeah, I don't, there's another thing here. You know, I, 
that's, that's, it's just very funny, right? Because, like, obviously, Anakin's whole shtick was, like, he, he wants to stop people from dying. Palpatine's whole shtick in the sequels is, like, oh, I, I've learned to clone myself and, and, you know, and to keep myself from death. And I'm, like, why bother with the shitty puppeteered corpse puppet thing that you're living in if there is a power in this galaxy that apparently Morgan Elspeth is powerful enough to use, but you can just resurrect the actual dead, just, like, literally bring them all back, body and soul. Uh, what the hell was the point <laughs> of the dyad? What was Palpatine doing? I don't know. Yep. It's just, oh my god, this freaking universe at this point. Oh, it's so broken. It's broken <laughs> on every single level. Like, I, I, I was saying this to Chief, there is almost nothing I can think of that is systematically as broken as Star Wars now is. No, it's it's like they, mm-hmm. they've they gotten everything. They've they've hit it all. Like, every character, every concept. Well, not a multiverse If there yet. is even one... Yet. If there is even one corner of the Star Wars mythos that hasn't been completely tarnished, like it's it's up next, it's on the chopping block. But if yeah. there is, I can't think of it. Oh, the next no, the next one will be multiverse is then Kotor, and then Anakin will turn out to have never actually been redeemed. That'll that'll be the, the final trifecta. Oh fuck yeah, me. And, and then and then See, the well, OG being raped. Episode made, five. Then... Episode five did kind of kind of touch on this idea that like what like what Anakin is now in, in his state as a force ghost is some kind of like amalgamation between Anakin and Vader that he's like achieved true balance by incorporating both elements of who he is as one singular being. And it's like, no, fuck you. That's not yeah. how that works. That's not redemption. He telling me that he's half Vader. No, no. Uh, uh, yeah. It's, no, it's, fuck it's, that. Fuck that's off. Bad. Well, and so um, I don't know if if you want to like move ahead a little bit here. The um, there there was one thing in this scene, uh, the scene where Sabine meets uh, Thrawn. Um, uh, well, actually, there's one more thing I wanted to talk about before we get to that oh, scene. Go ahead, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, just taking note of the fact that so then you know we we meet Thrawn. He comes out and he's talking to the Night Sisters, and then he's like, "Who the fuck is this?" And he looks over at Balin and Shin, and uh, Morgan introduces Balin. And he says, so that would make you General Balin Skull. So, like, he, you know, Thrawn has studied his Clone Wars history, guys. He knows who Balin Skull is. Uh, some fucking obscure-ass Jedi that no one's ever fucking heard of before. Uh, that even Ahsoka didn't know about. And she was there. She, like, existed in the war. So he he knows he knows a lot of the players in the in the Clone Wars. It, you know, even some uh, of the, the more minor players. But then he doesn't know who's who Anakin's Padawan was. Which is weird because yep. they've canonically they he canonically have met. Never heard of. Like well, canonically, I, I, yeah, I, I they've canonically wrong. met. What, and in that, because it's a Disney book, so it's a Disney canon. Didn't Anakin talk about Ahsoka to Thrawn in that book? Uh, I, well, see, that's what I can't. I, I needed to dig up my copy because I actually I I have read Thrawn alliances. I, I can't remember. She, she didn't appear in it. Um, Padme did, but Ahsoka didn't. I can't remember. The, yeah, if this Ahsoka was, was ever this mentioned. chronologically takes place after Ahsoka would have left. But like, okay. Um, I think sorry. the only time Ahsoka's mentioned is from Padme. So, uh, sorry, Chief. Just very, mm. very quickly to the to the stack and the stack and Arvo. The the ships in this universe do not use warp drive. Warp drive is not something that exists in Star Wars, as far as we know. Hyperspace is something completely different to warp drives. The, Star Wars ships do not work by bending space. That is not how they work. Warp drive but anyway. is a Star Trek thing, right? Yeah, and other media as well. But warp drive is like you are literally like condensing the space in front of you to make the distance shorter. Like you're bending actual physical space. Hyperspace is you're going through an entirely different realm of space. It's not the same thing at all. Mm-hmm. Sorry, very phys- physics pedantry, but it has implications for how things function in the universe. So I just thought I'd clear that up. Um, c- can you're anyone a chat- real nerd, aren't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I teach at university. What do you think? Nerd! <laughs> nerd. Um... But yeah, I don't know. Can somebody in chat, like, because I know that Padme does share a few uh, scenes in the books with Ron. Uh, did does she mention Ahsoka in a scene I'm with Ron, sure or was it a scene does. by herself? Okay. Because um, I know she was off on her own, said, and Anakin was searching for her sometimes. So I, I don't know. Either way, it's just it, it's kind of weird. And either I can't really come up with an explanation for it, um, even if. Like, let's say Padme never mentioned Ahsoka to Thrawn. Like, it, yeah, it's just strange that he would know some random person like Balin Skull. Yeah, so, but then he doesn't know Anakin. Oh my, like, sorry. Oh my. Yes. Oh my God. No. No. Hyperspace is not warp. Jesus Christ. I don't know how much I have to say this. Right. Warp is manipulating. 
space is made of three dimensions. Warping, warp drives manipulate those three dimensions. Hyperdrive, uh, hyperspace is, is dimensions beyond those three. It's about extra dimensions. I don't want to have to say this again. Jesus Christ. Jolly. Just ignore <laughs> that, Jolly. Take Come a on. chill let's, pill. Let's try, to, let's try to fucking move on from that. Deep I'm trying breaths. to talk about Thrawn and, and what he knows about Ahsoka now. So we let, let, them, be, let them be wrong, is what I'm saying. Just, just ignore them. <laughs> Um, no, but like, yeah, so j yeah, canonically, he's met Anakin, might have heard of Ahsoka through that. Even putting that aside, it does not matter because Anakin was like one of the most famous Jedi ever to live. Um, and if you've done any fucking research on the Clone Wars, you'd have to at least know about Anakin. And if you know about Anakin, you probably know who his Padawan was that commanded a lot of the troops in the same battles as him. Like, how do, how, how do you not know who she is? And Thrawn would want to know, uh, since Thrawn is able to deduce in that book that Vader and Anakin are one and the same, um, he, you would think that he would have had like an interest in knowing more about Vader's like history, um, including who his Padawan mm -hmm. was during the Clone Wars. So, yeah, I, I just, I don't buy it. I don't buy it that he wouldn't already know Ahsoka. I mean, I guess, you know, to jump ahead to that scene just really quickly, I, I, I appreciate that he has a vested interest in understanding everything there is to know about Ahsoka, um, because that's something that Thrawn would do. Um, but it's just weird that he wouldn't already know this. But he knows Balin's skull. Yeah. He, I mean, he could even literally just, like, uh, look over at one of his, his troops and be like, pull up everything we have on Ahsoka Tano. You know, like, dig into my library. Something like unless that. the unless the idea is that he wants to know everything about her since like the Clone Wars or whatever, because he he obviously never interacted with her in Rebels. She was already like, gone said, by that point. But... Uh, yeah, I know, but it's yeah, it, it, he he does mean everything. So yeah, I don't know, I don't get sure. it. Uh, Sam Montgomery, thank you for the super chat uh how much do you want to bet that the ben 10 enoch who was so inept his boss uh left him to be let him be strand let him be arrested uh will be more competent than this enoch i've never seen ben 10 uh like at least not since i was a very small child and even then it was like in passing so i don't know i don't know anything about enoch i'm sure he'll be he'll be smarter than captain enoch in this show though jolly yeah, you doing good dumbass. yeah i'm fine are okay. you still seething and coping? Just, yes, I'm doing all of it. You've just been quiet. You've just been quiet. So I didn't want you to simmer in your in your disdain and hatred for that that whole thing. I'm not simmering. I'm just, I'm just, I had nothing to contribute <laughs> to that last five minutes. I've just been listening. Oh. Um, okay. I'm just, I'm just making sure. I, so we're all like agreement. What do we th what do we think about his design? Thrawn? I think it's ugly Wait, shit. Enoch or Enoch or Thrawn Enoch. live action? Enoch. I hate it. Uh, yeah, it's it's ugly. <laughs> it looks so out of place, and I don't see the point of it. It looks so funny to me. It looks stupid. <laughs> but every, I've I posted it on Twitter, basically laughing, and so many people. Like, oh my god, it looks so cool! It's like, are we looking at the same mm -hmm. thing here? Like, I can't look at that guy and take him seriously. No, like, no, no. Fuck? It's it's. Uh... I mean, to each their own, right? If, if you like, like it, I'm of the sure harpy. Good... Yeah, yeah, the person like good for you if you like it, but to me, it does look like a very knockoff son of the harpy or something. It, similar it's like it's it's something about like the eye holes. Like it, I don't mind the gold necessarily, but there's like yeah. that combined with like just the weird like eye Based. holes that don't really yeah like they're not consistent with like normal stormtrooper eye holes, and maybe they should have tried something oh, like shit. that to make it. I don't know. Brian, Brian, I'm sorry. He left a super chat a while ago that I completely missed. Um, thank you, first of all. And I guess Christoph and Sven were off getting food. Fuck, I, now I don't know what the context was for that. Shit. Well, the, the context is that Christoph and Sven were off getting food. My God. <laughs> True. Uh, when did he say that? Maybe I could figure it out like, from context from other chatters. Uh, or maybe he could just tell me. I don't know. What do people think of... Um out of Thrawn's look, because I've seen a lot of uh, debate about this. Well, yeah, people are mocking the fact I'm that, like, Lars Mikkelsen's kind of, he's, like, chubby and stuff, but, like, eh, I don't know. He's yeah, not even know. chubby. Yeah. Is he? He's a, he's a little pudgy in the cheeks, but, like, no, it's real, I think it's the uniform that's making him look fat at all, because, no, Lars Mikkelsen is a pretty skinny guy. He's pretty fit, too, I think they, actually. They yeah. should have, they should have focused a lot more on, like, being careful with the angles they show 
if they if he didn't yeah. have the body mm-hmm. and if the uniform wasn't quite fitting only show him from the waist up and only show him from the front don't show him from the side where he's like his back's a bit hunched and yeah. like oh it's because he was it, fuck it, it's because he was talking about we were talking about the rock trolls a, a minute uh, ago oh i mean yeah. the thing with um thrawn's design is like i would just say like the, the the real issues are his hair looks a bit weird. That's a, that's just bad hair design. But the second thing is like the mm-hmm. uniform doesn't seem to fit the actor very well. Like it seems weirdly baggy on him, and it just accentuates the kind of like shapelessness. Yeah. Which you know you could have done something interesting with that, where like maybe Thrawn is very is like a lot more frail now because he's had to like obviously ration his food a lot more carefully. Um, maybe he, maybe he, his cheeks are sunken. Maybe he, his hair is disheveled. Maybe his, his once uh, perfectly fitting suit or like uniform is kind of baggy on him now because he's just a lot skinnier. You could do something with that, make him look kind of ghoulish and and battered, and like that could be really interesting. We could, but that involves uh, they didn't, even, but they, they that? could do that. <laughs> It's like, yeah, they could have. That's that's that, you know what, Chief? I'll give it to you. That was definitely a possible thing they could have done. They could have um, done a better yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. I think Thrawn I think Thrawn looks fine. My only real nitpick is that his his like the, the blue of his skin is too dark. It's consistent with like the uh the OG Thrawn trilogy blue color, but like it's not consistent with how he looked in Rebels. Yeah. Yeah. I just it also looks very nitpick there. obviously like it also looks very obviously like skin paint rather than a natural skin color, but yeah, I'm mm. I'm kind of indifferent to it. I don't really feel strongly about it one way or the other. I know some people say it, but... it could have been good, but I'm I'm not entirely sold just from the way that they've portrayed it. I will say I do yeah. very much appreciate that Lars Lars Mikkelsen is doing a great voice performance. Like again, like there yeah. are some mm-hmm. wonderful lines where like when he like so when Morgan's like should we send more than two units, the way he responds is like so fucking like it's such a great put down. Or he's like, well, no, we're like, we've lost loads of men over the years, so no, we're not going to be doing that. And like, with the subtext of you idiot, um, mm. <laughs> and I was like, man, it's really nice to see Lars Mikkelsen eating that role again. It's it's a shame that, that they haven't given him like the prosthetics and the the uniform to match that performance. But you know, yeah, the show the show only cost what like a hundred and thirty million dollars. <laughs> because someone referenced it, I'd actually be not saying that they should have done this, but just as like it, to see how it would fit. I wouldn't Hang mind on. seeing like Matt Smith in the role of Thrawn. Hmm. He's too young. I think. So, Tar- so Tarkin looked bad. So this comment says, so Tarkin looked bad in Rogue One, but Thrawn looks good. What? We have. We didn't say Thrawn uh, looked good. We said Thrawn looked all right. We didn't say he looked good. I think we we've criticized many aspects fine. of his behavior. Oh, yeah, but it's also a completely different thing. Um, Thrawn is all practical yeah. here. And if anything, whatever shortcomings he has come from that sort of thing that they didn't put in enough effort to make him, you know, Tarkin is a CGI abomination. They're, they're not they, the they, same. They tried too at hard all. with the shadows, and it made they, they got like look at his face in uh, New Hope, and then look at his face in Rogue One, and they've gone really hard with the shadows on his face, and they've also gone like really hard with the wrinkles. When it, in actuality, it, his face was much more subtle than that. Yeah, like th- this argument. This argument would only work if Thrawn was also like CGI, and we'd be like, "Yeah, Thrawn looks fine. It's good." But and maybe he would. I don't know. Maybe they would have done the CGI better for him than they did in Rogue he would One. Not we don't know. Like, I why mean, are you? I, he could have. He could have, of course. But given the show, no, no, no. But I'm just saying, like, to, like have just the worst effects you've ever seen in your life. He would have looked like shit. No, he would have. But I'm just saying, like, to this person's point, it's like, why are you defending this? But you didn't like this. It's like, first of all, we said nothing about Rogue One, so like, I don't. He looks I don't like know shit. God, come on, up. let's not. He does not look like let's, shit. Let's, he let's, looks let's not be hyper. Yeah, let's not be hyperbolic. There are significantly worse things in Star Wars, that, like <laughs> looks wise than this. Yeah, we're not yeah. saying he looks great. None of us have said that. Everything he looks else amazing. about the we scene looks that. terrible. The he background looks is better abysmal. than a CW show. Oh yeah, the co- the, compos- the compositing of the background with the foreground is hilariously oh, out of place. It's I, terrible. I saw that before I watched the episode, and I was just flabbergasted. Like the layers, um, the like la- the focus mm. blur. The focus blur was another thing I noticed as well. If you look, the characters in the foreground are more kind of like weirdly focused, and the the background has a well, sharper focus. This show consistently has a problem with that. I remember harping on it in the trailer. The 
the shot of Ahsoka standing in front of the forest when she said the fucking stupid ass heir to the Empire line in episode four. Um, yeah. Like they've all they've done is just given a like put in a generic forest background, turn the blur effect all the way up to a hundred, and then just superimposed uh, Rosario in front of that. It looks terrible. They don't know how they don't understand how depth of field works. Yeah. He looks better than the Grand Inquisitor. I agree with that. <laughs> Kenobi I, Grand Inquisitor. That, that's yes. a low. That's a low bar. He looks absolutely it is, like yeah. miles better than the Grand Inquisitor and in Kenobi. Come on. The Grand yeah. Inquisitor and Kenobi oh, yeah. looked like he was straight out of Batwoman or something. Yeah. I mean <laughs> To be fair, so does Shin. Hey, do you remember yeah. do you remember when uh, George Lucas oh, sorry, not George Lucas, do you remember when LucasArts and Disney were known for like having good visual effects? Do you remember when that was a thing? They were pioneers mm -hmm. in that field. Remember when ILM, yeah, pioneered the fucking met uh, like the, the the way that the movies are even made nowadays. Yeah, yeah, good times. Also, if, if anyone says Shin looks bad, like Star uh, I will, I will kill you. Anyone who comes uh, for Shin's Shin aesthetics, yeah, Shin, Shin is perfect the way she is, and if you don't like that, I will kill you. That's just how that goes. Yeah, yeah. As a character, <laughs> I, I think she's more just a nothing at the moment. Like we know Nick's nothing about her. Like it's. No, she's Shin is perfect. Barely done anything. Shine. Yeah, Shin, yeah. Shin is great. <laughs> yeah, Queen, Slay Queen. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even care. A lot of you at this point, like I don't even care that her character is like threadbare. First of all, she's the only one who hasn't been contradictory so far, so there's that. But also, just on a purely aesthetic <laughs> level, at least at least I enjoy when she's on screen. That's more than I can say for most of the other characters. Yeah, mm -hmm. whenever they would go back to Balin and Shin, I was just like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, it's not a so, crab person. Thank goodness. Here, here's an interesting thing to bring up because <laughs> I've seen a lot of conversation that but people have made the comparison between Reva and Shin. And uh, from my understanding of, of I haven't watched Kenobi, I've only seen She's review, um, as well as other people talking about on Twitter. We're comparing a character which is like consistently fucking terrible, obnoxious, and shit to a character that's barely on screen ever. Although well, that's like, barely does anything on screen. That's the thing, right? Like Shin is a much better character, but that's just purely by virtue of the fact that she hasn't had enough time to be ruined. Like they haven't given her enough focus to destroy her. Whereas Reva was given a lot of focus and you know, therefore suffered the full brunt of the misery that is Disney writing. Uh, I also mm -hmm. I also feel like people are just getting tired. I I'm certainly getting tired of like the emotionally unstable villains that are just constantly screaming and shouting it oh, just God, I hate that. It, it comes yes. off i'm getting so tired of that like it, it's coming off and as honestly like shin is like a, a like ref, like a refresher yeah yeah shin That's is like reason. refreshing by comparison because she seems like more like composed and calm and like uh her, her and just Balin. like her and Balin. That way. i don't know yeah, her yeah. and Balin, and also also to be fair to him, Thrawn as well when he was on screen. Like, it's nice to have a villain who's like cerebral rather than just yelling all the time. Sam Montgomery, thank you for the super chat. To be a well overused, uh, the volume is a game changer. Yes, when applied, it's a tool just like anything else. CGI, green screen, practical effects, you can do any of it well. The volume is a game changer, and I wish they would actually use it to the right effect. Yeah, less is more. Don't don't just slap it on everything because it because you can. Oh. Anyway, where, by the way, where, where um, are we at? By the way, are we at, are we at um, Sabine being released? Sabine meeting with Thrawn. Yeah. Yeah. So Sabine meeting with Thrawn. Odrin had something he wanted to say about that. Oh yeah, I, I just, I don't know. The, the lack of reaction from Sabine, I think, was kind of annoying. Um, yeah. I understand that throughout this season, they were being told that Thrawn could be out there with Ezra, and they were trying to like prevent his return. So th this is not exactly like a huge surprise to her, but still the, the fact that like, I don't know, I, I just feel like we should have gotten a, li a little more of a reaction from her to like seeing this guy again. Yeah. I don't I mean, know how yeah. you guys feel about that. No, I mean, I agree. Like understated reaction is just the order of the day when it comes to this show. Yeah, no, We're I mean, this is no, this is part of the course. Example but... of this later in the episode. Oh God. Yeah. Like Sabine is going to get a lot worse before this episode is done. Um, confused Cabal, thank you for the super chat. Am I the only one who felt weird about the troopers changing, ch uh, chanting Thrawn's name? I just can't imagine him approving the, of them doing that. Did they do that? I don't remember yeah. that. They, yeah, they, they, they did. They, they, they chanted. Yeah, they do name. do that. Yeah. I mean, when he was me, marching was, up. that's weird. I, I was just thinking of like football chants. So when they're like, they're like, they're doing like the orc thing of going like Thrawn, Thrawn. But in my head, I was like Admiral Thrawn, Admiral Thrawn, Admiral Thrawn. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's it is all very odd. That is weird. I don't think that Thrawn. No, I guess I he's changed imagine... a lot, guys. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to imagine the Willstone raid in the background, like you got no fans. <laughs> it's like it's like the admiral is a wanker. The admiral <laughs> is a wanker. <laughs> well, and it's you know, it, it kind of raises an interesting point though, where. Filoni, he's not aware of some things, obviously, but he is keenly aware of how much uh, the fan base likes Thrawn. And it, this just feels, it feels so weird to me. It feels like the, the fact that the Stormtroopers are worshipping him and stuff, and like chanting his name, um, and the, the fact that he's just hyping him up to be like the, the ultra endgame villain of the, the Mandoverse and everything, it just reeks of like a fundamental misunderstanding, and like Filoni trying to turn Thrawn into just something that he's kind of isn't, you know. Well, again, because the, the comparison that I was thinking of when I saw it was um, Heart of Darkness, you know, or like Apocalypse Now, if you've seen the movie rather than read the book. But like that Thrawn is almost like you know Kurt. He's almost like Colonel Kurtz right now, where he's just like gone mad in isolation and exile, and now everyone's like worshiping him like a god, and he's gone. He's, he's got a god complex. Which in theory is interesting. The problem is I just yeah. don't think Thrawn is a character who would do that. Like if, if Thrawn went off the deep end, it wouldn't be that way. And it, well, yeah, and this is the thing. I mean, because you'll have people out there that'll be like, well, who cares about his uh, his motivation to protect the Chiss from the Grisks and all that? Like that's book shit. Who cares? But it's like a fundamental, like in canon, it's a fundamental motivation for him. It drives a lot of his actions when it comes to his operations within the Empire. And so, like, you can't simply, like, remove that. I know that we, we've we talked about wanting to, like, judge this show on its own merits as well. And, like, having that perspective in mind to give the show, like, a chance. But at the same time, like, there's all these fundamental elements to Thrawn's character. And if you choose to just, like, ignore that, like it seems like this show is going to do, um, then you're ignoring, like, something very important. Something that's, like, fundamental to him. It's not just, like, silly book shit that nobody cares about. Well, it's the entire core of, of what he is, right? Because the thing is, like, even even if you want to take out that core and replace it with something else, you still have to replace it with something else. And right now, we've just got an empty shell that looks like Thrawn and occasionally behaves like him. Um, yeah, it's just like... Zon uh, was consulted with this, because he was consulted um, for Rebels, but I haven't heard anything about Timothy Zahn being confronted... Well, uh, being... The, the problem as well with, like, when they're like, Timothy's... Oh, you know, this happens a lot, right? When they're like, oh, we've consulted the authors. Like, what they normally mean is we sent the author a check and told them to fuck off. <laughs> like that's normally what they mean by consulted. Like I don't yeah, think Zorn yeah. was. I don't think Timothy Zorn was in the studio being like, "Oh, I think Thrawn would do this, or I think he would do that." Yeah, it, he wasn't consulted. It was probably more like Dave Filoni had like fucking lunch with him at one point, and they talked about a lot of subjects that weren't Star Wars, apparently, uh, because Filoni, I, I don't think, took on anything that Zon may or may not have told him. <laughs> yeah, it, if he did, it's definitely been ignored. Um, uh, so no, because I'm gonna actually have to. I'm gonna have to jump out in about five minutes because I've got to be up early tomorrow to drive or to, to a funeral. So before I go, there is one thing I wanted to talk about, which is you know when uh, Sabine gets given like the the weird hyena wolf creature to ride, um, and like she gets into a gunfight and then like the, the the wolf thing runs away, and then she like tries to like it tries to come back and she tries to like chase it away. She's like, oh no, I'm done with you. You you, you suck. <laughs> and I'm like, Sabine. You are like you only have like a couple of like hours or days, as far as you know, before Thrawn buggers off and just abandons you here. Um, maybe don't chase off your only ride. Yeah, it's your your only means of transportation. I was actually thinking the exact same thing when I watched the episode. Like, why the fuck are you chasing away your mount with your provisions <laughs> on it as well? It's yeah, carrying your, your food, provisions, all your food, your weaponry, your your probably your shelter. Like, it's yeah. your only way of getting around the place. Like, oh, it got scared when it got shot. It's like, you're really blaming it for it running away when it got shot? Well, I mean, Sabine is just an outright <laughs> villain. Like, her, the decision she makes at the end of this episode just confirms <laughs> that she is an outright villain at this point. Doesn't she yeah. refer to it as a coward? She calls the thing a coward. It it's does, an animal yeah. that got shot it's at. It's a fucking animal, an yeah. Animal. <laughs> so Sabine is canonically yeah. cruel to animals now as well. Like, there's, just, there's just no redeeming her now. She's awful. Oh, uh, yeah. Man, I really I, I hope like she dies Sabine. by the end of this. Yeah, well, don't worry because the people she the people she killed uh, when Balaam finds them, there's gonna be some very funny lines about all that. Um, <laughs> so I was I was away uh, for about five minutes. I guess you guys get past the part where she fights the uh, the nomads. 
Well, no, no, I, I was just saying I, 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 well, that's because I just nobody did skip over that, but it's just because I have to I have to leave in about five minutes, literally five minutes. Um, so I wanted to like mention oh. that as something funny before I before I dash off. Okay, I didn't realize you weren't going to be able to stay for the full thing, or else I would have uh, said it earlier. Yeah, sorry, man. It's just because like I've got to get up quite early to drive about one hundred and forty miles to get to a funeral, so it's going to be a long day tomorrow. Um, oh, that's fine. Um, I can I can I can yeah. stay for another like five minutes or so, but after that I might have to skedaddle. I'm afraid. But you, you, like you already know my thoughts on on the whole situation with like Ezra at the end, so you can you can fill in the chat, the good members of the chat, and our fellow guests here <laughs> about my thoughts on all of that, and my thoughts on Balin's yeah. friend of my friend as my uh, friend of my, yeah, enemy of my enemy is my friend's line. I think we I, mean, uh, I think we just share similar thoughts about it, so it's fine. I'll just say what I think. You'll just uh, take credit for my idea. No, I'm joking. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I, I, no, I mean, I guess if there's anything like jolly for the rest of the episode that he's not going to be able to stick around for, if there's anything that you want to say now before you leave, I, I feel like you could. Well, do that. I just, I just, I just don't want to spoil like the the build up to the end with with Sabine's decision. So I'll leave, I'll leave, you know, I'll leave it in Sheev's capable hands to do that. Mm. But um, okay. yeah, suffice it to say that I I burst out laughing. And like I message you, yeah. like, well, <laughs> Sabine's done. <laughs> 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 yeah, final nail in the yeah. coffin for Sabine's character. Um, it's, it's, so it's kind of right weird. Then. Like, she, if um, if Sabine from Rebels met Sabine now, what do you think she'd think of her? Oh, she'd, she'd just really... kill her. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> You're a fucking jerk. Oh my goodness! Anyway, yeah, I, I I will dash off then. But like, thank you again, Chief, as always, for having me on these streams. Um, they're always a pleasure to to be a part of. And thank you, Shiny and uh, Odrin, for coming in to join me. It's always a pleasure to be on with you guys as well. And to the chat, uh, even when you made me angry, chat, I always appreciate your you being here. And uh, it's always <laughs> nice to have you guys following along. So thank you once again. Wait, is someone for, being for racist following in us. chat? Wait, are they? Please don't. Please don't. Uh, be doing I'm seeing that. something about it. Come on! What no, the, no, they, no, they might be, they might be making a joke at the fact that, uh, oh, that Sabine's actress, I see what's like happening. Sabine from the show, uh, you know, going after Sabine's live action. Oh, actress. okay. I, don't know. I think oh, they're talking that? about oh, this. Geez. This comment. Oh, okay. Uh, oh God. As what the fuck? Come on. Oh, okay. Well, of course they're anon. Yeah. Yeah. What's? Well, why would you ever be brave enough to put your own label on something? Oh, fuck well. <laughs> Chat, chat! I was just <laughs> praising you. Come on, God I was damn just singing it. your praises. No, this is why we can't, can't have nice things. No, let's let's not paint them all with the brush of this. No, anon. anon is and also to be fair, the chat. No, yeah, we're joking. Out. So, well done, chat, for calling out this behavior. Um, it's not good, and it's always it's always nice to see a chat that is respectful and polite and actually uh, keen to listen. Um, and and it's also more of a terrorist than Ezra at this point. <laughs> yeah, and also ventures good opinions. So, thank you very much, chat. Thank you very much, everybody, and uh, I shall say good night. Well, see you next time. No. Uh, uh, before we continue, so yeah, we... I'll address the super chat. The super chat that just sure. came in, confused Cabal. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, I've been watching the show with my brother, who knows next to nothing about Star Wars. When Thrawn finally introduced my was finally introduced, my brother was baffled. To quote him, the way they built him up, I expected a nine foot tall warlord. Yeah, kinda. <laughs> you know, they are treating him as though he's some kind of like god. When in reality, he is just a dude. Yeah, I, I don't think that they should have hyped him up to the degree that they did. Um, and you can kind of thank Filoni for that a little bit. Um, or, they, well, Favreau as well, for the, from, the Mando. Like, the meta. They're, they're pulling oh, from yeah, the meta a lot. We're like, oh, well, the, the fans think Thrawn is really cool uh, and really dangerous, because he is. So, like, the characters in-universe should think that if he comes back, it's basically over. And it's like, why would... They? No. Well, it's it's a little weird. As somebody in fairness, has... with the like when you you look at the idea of Thorn returning in the duology, it scares the rebellion to fucking death. Like it's like, oh shit, he could he could be alive. Like it, we know how much he fucked us up before. Like what if he fucks us up again? Mm -hmm. Like that idea just made them shit their pants. But even most people said that Thrawn couldn't turn. Like anyone that knew Thrawn knew that he wasn't a fucking miracle worker he, he couldn't return the galaxy around with next to fucking nothing with the empire but being lost over the past 10 years yeah and it's it's a little odd from the imperial perspective because i i saw a comment mentioned mentioning this earlier that like it's weird that the imperial uh 
like council, the shadow council has like such apparent reverence for him and stuff. Um, considering he's been out of the game for like who knows how long at this point. And like in canon, what has Thrawn done that's been like that impressive? It's like, okay, he won the battle of Adalon. Um well yeah, he uh, almost well, well, won the rebellion. A... Yeah. Uh, it's, it's like what calling else? the like the Hoth a victory for the Empire. Because if all your enemy escape, is it really a victory? If the one yeah. sole objective you had was to crush them, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The I, thing is, it, like, it's a victory, but not the a empire super is also one. the empire is also hugely xenophobic, um, and it's kind of a huge thing that like Palpatine trusts and respects Thrawn enough because of his his skills as a tactician that he allows him to become a Grand Admiral, despite the fact that a lot of the other Grand Admirals find that almost an affront to. Like the very concept of being promoted to such a high position. They hate him. Uh, they constantly belittle him and they talk behind his back. They don't like Thrawn. Uh, his 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 stake in the Empire and like the position that he holds is all because Palpatine wants him there. But Palpatine's gone. I mean, he's yeah. alive, but they don't know that. Palpatine's gone. Yeah. He has no authority now. Uh, so yeah. there is nobody telling the Shadow Council that Thrawn is the end-all be-all. Uh, he needs to be the one to, to really bring the Imperial forces back together and take on the New Republic. Yeah, uh, sure. I mean, I'm going to be fair. I'm going to bring just gonna say, Andrew into this because he asked if he could come in, but I didn't want him to come in when there were so many people. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say, um, you know, I guess in fairness to that one scene, um, it does seem like it's Captain Pelion who's like his cheerleader. Um, it, not necessarily the whole Shadow Council, I guess. Wait, what but scene? It, uh, the the scene from Mando season three, oh, where Thrawn so is mentioned. Not a scene that I would see. Yeah, I haven't seen Mando oh. season three either. I mean, she would have more to say on this, but like Captain Pelion was the one yeah. who was like kind of his cheerleader. So I don't know. Pelion was in, well, but everyone else was going along with it except for uh, Moff Gideon. He was the only one challenging Thrawn's authority there. And only because he wanted yeah. the power for himself, not because he was racist. Yes, Shiny. Ca Captain Pelion was in uh, Mando Yeah, you three. didn't know that? No. Bro, you didn't watch my streams, you fake fan. Fake friend. <laughs> wow. You thought I was a real friend? Well, um, I mean, if your accent's been yeah. by, by I kind time. of assumed that everything about you was fake. <gasps> that is true. But yeah, I guess the whole point of the, the whole conclusion here is that like it's, you know, if you're going to hype up Thrawn to the degree that like Filoni and Favreau kind of have, um, you know, it's it's just it, you really have to like nail it with a, a really satisfying villain. And thus far, he just comes off as like kind of mustache twirling, uh, you know, villain guy. Yeah, um, he hasn't done so. anything particularly amazing. He's walked onto scene with a few guys behind him said, hey, look, Sabine, um, go with this wolf thing and find Ezra, and then said, ha-ha, we're not really honoring the deal because I'm going to send these two fuckers after them. And yeah, I don't really care if these two fuckers survive. Yeah, and I guess because we're pretty much on that scene right now at this point, it, it that kind of annoyed me too, honestly, that like, all right, so we have Balin being that way, and now we have Thrawn being like kind of a backstabbing bastard too, and it's just like, God, there's no... Yeah. Now there's like, there's no nuance to any of these villains, and like Thrawn is a villain who should have some level of nuance. I just the uh... first scene that Thrawn is in, he fucking kicks the shit out of a fleet that outnumbers him because he was able to outthink them. That is a better show mm. of him as a villain of the books than <laughs> he is here. We're just walking onto the scene. Hey, I'm on a broken star destroyer. Cool, huh? I've got, well, I've got these armies <laughs> behind me. Well, it's just relying on it's like relying on past glories, you know, like and that's how yeah. I feel with a lot of like fan favorite characters that turn up in these things. Like it, it feels like Filoni and all these other people, they don't have to actually do anything meaningful with these characters from their perspective. They think that as long as they're on screen, that's it. That's all they need to do, um, you know, because they're well, just relying on the Ahsoka fanfare a, a good example of the past of herself. Where yeah, she, she, she basically is she's not done any acting even just blankly stared with crossing her arms and and yet there's still people go oh my goodness it's a so whoa 
yeah, like it, he's just relying on past fanfare for these things. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'd agree. He, it's all reliant on nostalgia, and I don't see anyone looking at these stories and saying, "Oh, I I thought it was a really good character moment when this happened," or like, "Oh, I really like this, that, this, that, and the other," and break down to the character dynamics. All I see is people saying, "Oh my God, it's Anakin!" and like, "He's Vader now," and it's but no, he's Anakin, and oh my God, it's so cool that they, they, they're in the Clone Wars, and oh, cool, child Ahsoka, oh, that's that's awesome. It's in live action, guys. Oh, CG Mandalore. Oh my God, Thrawn's back. Um, yeah, Andrew, I don't know if you're still in chat. I sent you an invite link in uh, in Discord, so like, if you want to jump in, you can at any time. Also, super chat from Bob Skywalker, four ninety nine. Thank you very much. Relying on uh, la, 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 re relying on past glories, my brother in Christ. That is modern Star Wars. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. You know. Yeah. But, I do um, want to kind of anyway. push, uh, push forward now and like let's talk about. Uh, yeah, we're on to the. I uh, yeah, I think we're we're on to the Beskar scene. Am I correct on that? Yeah, where she gets attacked by the nomads and they they only shoot at the the very few areas where she's covered in Beskar armor <laughs> and can therefore <laughs> deflect blaster bolts. You're like, oh, it's all right, Mando again. Yeah, yeah, more of that Mando just shit. Yeah, gotta love Be Beskar plot armor alive and well. <laughs> Remember when Mandalorians used to like be um, fearless warriors because they were really fucking skilled in combat and they knew what they were doing, not because they wore invincible fucking armor? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's yeah, it's watered it's, down Mandalorians so much. It's like the, yeah, they're not cool because of like their uh combat prowess and their behavior and values or anything like that anymore. It's just the fact that they wear fucking Beskar. <laughs> that's all that's special <laughs> about them. They have a special a metal. Cheap. Yeah. Um, another like thing about this fuckers. scene that, I, that, that frustrates me is that, like, again, like, I was thinking about how, like, you know, you could visit different galaxies and maybe we could, like, see different things, different people, different aliens. Uh, and then we just come across these group of nomads, these bipedal humanoid looking nomads with similar garb to things that you might see in the main galaxy, just wielding blasters and, like, and axes and stuff that you would see in the in the main galaxy. And it's like, there's nothing new happening here. We're not seeing anything different. You, you know, get, like, this you is get, another like, galaxy. Yeah, they're just like generic fucking marauders that you would see in any one of these like series. Um, and like, honestly, in Jedi Survivor, you see like more unique and interesting aliens in that game. And that game takes place in the normal galaxy. Um, now, <laughs> yeah, maybe no, the I fucking, just don't. The fucking shark camel things that they ride around on Jedi, like those are cool. Yeah, and like I, I don't Doma, like the you know the the lady who's she's kind of like the unofficial like leader of the town that you that you go back to a lot. Um, you know, I, yeah. she could her species could very well be in other Star Wars stuff. I don't know if it is. Like I haven't seen it, but um, I was like, I don't know. She's pretty interesting looking. Like I don't know. That's neat. Whole bunch of like colorful characters yeah. and stuff, but yeah, it's just like random marauders in this new galaxy that just look like generic marauders you would see in any sci fi show, yeah. But so Sabine gets attacked, she beats up a bunch of them, and then like in her mount runs off on her, and uh, she sends them all running and fleeing and shit, or I think she kills them all, I can't even remember, it doesn't matter. Point uh, is, the yeah. fight is she over, kills all she but two on. of them because two of them run away. Right. Okay. The fight's over. She moves on. We have that exchange we talked about, where like, she, like the mount tries to come back up to her and be like, "Hey." She's like, "Fuck off." And she's <laughs> like, oh. "Yeah." Okay. Shoo away your only mount. Like the the only thing that you have right now. <laughs> They're having her be a complete asshole and be really stupid, all for the sake of a comedic moment where, like, oh, it's the the funny thing where the mount keeps coming back, but it's funny. It away. It's it's super funny. Yeah. Uh, Confused Cabal, thank you for the super chat. Part of me wonders if the Marauders are from the regular galaxy, but got stranded by the whales like Thrawn and Ezra. I mean, maybe. The, the real point that I'm making here is just like, we're not seeing anything new. If these are just humans, then it's like, okay, that's fine. In my the most now, we get I'm, in I'm terms wondering. of like, new things 
is like the rock turtle people. But like, again, like these feel like aliens we could just be seeing in the main galaxy. Yeah. Now I I'm wondering, like, how did the Marauders get there? Like, were they just really, really drunk one night and they, they, they were on a <laughs> drunken dare? It's like, hey, dudes. Like, what if we gone to the mouth of those space whales? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it. This is it. like an actual Jeff. Dude, like... Jeff, <laughs> dude, Jeff like he's gonna do it. Watch that, him, Jeff. It's, it's becoming like an epidemic in the galaxy. It's like people just keep disappearing, <laughs> and like Purgle always seems to be at the scene of the crime. And then like we go to yeah. Meridia, and there's just like an entire population of like different, like you know, different species all across the galaxy. That are just like stranded here. They're like, oh hey, God, yeah. It's actually, like I'm a just... really scary story, like scary story concept that they could explore. Yeah, yeah. I'm picturing these Funny whales. Beyond the Aquila these... Rift has a similar concept of where like the they, they have this alien technology that sends them around the galaxy, um, but it's so old that areas of it have essentially broken off, and this network is intergalactic, and every now and again there's a, a problem in that network, and it will shoot a random ship into the void and over time like just random alien worlds uh, species have just collected together in this one rock that is kind of like the dumping ground of almost every galaxy and it's like it's almost a nightmare because that's going to be your life now forever and a lot of this original book story revolves around that kind of like bucky idea of like what is kind of like reality that is slowly learning that he's in some kind of like weird fantasy world and it's all like the real world is horrific and weird and alien and <laughs> disgusting uh paul Teresi, i hope i pronounced that right sorry if i didn't uh thank you for the super chat grogu sees a purgle in normal hyperspace in season three uh how does this affect their earlier discussion of their brute forcing their way around the galaxy yeah so the thing about that is like i guess they can also just go at normal hyperspeeds as well if they choose to, because they're obviously going at the same speed as Mando is in his N1. I guess it's just whatever they choose to do. But we know that they can go ludicrous speed. They can brute force their way around the galaxy if they want. I guess it's like running. Like, you know, you, you, using legs, you can choose what speed you want to do, and then your running's like your max speed, but you can't do that forever. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah after the hilarious scene where Sabine is like telling her mount to fuck off, she eventually accepts him and then he starts like sniffing around and she's like, what is it boy? She leads him into this, or he leads her into this like area, starts sniffing a rock and she's like, Oh wow. You fucked up there. That's a rock dumbass." And then like the rock turns out, it turns out it's like a little alien, a little dude with like a rock looking shell uh, wearing clothes, which I think is funny. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's like, it's like, Oh God, Oh fuck. Um, and you know, she like points its her blaster at it and she's like, Hey, what are you doing? Who are you? Uh, it recognizes the rebel symbol on her shoulder pad, like I mentioned earlier, ties together that like you know, she's friends with her, like she would know Ezra. And then they take her and the mount to uh the camp where Ezra is. And uh yeah, it's this it's this like normal looking campsite by a lake, uh completely out in the open, it's not hidden at all. Um, and then there he is. There he is just standing by one of the tents. He's like, I knew you'd find me eventually. And well, they have like the well, most. Real Go quick. Ahead. Um, there was, there was, uh, are we going to cover all of, uh, that stuff first? Because there was a scene in between of, uh, Balin and Shin. They have another conversation, uh, but do, do you want to oh, cover Ezra, have, yeah. Ezra's? Yeah. Um, let's, and... let, uh, Let's, You've already started, sorry. so we can we Let's can continue. do Ezra's. Yeah, yeah, we'll continue the the line of thought. Basically, it's a very generic and uh, cookie cutter reunion between these two characters who are supposed to mean quite a lot to each other, um, but they don't for some reason. It's like it's weird, right? Because like, so here's the thing: even putting aside the fact that in context, these are characters who haven't seen each other in ten years, who essentially are like siblings to one another, who've missed each other a great deal. Uh, you know, they, and this should be like a really tearful, heartfelt reunion. The Bean has doomed the galaxy emotional. to find this guy. Yeah. Right? Like, it was she so has, strong. She <laughs> would do anything to get to him, clearly. But even putting that aside, just like just from like a narrative purpose, it's like, this entire show has been about finding him, basically. Like, this is like the big, uh, like, payoff to all of this buildup. And it's just, oh, hey. Oh, hey. 
and then they hug. And it's, uh, all right. No, it's nothing. I, I, I watched the scene and I felt nothing. And then, yeah. so this is the part yeah. that started to really annoy me and start to piss me off. I was just like, really? It's just all <laughs> that, all these years. It's really, that's it. That's all we're yeah. doing. Yeah, I mean, I, I keep, I need to stop hoping that like the next thing is going to actually <laughs> make something of this because it's never going to happen. Um, but hopefully mm -hmm. they actually talk more. Um, can we actually get a conversation between these two? Like Sabine can bring Ezra mm -hmm. up to speed on what the fuck's been going on in the galaxy since he left. Um, Maybe. And, and I, I know that they thing. didn't have time for it, but in this one. An another an another thing that frustrates me about this, and I've alluded to it a bit earlier in the, in the stream here and there, is that so for like almost six years now, however long it's been since uh, the Rebels finale came out, I thought of all these different like stories they could tell with Ezra and Thrawn post rebels, you know, like where they ended up, what they had to do to survive, if they had to work together. Um, like if, like if the planet they were on was like a primitive planet that maybe didn't have like space faring uh, natives, but maybe there were natives that were hostile or maybe like there was like some kind of warlord that they had to like, they had to like run from or whatever, you know, maybe Thrawn and Ezra came to some kind of like, general understanding of each other or like they started to see each other's points of view more maybe they formed kind of a bond you know like anything at all something new something different something interesting mm -hmm. instead what we have is thrawn is in a like relatively speaking at least in a position of power uh and ezra is running and hiding from him and that's it which is exactly well, what it already was back in rebels it's like nothing has changed yeah, like they've almost, I mean, I, I guess aside from potentially his troopers being zombies and him working with Night Sisters, it, it's pretty much exactly what we would have expected. You know, like there's really, we, we show up and they're just on opposite sides like they were before. Um, and you're right, like mm -hmm. the, the type of stories where you have two adversaries who are forced to like work together and come to a common ground. I mean, hell, even uh, the honorable ones, one of the episodes of uh, Rebels, that's like a fan favorite episode. That's like one of the most liked episodes um, where Callus and uh, Zeb have to like work together. Um, and it's a it's a big mm -hmm. changing point for uh, for Callus. Um, you know, th people like those types of stories. And it's just it's such an obvious one that that's they could have done. That's because they're great. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And like, I, I know that you get some people in response to this being like, oh, it just wasn't the story you wanted. And that's why you don't like it. It's like, well, but what we're presenting are like more interesting options here. Mm hmm. Um, but yeah, and also, of course, the thing to note is that, again, like this is not a very well hidden campsite. And like Ezra alludes to the idea that they move around a lot. But it's like, come on, this is a campsite. There are tents. Like, there's no way that this shit's not getting spotted if Thrawn is doing even the most bare minimum effort of, like, trying to find him. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I don't well, know. He obviously it's wasn't trying very hard. Him. Clearly he wasn't. Even though, again, as we already laid out, he could have been a very valuable asset to him getting home or been very instrumental in stopping whatever escape Thrawn attempted. So, like, either way, uh, asset or threat, like, Ezra is very valuable and you want to have him. Thrawn, um, the super genius, like <laughs> uber mind, but also able to work out so many things. Yeah, but, it's but like also, we need. Uh... So Ezra, go ahead. G go ahead. Sorry. Oh no, I was just gonna say, like, it, you know, it, it's like a wasteland, and there's not like many settlements from what we could tell on this planet, no, and not much like sign of life. So you think that like mm -hmm. one of the established quote unquote established. I know it's like a, a nomad camp that moves around, but you think that would be one of the places you'd want to search, you know? That would be one of the first places to search, you know, somewhere that has like yeah. people. Like I don't know. Well like what I what I was thinking was like, you know, uh I, I guess I just assumed this because 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 it would have been the smart thing to do. You like you'd find out that Ezra and whatever camp he has has been like holding up in a cave somewhere, somewhere that like maybe can't be easily traversed or like by, by like large battalions of stormtroopers. Maybe you know like places that like Thrawn couldn't easily get to him or find him or like whatever. Like maybe he lives underground. I don't know something, something like that's not just hey we're here by the lake, come get us. Yep. Um. 
But the other thing that I wanted to note, and this is kind of what Jolly was talking about. So Ezra notices the mount that Sabine came on, which given the the way he words this and like how and like just the the tone of the question, he seems to think that the mount is something that Sabine only could have gotten like from Thrawn. Like whatever beast these this thing is, like Thrawn has them aplenty, he has them saddled, whatever. Um, and then like, he follows up by going like, Hey, uh, how did you find me exactly? And, um, and she says, yeah, well, I don't want to talk about that right now. We'll talk about that later. And so there's so many things to break down about this, but before I even get into Sabine and like what Jolly was talking about, he doesn't press this at all, even though from the tone of the question and the wording itself, you would think he's, he's suspecting like, did Thrawn send you? And is this a trap? Because if so, like, holy shit, like, no, we need to fucking get out of here. We got to pack this shit up. Uh, fucking go, go, go. Leave the dry ice. That sort of shit. Like, like he's just kind of chilling. He doesn't He doesn't press. He's like, oh, all right. But, like, also, yeah. Sabine. Wow. Hey, Andrew. Yeah, well, there's, there's that element. And then there's also the element where, you know, and this is something that could be some drama in the next episode, I guess. But, like, um he says like oh i can't i'm i can't wait to go back home and sabine gives him a look that that's almost like oh shit like where there's a chance we might be stranded here and we're not going home like that's what she's thinking or whatever but it's like sabine like what the fuck put ezra on your mount right fucking now and try to like haul your ass back like you might be able to like sneak onto the chimera or something if you go quick enough like they they haven't left yet like why are, why are you acting like it's a far gone conclusion that like you're just stranded here, and it's like, oh, I got to break the news of that to Ezra. Like that's another thing where I'm just like, what? What are also, you doing from from her perspective? <sighs> like Thrawn's even like said as like almost inferred that she can come back with them. Not like like I don't know if yeah. she believed him in him, but he's yeah. he's kind of said, hey, what? yeah, uh, just make sure to come back because otherwise you're going to be left here when we leave. He's like, we're going to be leaving. You can I go find she... Ezra, but we're leaving. I guess she's she's able to deduce that obviously if he if she leads Ezra back to Thrawn that they'll capture Ezra and like that'd be a bad like I don't know I don't really know the the, the whole point yeah. is that she has done so many just horrible things uh, that like doom the galaxy at large in order to find Ezra and then now here she is and uh, he asks her what's going on and she doesn't want to tell him like please yeah, meaningfully address this and future episodes please well it seems almost she's and straight like up said, a villain yeah well it seems almost entirely selfish at this point like she and the way that like i said the way that she behaves in this scene she pretty much accepts that she's not going home but hey at least i get to be here with ezra it's like yeah she literally made all these choices just to find ezra not not even to return him because she thinks that uh, apparently she's accepted that that's not going to happen now they're not going back home um but uh, yeah, yeah, I found you, but it's okay. That's all I wanted. I just needed to find Ezra, and I doomed the galaxy for that. Which, in the original well, episode... Matter. Like, She's no longer in the galaxy. Whatever, yeah, whatever the like, Empire I, does in the galaxy now doesn't affect her. Yeah, like, uh, I thought... Wow. like in, in the, I thought that in the earlier episodes, when she found Ezra, she wanted to, in her mind, do so in a way that would allow him to come home. But then they would rejoin the fight if they could, you know? Even if it means Thrawn returning to the galaxy, it's like, well, we'll deal with that later. What's, mo what's most important to me right now is getting Ezra back. But apparently, like, getting Ezra back doesn't involve returning him to the galaxy. She's just accepted that that's not happening. I don't know. Yeah. Like, God, people are calling this show good. And, like, not even just, like, Ahsoka fans or like Disney fans in general. Like I'm getting people in my own comments that are just basically like, no, this is this one's good. This one's a miss for you, Sheev. And like specifically this episode, no. they're like, this one wasn't that bad. The rest of the some of the other episodes were pretty bad, but this one was okay. It's like come have on. You seen IMDB rating for this show. Oh, I don't I don't want to know. I don't know this show is peaked. I don't know what you're talking about. True. It, it's yeah, peak eight Ahsoka. out of ten. Eight out of ten. With the uh, four thousand and like forty four thousand reviews, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ! 
Uh, I mean, and look, yeah. mark my uh, words. We've said this. We've said this before, but like in two months from now, people are going to be singing a different tune. I guarantee you. You think it's a false? Well, well, it'll, it's, it'll be like Kenobi when they just it's, forget. It's that the anything same. Happened. It's yeah, yeah. It's the same thing as Kenobi. I had so many people in my own fan base telling me I was wrong about Kenobi. Nobody tells me I'm wrong about Kenobi now, except for obviously you know Disney Star Wars fans because they made up their mind on that show day one. But like. It's going to be the same thing. I'm going to make my Ahsoka video. People are going to be like, oh, shit. Yeah, you were right. And I'm going to be like, yeah, I fucking know. Can we move on now? <laughs> Says, and another, you're, you're not a monster. Wrong. Says show bad with facts. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't want to come off as like an third. arrogant prick right now. Like, I understand how that yeah. sounds. But, like, it's it's just a repeating cycle at this point. And it's going to happen again, I'm no, sure, I whenever some other show comes out about a character that a lot of people like. Well, I, I mean, I understand like... it. I, I remember when everyone was raving on about Mando, and I, I had I dared to say something bad about it in um, on Twitter, and lots of people just like started jumping on me about the whole thing. And uh, at that point, when I made my Mandalorian videos, I made sure to like softball my criticism so fucking hard because I didn't want mm -hmm. anyone that watched my channel to either just like just fucking harp on me immediately or just like this to just be taken completely out of whack. And at the time, I wasn't it's not, I wasn't necessarily a lie. I did like the show. I was just questioning many things about it that would just didn't make any sense or were just like basically non-existent. Uh, and now I regret it because I saw I, I should have been um, not not really caring. I, I should have been more truthful in my criticisms and more honest rather than trying to softball it. Well, yeah, especially because it's going to sway yeah. in that direction sooner or later anyway. Um, and I mean, like, <laughs> think what you will about uh, Mahler's uh, video on Ahsoka that he put out recently, Ahsoka Episode 5. But the description that he had for that video, I, I love it. <laughs> he says uh, that his description for that video was the best Star War since the last Star War. It's like, yeah, that's <laughs> like... That's how people behave about this stuff. It's like this is the best thing ever. It's so oh, yeah. good, and, and then yeah, the next thing comes along. It it's, like, uh, it's not how it is for like MCU too. It's like for everything. It's like oh, this now this is the best one. This yeah. is the best one. It's like those. It's mostly the <laughs> yeah. like the celebrity like influencers that are like oh, this is the best movie since the last movie. Just as like because they're like paid off and stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean they did that for DC with like the Flash, right? Then that that failed so. Yeah, mm -hmm. but um, but that's just like well, a I mean, mentality that there was into, like every that was every that was like the that was like the joke when Quantum Mania came out because it was the first in Phase Five. Everyone was like, "Oh, oh yeah. yeah, it's the best MCU movie in Phase five <laughs> True. So far, I I don't um, want to basically just dismiss anyone that likes the show, but at the same time, it, I find it hard to not have. A negative judgment of like a lot of the people who like let like like it purely because of nostalgia. It's like I'm conflicted about it. You know, it's like someone eating a pile of shit and just stuffing it down their mouths constantly and saying, "This is the best thing ever." You say, "No, no, it is." It's like, "How dare you? You are not a fan, and you you just hate it all the time." No, you just hate it. What do you ever get tired of hating things? Like, how do you not have a judgment at that point I, and look at that person and think, really? Like, is this is what you want? Like, this is what you want to praise? I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I, I'm happy for people to like whatever they want. Um, it's just that I'm not gonna probably give their opinion much. Say if they if they like recommend a movie to me, I'm gonna be like, oh, <laughs> I'll check it out maybe. Yeah, because and clearly like, we just are not operating on the same on the same standard, and that's fine. But that, at the same time, like, you can't ask me to trust your opinion at that point. Well, and the thing that really frustrates me with this show, we've talked about this before, but, like, it, you could have, uh, in a broad sense, you could have achieved all the things that the show is trying to achieve in the sense that, like, you could have had uh, your nostalgic moments. You could have had a reunion between Ezra and Sabine. You could have had Anakin teaching Ahsoka lessons, uh, you know. You could have had all of these things, but in a better show, a show that those same people who are praising this, they still would have been praising it. Like their opinion probably wouldn't have changed. Like if, if you had had uh, better, more developed character moments, more meaningful and earned character moments, 
uh, these all these people that like this show would have still liked it, but you also would have satisfied well, yeah, people Jolly like that. And I have you been, know? Jolly and I have been saying that for like ever since the Mando streams we did. Like, you know, it could have been the best of both worlds where like we were satisfied because the storytelling was fucking terrific. And then, you know, the fans who only care about, hey, this character showed up in the thing that I like uh, would also be satisfied because the character would have showed up in the thing that they like. Um, yeah. It would have been fine. It would have been great. Yeah, well, That's like we speaking got. on the fan service, right? Like, like the the reunion between Ahsoka and Anakin could have been good, um, and it's like, like that could have been a really good uh, learning moment for like you know the Herald character from your past comes back to like give you words of inspiration. It's like one of my favorite like tropes, um, because it is like inherently like fan service, but it does fall bait to that as we see in Ahsoka. It's like oh, he's brought back to say like live or die and that's it and not nothing really pulling on the strings of like like narrative here well i would go as far as to say that like i was downright expecting anakin to be in this i i wanted the force ghost of anakin oh, to yeah, talk with yeah, ahsoka absolutely. like that, that's something that should happen not at the this way point that they did it life. like yeah yeah no not yeah. the way that they did it but at this point in her life i think that's what she needed she needed to be able to talk with him again um but yeah the way they went about it just wasn't great because, yeah, because obviously you could have had that happen without it being in the world between worlds. Like, he could have just appeared to her in the real world. That would have been fine. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, and same thing with, you know, the the meaning between Ezra and Sabine. Like, that's something that we kind of wanted going into a show like this. Um, and I guess one thing that I will give a little bit of credit to, one, like, little positive when it comes to that reunion. Um, you know, the, the actor for Ezra, you know, we, we were giving a little bit of praise to the the young Ahsoka actress. Um, I, I want to give, yeah. maybe not praise, but I just want to say, like, at least, again, there's a bit of charisma. At least the actor seems to have a little bit of charisma, which is something this show needed. Iman Fondi, I think his name is. Yeah, he... Uh, he's, yeah, he's only really been cool. in, the, in the show for a couple minutes, but, like, he kind of does give me, inst like, instantly give me Ezra Bridger vibes. I think he does a good job. Yeah. Yeah, and I like, you know, and he carries himself as like a slightly older, like Ezra. Um, you know, he's not really that kid anymore. And I know that Ezra went through growth during Rebels as well. But yeah, I, I think he's done a, based on what little we've seen of him, I think he's doing okay so far. And I love the beard, even though he looks like Moses from Prince of Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> I am interested in his character because he says like, oh, I can't wait to go home. Even though like at this point he knows Thrawn is still here. He knows like these people have been like running away from Thrawn all, uh, this, all like all this time. So like, would he be like I'm completely guessing... okay with abandoning these people? As is my, I was just like, okay. I mean, this well, isn't a criticism yeah, yet, just because like, Thrawn is going to be stuck. You there. may be right. Those people don't seem you may to be right, like, but, suffering like, I don't... that much. Yeah, I don't think that Thrawn is going to just actively go and like harm these people. I think that he's gonna he would just kind of leave them alone. I don't know. I don't think that. Uh, well, they really have the, the they have the rebellion symbol on them. Like they have a necklace with it, right? Um, so they've well, they've probably learned what like, a rebellion in relation to the empire is, right? So, sure. Maybe. Could I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it, I, it was I just like I'm, a weird line that, like, it isn't a criticism yet. I'm just interested in how they play it. Uh, in the he, in the rest of it. Yeah, I mean, I'm really because. Uh, we've talked about it but i mean thrawn did give the kill order he he gave balin and shin the kill order to kill ezra and sabine if sabine managed to successfully make contact with ezra so th the fact that they're both in this village with all these people i would hope that that wouldn't mean that they would indiscriminately like kill all these villagers just because ezra and sabine are there um but i i wouldn't put it past wouldn't put it past them for that to be the case i mean this is feloni we're talking about so <laughs> He seems to like really want to uh, drive the point home that uh, Ron is really villainous and he'll I do really, generic bad guy things. I just really, really, really want him to slap Sabine and say, you're a fucking villainous cretin piece of shit, you selfish bitch. I imagine like Ezra isn't going to find out. Like, I feel like Dave is going to completely will. ignore it. I think he uh, will, but I don't think they're going to properly criticize her for it. Yeah, he might no, find not, out and not. he's like, wow, that's crazy. And then they move on. 
considering David Tennant like was running defense for Sabine, and Hera's been running defense for oh, Sabine yeah. for almost every fucking thing she's done. She's quirky. Yeah, fine. No, I I agree. They're, they're not going to criticize her for this the way that they should. Um, I I'm hoping yeah, that Ezra is. So. I'm hoping that Ezra is at least disappointed with her. It's like. No, like stopping Thrawn is more important than than me. Like I hope that that happens. I'm also happy that I get to prove Doomcock wrong. Uh, what, did, what did you say? Again? Purely, purely for the first. Set. Okay, no. So what happened was on Morning Nonsense. So on Morning Nonsense, because Lit Dev is kind of like the uh, who's my friend, um, is kind of like the uh, comics gate sphere. Where you know, you know, they, they make kind of like not mainstream mm -hmm. comics, uh, and I I really like a lot of their work, and they they have a right leaning kind of crowd, which also intersects with a lot of the fandom menace, and of course, of course, the fandom menace intersects with Doomcock, and so that means that there is a section of Lit Dev's audience which are Doomcock fans, and we covered one of Doomcock's videos on stream, and I was very critical of it. Because like I basically was calling him out on his bullshit, uh, and and there were plenty of times as well that he's straight up been incredibly like disingenuous. Or he, he claimed once this is one of the, my favorite ones. Um, he claimed that the stocks of CBS Paramount went down because of the state of Star Trek, and this stock oh. drop um, was out of the blue. It wasn't during any Star Trek show that was airing. It wasn't during any the announcement of any Star Trek news. It was just a random drop. And considering that CBS and Paramount work on a lot of things, and a lot of films and TV shows, it's very odd to say that Star Trek was the sole reason for that to happen. And even when I went to look at the stock drop, the drop went exactly back up to beyond the point the next day. So this big stock drop that he made a big deal out of was healed overnight and he created this whole narrative around it and it was all just complete bollocks and he had to have known it was bollocks did, because did he make like, a did he make like a response to that like double like that increase afterwards or did he just like pass it on no no, no he just he just passed it on like he, he just he <laughs> didn't even mention it uh, and like it just oh, shows yeah. how fucking but, disingenuous he is but also on top of that like so he, his fans because i called him out gave me tons and tons of shit for it and I, I I didn't get over that. And when it got to uh, when Doomcock came on to Morning Nonsense, um, uh, and I did my best for half an hour to keep my trap shut. I didn't say a word, and I kept seeing people in chat trying to poke me and Doomcock into having a, a battle until at half an hour. I finally fucking let go because I, I was tired of him talking about how oh. the sequels were going to get retconned. Oh. And I, I let him have it. And I, didn't, I didn't go you let the dog crazy out? on... I, I didn't go crazy. I didn't scream at him, but I just started asking questions, and I was trying to be very reserved. And I, I said, how, how is Mando season two good? Uh, how is this good writing? And he, he gave a lot of ne really nebulous responses. Uh, but in that, he, he, he still claimed that Dave Filoni was going to retcon the sequels because um, of the civil war that's happening, and that that's the Luke reason Skywalker why he's still hopeful. And the the, the reason why uh, he what was it wants hope in this is because he wants Star Wars to still be around for his kids uh, and start like what really nebulous stuff like that. It, it I, I can will be the, the what? Stream link. It, I, there, no, oh, Kathleen Kennedy is like, specifically to, to me, trying it, to kill it. <laughs> what, like, specifically be... to me. If you just stop making Star Wars, it's always going to be there. It's always going yeah. to be reserves. If you just keep making more shit, it's just going to pile on constantly, damaging what you loved before. So why don't you just stop? Like, anyway, the I, bad I'll, things, I'll, as bad as they are, they don't destroy the original trilogy yeah. in terms of their like, like, isolated show my kids the quality. Six Star Wars movies. Like I can just do that. That's fine. They can still enjoy those. Yeah, yeah like that's what movies are they're like infinitely <laughs> like they're eternal like they don't I die oh here okay, unless you lose them in lost the, the media, but that's not I'll, I'll, i was gonna say do you have a clip of this yeah send it send it in the private chat because i do want to see that oh, i'll put it in the private chat then i'll i'll give an exact time code because the stream is like six minutes long and i'll see if i can find exactly uh, where he jumps in and th this was from like two years ago 
yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at that later. Also, like with Sabine, I, I would like um, to get us back on track here and finish yeah, I was out the gonna, episode real quick before we go on ask about Sabine right. with episode six. Uh, um, I put it in private. Chat. Did you guys notice how there. like uh, Sabine does didn't really like take any accountability or think about her actions at all throughout this episode and only talked about the deal mm -hmm. with Balin? Like when she's in the porta potty jail with uh, on on the ring, uh, she just says like. She says, she says, um, uh, what does she say? Oh yeah. She says like, what about our deal? And then she, he like runs off. Um, and then later when she gets taken to the other prison, she yells like, oh, what about our deal? And then, you know, she gets put in prison. No, um, you're right. Like she, she doesn't really have any guilt over like the choice that she made. She didn't, she, she doesn't seem yeah. to have any reaction to it at all. And, it's just like, yeah. you're, you're violating the deal. And even when <laughs> she's in front of you know, Thrawn, the guy that Ahsoka's trying to stop and, like, the person who's killed thousands under the Empire and, like, killed people that she considered family. She's just like, uh, what about our deal? Like, it's crazy <laughs> to me. It's so... I'm it's, changing the deal. Pray yeah, I don't change it any further. It's like, I mean, it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And, and there are ways, like, there are ways to write this character that, like, betrays the main character and like makes them good like one piece for example the new adaptation really good by the way you should watch it um but there's a character nani yeah uh, i'm um, gonna not listen to this because i haven't seen it yet and i plan oh, on it uh oh uh, yeah yeah so go ahead. i'm just okay okay listen. so okay so nani character orange hair girl she betrays um she betrays uh our main character right and like at the time I uh, like watching it. I'm like, I hate this character now. This character, why did you do that to my boy? Don't do this. And then, like, they spend three episodes of her consistently being a terrible person or like on the surface seeming like a, a terrible person. And then it takes up to the final episode of the season, um, where it's revealed like, oh, she's been doing all these terrible things because she wants to like buy her village back for like a nine million dollars or dollars or something. And then, like, she's having a conversation with her sister, and her sister's like, "Man, you really were gonna do this all for us?" Because, um, like, she she pretty much sold herself into slavery when she was a child to save her city. Um, so, uh, she's having a conversation with her sister, um, and she's like, "Yeah, yeah, I was." And then the sister says, "You made me hate you," and it's like, "Yeah," and it like it's like a really good scene where it's like the audience like is now like in favor of Nani again. And it's like, man, you made us, the audience hate you. How dare you don't do that show. And it, it's just like really good. And they well, could have done it, it here, but they didn't. Well, it's something we're still sort of waiting for with Sabine. And uh, I guess the one uh, I mentioned it earlier, but the, the one like level of guilt that we do see from her is when Ezra's like, I can't wait to go home. And then Sabine just like gives him a little bit of a guilty look. So we do have, we do have that expression of guilt. Where it's like, oh shit, he doesn't know. Um, so I don't know, but they need to do more with that. Is the bottom line? Yeah. Um, is that everything in the episode, or do, was did we still want to talk about uh, a scene? I can't remember. Uh, there was well, a scene after that where uh, Thrawn talks to. Well, no, 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 no. Hold on. So, well, no, we skipped over. Uh, we skipped over a scene earlier. So the uh, the scene between Shin and Balin. That's the the one other scene. Oh. <laughs> um, where Shin makes it clear that she, I think it's a scene where Shin makes it clear that she wants to go back, um, because she doesn't see any point of staying here, but Balin, Balin is insisting on staying on this planet because he thinks that's where they're going to find something that's going oh, to change that's right, everything. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and I don't know, it, it's interesting to see, I guess, a little bit of like, uh, I don't know, disagreement between those two. Um, um it, it's a small thing, but it's something. Yeah, I think it it was more interesting to see how Shin's character operated more than Balin, because Balin as a character, I mean, it's not written well, um, and his like his his like goal is not clear, and he he keeps talking about a power that's gonna like break the circle of violence, um, and like he says that there's a power specifically on this planet, um, and uh, I think Shin brings up like. Oh, if there was a power on this planet, why would these witches be like running from it, uh, or like getting away from this planet? And I think Balin yeah. says like, 
oh, they're running because they don't understand or something. And it's like it's it falls onto the under the classic Dave trope where it's so vague that I'm just not interested anymore and I don't understand what he's saying. There's a lot that he's benching on that, that he yeah. doesn't even know. Yeah, he he's gambling on a lot here, like going to a completely different galaxy, going to this one specific <sighs> planet, and be, just believing that there's a power here. I I guess like witch magic well the the children's stories that he heard when he was a child apparently are are, are like where he found out that that's where this thing is i guess yeah that's oh yeah i mean that's going to be kind of annoying honestly if if that turns (laughs) out to just be like a total nothing burger and you know yeah yeah probably like it's like he's putting all his false hopes in like something that's not even real because he needs something to i guess give him hope something to work for and be metaphorical for this fucking fan base. That could be well, yeah, like that could yeah, be a really kind of. interesting character arc, like someone who's so oh, desperate like, to change the way things are, only to realize that it can't be done. Uh, yeah. that you have to make yeah. the best of the of the world that you're in. Like that's cool. Oh, give me that. Yeah, and like Shiny said, uh, well, but that the if this was actually the intent behind that, that would piss me off so much, as Shiny said, where it's like, this is representative of you fans. You want the world between worlds to reset the timeline? You want to erase the sequels? Well, we can't erase the sequels. You want it to make sense? No! Die! You want you good storytelling? Fuck you! Goodbye. No, we can't do that. This is Man. what we have. And accept it. Like, bail it has to accept it, you meanies. <laughs> Yeah, I think he even right. talks, he talks about Ezra a bit, and then he's like, uh, I think Shin says, "Oh, Ezra's like me, like, uh, like as a broken Jedi, not a broken Jedi who during was the, uh, trained outside of the temple life." Yeah. Wait, a broken, not a broken? I thought he, it was no, broken. He said broken. He says broken. No, he didn't say broken. He says, he says broken. Oh, I yes. gotta change my video. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, I say broken, not Boken. I did, <laughs> wait, Boken is the actual name. Okay. B O K K E N. Yeah. Yes. All right. Wait, is that has that been a canon thing? Like, or, yeah. I, I only things. just yeah. found out about the term like a those week ago, a but yeah. Oh yeah, I just I just found out about this term like right now. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, and then. I think uh, Balin says, "Like, no, I want you. I want. I'm training you to be something more." And it's like, I would really like to know what that is, because <laughs> like, yeah, they're not Jedi, but they're not Sith. Like, what are you? I want to know so uh, I can I actually what care. The, <laughs> what the fuck, Balin versus the Spider Society is gonna go crazy? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I I don't think you found you know, the ultimate power and it broke the timeline. Like with a lot of things in this series, I don't think Dave Filoni even knows necessarily. Like I'm convinced of that. Like I I don't think he knows what oh, yeah. uh like what Balin's he admitted Endgame is. Or... He admitted that he doesn't know what the world between worlds actually is and what it's capable of. It's huh? just a thing that he <laughs> you decides created to create. it. He created, created it. What do you mean? Yeah. Where did he say this? I need this. <laughs> I know clip. that. In the same uh, fucking <laughs> clip that people tear around no. to try to to try to dunk on fans calling it time travel, it's a, like a clip of but Dave quote unquote he calls explaining it time travel the world in that clip. World. Yeah, and in that clip, he also says like, "I don't really understand it." Basically, what? Uh, yeah, like, I don't know what it is. I don't know. Well, it, I well, don't know how it works. Like, no. The funny thing to me is that he he says that oh, it's not time travel, and then literally describes time travel. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's well, worse yeah. because he's like, "Oh yeah, it's it's all time everywhere." Yes. <laughs> it's okay. like, "Okay." <laughs> well, that's sure. the same cope that fans have tried to like use to defend it as well. But yeah, I mean, honestly, that that does seem to check out as far as Dave Filoni goes because <laughs> let's be honest, he he came up with that thing just to save Ahsoka's life. That's the only purpose. He didn't give any thought to uh, it beyond that. Yeah. He just needed something to be able to save him, but he wasn't thinking about the, the long-term ramifications. So I'm not surprised that he doesn't know what that is. I'm not surprised that he doesn't know like what a lot of things are that he created in like this series and other series. Yeah. God, I wish Ahsoka died. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> at, so this point, at this point, know. yeah, in yeah. hindsight... I, I even defended it for a while, but in hindsight, yeah, I wish she would have died on Malachor. <laughs> it would have been a, such I, a good I, ending. I hated it immediately. It, I was so It would annoyed. have been good for Darth Vader. 
I didn't hate it. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I had problems with it immediately, but I was also like, well, there's still potential to have some interesting moments here. You know, like her meeting Luke and stuff. It's like, well, I so think, much for that. Okay, I, I'll rescind it. I don't, I didn't immediately hate it. It was, it was when I realized, oh, she's been alive throughout the OT because, like, we see her in the epilogue, and I was like, that's bad. Yeah. Well, my thought that's process not of it was like, so I watched Rebels until season two, and then I dropped it. Uh, just because Ahsoka wasn't there and I didn't care anymore. Um, and then <laughs> also, there's a, I was like, there's a point we made because Ezra is the only person that knows Ahsoka is still alive and she's left on a barren planet that's like completely isolated. How the fuck does she get off it? I'm sure she found the world a between ship worlds opens Maybe he again. Left a little fucking note. <laughs> there, the no, pigeon I, who comes knows? Back. He left like a note for the the rest of the ghost crew to like go find her. I don't, I don't fucking know. Ah, uh, yeah, she left a map. There were. There were Inquisitor ships there. I just don't know why Vader would have wouldn't have sent someone back to retrieve them. Um, but I don't know. He just That's left the same them there. Thing I guess with, uh, <laughs> with Reva getting off to beam, where they're like, "Yeah, but like she came in an Inquisitor ship, and like that surely would have been left behind." It's like, no, wouldn't the wouldn't no. Vader and Grand Inquisitor like just like make sure to collect that and bring it back because you can still use that. Why would you yeah. leave an expensive piece of military equipment there? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's like people, people, America, yeah, America in, got in, off to to a country just leaves an F thirty five there on the or runway. It's like, uh, well, it's, 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 it's lunch now. It's I've got to go off. Uh, just don't steal that, please. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me but catch yeah, this to, super um, chat before we go on. Oh yes, uh, Emp ALC. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, what do you think of the dilemma surrounding naming Force users, Dark Jedi, Gray Jedi, etc.? Uh, I wish there was a better term for describing them. Grey Jedi aren't canon. Dark Jedi literally are. That's all I really care about. Yep. Yep. Pretty uh, much. I think the concept the of a of a so, well, a dark Jedi a, a, is a Jedi who turns to the dark side. A gray Jedi is ostensibly oh, okay. someone who considers themselves a Jedi, but thinks that they can balance the light side and the dark side of the force and successfully are able to do that. Well, a, a oh, great Jedi is, is whatever the fuck you want it to be, because the amount, the, the definition that people use for great Jedi changes dependent on what fucking character they're talking about. So you, you have the edgy kind of like characters where they're like, you know, you've yeah. seen the great Jedi code where they mix and match both sides, and then you get the cool mm. OC. Where it's like, oh my god, they have a red lightsaber and a blue lightsaber. They're so cool, mm. and they they are both dark side and light side, even though that's not how the force fucking works. Or then you've got Qui Gon Jinn. They call that a, a gray Jedi, even though what? he's nowhere <laughs> fucking close. Well, yeah. well that's what well, exactly. Qui Gon. <laughs> well, he's well, yeah, like mix and nothing. Like it, it's. It basically may as well be the term like metaverse, where metaverse is just a word that will get just stamped things. onto literally fucking anything. It's like, anything hey, on the internet? there's someone singing with a VR headset. Metaverse. Oh, well, someone's Real. doing a virtual avatar. Metaverse. You know, like, that's all it is. Yeah, and uh, NFTs, like the latter, so. the latter definition makes like more sense to me. Like if it gets used as like a shorthand for like the the ideal. Uh, version of a Jedi, one that's not bogged down by like dogma, um, and is I don't know willing to form relationships and and open themselves up in that way, um, but they're also like uh, abiding by the light side of the Force, you know that kind of thing. Um, that's just a Jedi. Know. That's just Luke's version yeah, of what I, a Jedi is. I guess people want to like, people want to use Jedi it. than anything we see in the prequels. Yeah. No, well, no, I understand, but I think people wanted to like use the term to distinguish from like the prequel Jedi. I guess I don't know. I, I just really, Find really, out. really hate the the OC kind of Jedi. That's like, oh, I'm dark side and light side at the same yeah. time. I'm so fucking cool and edgy, guys. Oh yeah, no, and we we'll be here. We'll be here all day if we try to like go into that can of worms. <laughs> I, that freaking discussion is so annoying. But yeah. Yeah, they're like, oh, I have a purple lightsaber because that's what that means. <laughs> Mixing the color palette. <laughs> I'm purple now. It's so lame. It's like, just be just, just be Darth Maul. Just do it. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it just seems like a way of having your, having your cake and eating it, you know? It's like having all of the benefits, but none of the drawbacks. It's like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> From a meta I mean, sense, could... it's like, yeah, but dark side is cool. But I want this guy to be like a, a good guy, so he does both. I mean, you—he's a good be, guy, but I want him to have a force lightning and to force choke people. You can be a good guy and be a dark side user, like in terms of like your morals, right? 
Because like, uh, wasn't there like some uh, EU stuff where oh, there were there were some Sith, but they like were kind of chill. I feel like I remember uh, watching like a Star Wars uh, theory video chill. five years ago. Uh, they just kind of. So I think if they. If you want to use the dark side, you have to like have the 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 want hmm. to do evil. Like you you have to be evil into your very soul. Otherwise, you're not wielding the dark side. You you can't just skirt around it and flirt right. with it. You have to want to really fucking kill someone. The dark well, side intrinsically uh, brings out your more selfish and uh, like dark desires and stuff. Like it's not just something you can play with. It's not a tool that you can sort of like pick up and use whenever you want. Like no, you can you allow yourself to be consumed by it every time you use it. You cannot be well, a good person if you use the dark side. You may think well, you it's are. Well, it's interesting. In you fact, aren't. you're weaker. You're weaker by being good and using the dark side. Well, it, it's kind of interesting. I mean, because Balin and Shin, like, it, it, it's kind of interesting to explore them. Like, it, w do we know that they're, oh, like, yeah. dark side users? Like, we don't really know that yet, do we? Because uh, they don't... Uh, I, I don't I mean, know. I'd it's... assume from the red lightsabers, but I mean, but, orange yeah. ones. I don't know what the color they're actually. Well, orange lightsabers are, but I guess yeah. I guess the thing is, like, they are willfully bringing about the return of the Empire, but at the same time, yeah. Balin seems to have some goals that he somehow sees as greater or more important. Um, yeah. So, like, I don't know that don't he's know. necessarily evil. I also don't know that he's necessarily used any inherently dark side of force abilities yet. Like he hasn't used force choke or force lightning or anything like that. He has used so force choke once. He used it on one of the guys in the first episode, one of the one of the uh, new Republic soldiers. Ah, okay. Uh, also, if it, I, I, I don't know. If, that I don't know that is a dark side choke. power. I don't know if it was choke. I know he like he grabbed his gun um, and then spun him around. So I guess like force. No, 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 I, no! I'm not talking about the. I'm not talking about the captain. I'm not talking about the captain. Oh, I'm talking about okay. in the hallway. He picks up a guy. Oh, okay, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, yeah. of course you I can. Uh, you can use dark side powers uh, every now and then, like force choke, without just being completely consumed by it. But like, even yeah, it's even more when characters do that, it's not seen as like a good thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, no, it's still seen as like a bad thing. It's bad for your soul. Every time Anakin does it in the Clone Wars, it's like, oh shit. It's like he's whoop, doing a bad, and then, bad. Uh, and then Imperial March just starts. Well, yeah, because you're choking someone to death. It's not, it's you are, yeah, you are imposing do. your will on somebody. You are choking <laughs> their the life out of them. Um, hmm. obviously yeah. that's not a good thing. It's very evil. Um, but yeah. All right. You want to get to the last um, scene of the show, I guess? Uh or the the episode. Was, I thought we got to the last scene. Was that no, was the last scene, no. Sabine scene? Not the last. There was a scene with Thrawn and the, the oh, that's the, right, the mothers. Yeah, th this is Same where they um. I have. Thrawn yeah, and the th that's right. Yeah, so yeah. this is this is where the great mothers tell him that they think Ahsoka is about to arrive, uh, because they have sensed it. Um, and they he's like, "How come?" <laughs> yeah, apparently they read the script. Yeah, and <laughs> he's like, "Uh, you didn't mention this before," and they said like it was a loose thread or whatever, so they didn't predict her coming before. Ugh. Um, and Morgan's like, "No, it's impossible. She's dead." <laughs> and my fucking dirty brain. Every time I hear the word "coming," it just immediately goes to a wrong place. <laughs> I think You're of Optimus boy. Prime. Ahsoka is ejaculating. <laughs> I, think I, I made a joke <laughs> earlier that I was like, Kanan knows Hera doesn't come quietly, and no one fucking got it. <laughs> like, y'all just kept moving. <laughs> oh, I must not have heard that. <laughs> no, I didn't see that. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And, uh, um, yeah. And Thrawn basically tells Morgan, like, don't underestimate it. Like, it's above you. Uh, I thought it was above you to underestimate Jedi. Um, it's like, well, we're going to assume that Ahsoka's alive until we see otherwise. So, uh, if a pergol arrives um, from out of uh, hyperspace, uh, blow it away, essentially, is what he well, said. But they can't, because these things mm -hmm. can withstand a fucking Star Destroyer. Three of them. Uh, yeah, I don't know what they're going to blow it away with. Like, they have one ship. Maybe the hyperdrive know. ring has, like, fucking proton torpedoes or some shit. Could be, yeah. They I have mean, super it, lasers. And he did direct wait, this at called? Morgan, so I guess... My super laser piss! Ah, wait, what... <laughs> <laughs> what in episode three? Does, no, the turbo lasers. They have turbo lasers or tur turbo cannons. I think that's something. Different. Oh yeah, 
Well, and that's uh, that's that's something that's been used in a lot of like Star Wars technology. That is an actual thing. That's that's not new, is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. It just sounds funny. sure. Um, you sound funny. I do. Yeah, like the big towers that are like during the trench run on the Death Star that are firing at the uh, at the X wings. I'm pretty sure those are turbo cannons. Yeah, I think so. But uh, yeah. In any event, um, yeah. yeah, I would um, say this is a smart scene for Thrawn. He actually is like intelligent. He's like, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I'm not fucking believing Ahsoka's dead until I see a body. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah and then he and then he asks like he asks Morgan like all of the information on Ahsoka. I don't know how Morgan's going to get that information, but he does ask <laughs> like he's like, I want her homeworld. I want her master. I want uh, it will be like, revealed to her in a dream. I wonder if Thrawn's going to find out what she did for uh, the OT. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we're never gonna we're never gonna find that out. Let alone Thrawn's just like I know what you did. <laughs> you, you know did that nothing. you know that meme that's like never ask um never ask a man his salary, a woman her age, or Ahsoka where she was during zero <laughs> uh, zero BBY to five BBY <laughs> or Filoni, <laughs> no, like, Filoni for that matter. Yeah, it's like uh, yeah. it's like uh, sir, I noticed this gap in your resume. Oh, I I I, I signed an NDA. <laughs> Oh wait! I can you imagine? Can you, imagine? Gonna say that. <laughs> can you... <laughs> wait? Can you imagine if they actually someone asks or Thrawn asks uh, Morgan the question, and then they cut to the next scene, and he's learned all the information, and they skipped over it without telling us the audience? <laughs> do, you, do you know how infuriated that would make me if they skipped over it? Like they're like, "What was she doing during the Galactic Civil War? Tell me." It's like, Chill. and then Morgan's about to tell her, and then they cut to the next scene, and, and we skip over it. Like, I would be oh, like, you like, no, they, like they, they, do it, they do it in like a comedic way, where like it, it like shows her open her mouth to speak, and then it does a cut, and we see him like oh. walking down a corridor, and he's like, I can't believe that's what she was do doing during the OT. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like he, he doesn't <laughs> say anything specific. He just says like that. That's what she did. That's crazy. Oh god. Yeah, like kind of like when in Game of Thrones where they they skipped over the reaction uh, of Sansa and Arya finding out that Jon Snow is a Targaryen. It's like, oh, thanks for that. Would have liked to have actually mm -hmm. seen that conversation, but thanks for skipping over it. We don't need that. Also, does it it's seem fine. like they're, Not a big deal. they're kind of they're kind of skipping over the whole Ahsoka? I'm no Jedi thing. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't. That, heard that was brought up at all. I've heard it uh, brought up a few times to explain why Yoda said that, um, like, to to explain why Yoda said, "Oh, you're the you'll be the last of the Jedi," because Ahsoka's not a Jedi anymore, but she is essentially. Like, yeah. There's it, it, in everything Jedi the name, things. and, and no, 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 now no, it just kind of seems like they're forgetting. Very, it's very simple. She is not a Jedi, except that she <laughs> walks and talks and acts like one and fights like one, and she trains a Padawan also. Who can't even well, be yeah, a and, Jedi? And and her Mandalorian a, episode yeah, is called the Jedi, and everyone refers to her as one. And uh, yeah, yeah, I she's mean, not. she's Filoni. not a Jedi. It's, it's oh yeah, totally I, I ran into that problem. I was writing a script for I think episode three, um, and then I, I called her a Jedi, and I'm like, wait, is she? Because I like specifically remember <laughs> the moment where she's like, I am no Jedi, and I'm like, wait, but you are. <laughs> she's a Jedi. Let's not fucking well, kid ourselves. She's a Jedi. Yeah. Well, and it's just hey, a testament to, to like Dave Filoni. Had... I'll let you say something. It's just a testament to like Filoni's short sightedness. He 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 used that line in the moment uh, because it was like kind of a, a cool response to what Vader tells her, like revenge is not the Jedi way, and then she says she's no Jedi. Um, but like beyond that, beyond that moment, it's it's almost like he's forgotten about it. You know. Like it's it, oh, yeah, that yeah. just that seems to be a sense with a lot of things. Like he he's well, forgotten about like a lot of his previous I mean, material. In the context, it works completely fine that she wouldn't consider herself a Jedi by the time of Rebels. Why would she? Yeah. When she, she walked away from the Order last, we saw her. Yeah. Of course, she doesn't consider herself a Jedi. Yeah, and that's so cool. She is but uh, but it, it's but it's everything that's happened since then that's like strange as fuck. Like and and the fact that yeah. she hasn't really addressed that um, about herself. Um, and everyone else just considers, you know, her a Jedi. It's just, I don't know. I, I think it would be yeah, really interesting if they did actually tackle Ahsoka, kind of like eventually coming back to being a Jedi. Like it's an arc that comes fully around. 
like perhaps it's something that she partially accepts by the time that she confronts vader and that she sacrifices something that she wants to like save ezra and kanan or like as when you come round to this show that it's something finally that she has her moment with anakin and she finally says no i'm i'm a jedi now and then she like mm -hmm. fully accepts it not just in the name but also in the philosophy of a jedi but, but... we're never going to get that because dave didn't think that far ahead he he only thinks as far as this story and this story ahsoka's coming back and she's wise and cool now and then she dies it's like okay we're done with her now that's a plan and Listen. then she comes back well and and that uh, that inevitably sorry go ahead schrodinger's world building it both is and isn't it's whatever i want <laughs> in the moment <laughs> yes so far we're still thing. going like, it is that bad I'll that's the well, only thing and how vague Dave talks about this kind of shit, where it's like, no matter what way you try to get at it, their fans are going to be able to kind of bend around it. Like, if you criticize Ahsoka for not being a Jedi, they'll say, oh, no, she isn't really a Jedi. If you criticize how Ahsoka isn't a Jedi, they say, oh, no, 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 she really is a Jedi. She is a Jedi. Don't worry about it. It's like, so, like no matter what way you try to tackle it, it's always just going to be vague uh, enough to uh, bend your way around. Remember in episode one when she straight up alluded to the idea that she tortured Morgan for information? That oh, was yeah. Fun. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit <laughs> oh, awkward. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Like a Jedi or no Jedi, that's still fucked up. That's all I have to say about that. Um and I'm still over the know, fact that Morgan knew this exact fucking location and she just sat on her ass and didn't do anything. She just let Ahsoka get the map and just didn't get it before she was captured, just fucking sat it's oh, fuck. God. Yeah, Stupid. fucking episode one. But anyway, yeah, one and I, I one thing I wanted so to say about <laughs> one thing I want to say about your Stoker. point, Shiny, um, where you said like uh, they could have done an interesting story where uh, the the ultimate end point is that uh, Ahsoka retakes the mantle of a Jedi again. You know, she had lost faith in them and she was doing her own thing, but eventually she uh, regains her faith as a Jedi and like rejoins the Order again. Uh, that would inevitably involve like seeing Luke again, and for some reason, Filoni like doesn't want to do that. No, nah. uh, they they don't like that old asshole anymore. Anymore, he's, so he's it's like, busy. yeah, he's busy doing nothing, he's, he's uh, training busy. nobody. He's he's, yeah. he's building he's building a temple with those robot crabs things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those robots are doing all the work for him. So fuck that. Like <laughs> that's not even an excuse. <laughs> Look at my school. <laughs> it's just like look a at my school with of... one student. <laughs> well, it, it, it's like some some capitalist being like, I built this house myself. <laughs> even though it's like all they did was just hire people to like build it. It's like okay, yeah, they your like, money, right, your right, money right, built it. I guess. Grease. Also, it's it's a shithole. So like dry stone or like fucking huts, right? It's like, just gonna leak water. Like that's not gonna insulate you in the fucking cold. No wonder Grogu wants to fucking leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he wanted a roof over his head that didn't fucking leak rain. Listen, Jedi, they, they live modestly. It's okay. They are very minimalist at heart. Um, but, uh... Yeah. Yeah, man. These two fucking episodes. Jeez. I still think yeah. So I guess now some of you guys like it, like anyone there, anyone out there who like didn't understand why I was angry after the sixth episode. I hope you understand now. <laughs> I don't. Oh, I think it was really funny in the <laughs> VC where you could I could hear you and C get progressively angrier after the episode <laughs> ended. <laughs> I was like. Oh. <laughs> I was so fucking well, mad. It was so funny. Well, like the point. Yeah, like that at first, got I was me, playing it up. But like, but like after a fashion, I was just like, "No, actually, fuck this episode." Well, you yeah, know you what? Like, you know what? Like, your anger, Chief. Well, you know it's yeah. been interesting is that uh, in the first few episodes, we did have like positives uh, to to say. Not very many, but like mm -hmm. we had some. Um, but it seems like those have been getting fewer and fewer, like the the more we've gone along. Like we we had barely anything positive to say about these last two. We had a couple things, but not much. Yeah. Yeah. And I like especially with the Ezra and Sabine reunion, like that was like nothing. Um Yeah. They just kinda like they that smirked, just, like that that annoyed the <clears throat> fuck out of me. I'm do Dude. I'm doing so I made the 
arcane comparison again, and it's like it real truly is hydrogen bomb versus coughing baby with this show. Because um, <laughs> like I compared, I compared the Vi and uh, Jinx reunion um, mm. when uh, Vi sees the blue smoke, um, and she goes to do that, and then I I completed the like that portion. I'm like. Man, this show is doing nothing right. It's like crazy to me. Well, how like that's Dave, what, Filo- that... Dave Filoni has these characters that he made, and like he should like know how to treat them. And then they're just like, "Yeah, what's up?" And they get like they hug each other like you hug your grandma during Thanksgiving. It's just like, eh. Yeah, it, that's uh, that was the most that was characters. Yeah, it's that, crazy. That was that's what was most staggering to me during this episode. Like, I I couldn't believe it. Like as I was watching. Like I had to take a step back and I was almost like surprised at my own reaction. Like during the Sabine and Ezra reunion, I I, I just couldn't believe the fact that I felt nothing while watching this. Like these were characters that I did care about at one point. And I just took a step back and I was like, wow, Mm -hmm. I feel nothing right now. Like, I think it was mostly Sabine for me. I think Ezra. Yeah. uh, I mean, they ruined Sabine. So why do I give a shit that she got what she wanted? Well, even yeah. the scene isolated, Sabine just kind of looks at him and like moves her eyebrow a bit, and it's like, "Excuse me, this is your best friend during the rebellion, like, and you assumed him dead or like lost in space forever, and you're just like, I was up. It's crazy. Like, what do you like? Please emote. Do something. <laughs> By yeah. the show's own context, you don't even need to watch Rebels at this point. Just the fact oh, it hurts that you if you do. She. She, yeah. <laughs> she risked the entire galaxy, basically to fuck the galaxy, gave the map to Thrawn to the worst fucking person ever, basically undermined everything that Ahsoka was trying to do this entire time, and said, I'm ruining the galaxy and risking a second galactic civil war because I want to see my friend again. And then this friend that she Seems apparently legit. cares about so much that she's risking destroying the fucking galaxy with another galactic civil war. Just says, hi. How you doing? Also, <laughs> when when Sabine is handed both both of her weapons and then also her lightsaber, um, uh, it's just, like, she has the opportunity to go kill Thrawn easy. Because, um, like, she's covered in Mandalorian armor, so she's practically invincible. Um, just go over there, shoot him, and then leave. Uh, yeah, you'll probably die, but like you just stopped an empire from coming back, so you're well. You, yeah, you are but redeemed. she wants to see um, Ezra. Yeah, uh, yeah. At least we have Shin. I think it's funny that even Thoron <laughs> kind of calls out Sabine. <laughs> it's like, hey, so you risked like literally fucking everything on the fact that you really want to see like Ezra, and she's <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And yeah, then, the fact he, that, yeah. He, he looks at her yeah. and he's like, I don't understand that. And she's like, you never will. And throws it, like, hey, yeah, okay, bye. Off you go. Well, yeah, she she acts yeah. like she has the high ground over him, the, the moral high ground. It's like, you wouldn't <laughs> understand, bitch. It's like, you wouldn't well, understand. I know, like, we're treating, the entire we're treating it like, yeah, that's because you're perfect. cold and heartless and you, you, don't, you don't understand what it's like to love someone. It's like, no, sh- Shut the fuck up. Shut, Shut up. up. Die. <laughs> it's like when uh Rose like stops uh, uh stops uh what's his I can't remember oh, his Finn. name. Yeah, Finn. yeah. And then she's like, sometimes you gotta save the things you love. And it's like Finn was doing that exact same thing right now. What are you talking oh about? Oh my god, and it, the explosion goes off He's in the background. The I just I, I lose my shit. <laughs> like um, you cannot make this Cabal, like, thank you for the super chat. Uh, wasn't there some concept art of Luke's Academy being in Endor? I vaguely remember seeing something about that. Uh, no idea. Hmm. It, it, like from Book of Boba Jedi. Or... Oh god, this is canon. I think, I mean, canon. I think it would be cool if it was on Yavin or Yavin Four specifically, because isn't isn't the Rebel I base? Have no idea. Uh, isn't the Rebel base in a old Jedi temple uh, on Yavin Four? Uh, it not, it's no, not a Jedi temple, I don't think. But it's a, oh, yeah. okay. Um, it actually was built by the uh, Sith species. 
Ah. I mean, but but let's be real though. What, what does it even matter? I mean, his temple, this his his Jedi order freaking collapses anyway. So why should we give a yeah. shit? <laughs> like, I don't uh, know. Why didn't he make it on course? I think canonically. Uh, well, I guess the idea is like we're kind of we're kind of kind of separate church from state here. Be like, hey, you guys do oh, your yeah. thing. That's I'll just settle down here in the fucking outskirts of nowhere. Build my little, yeah. you know, on this rock I build my church sort of thing. It isn't too different from what he does in the EU. Yeah, no, I'm fine with that. Church and, state. Um, and I think canonically, yeah, he settled, like the place we see him on in Book of Boba Fett is Asis, which is an ancient Jedi temple from the EU. Do you remember when, even when Luke that. didn't even do things were that bad? Like, like in terms of that bad being that he destroyed the entire fucking galaxy, uh, like, he still got called out for, like, mistakes that he made or ways that he was fucking up, which is mm -hmm. exactly what Mara Jade does in the Thrawn duology. Remember the, like, remember calling yep. out a protagonist for the fucking shit they do? Like, Mara Jade calls out Luke for his fucking nah. hubris, like, multiple times. Mm, nah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I Guess mean, like you know, I said, a wise character can have flaws and make your, your honor, my character is being quirky. It, it could happen in the next two episodes. It, guys, it's going to happen in the next two episodes. You know it will. Come on. But, like, will... <laughs> will Come on. It? <laughs> you, like, know, uh, you know it will. Like, uh, <laughs> in episode two, when they're in the hospital, uh, all, like, all Ahsoka does is she just says, oh, you've done enough. Like, in response to uh, <sighs> Sabine messing up yeah. the entire plan. Ahsoka's just like, Stealing oh, you've map. done enough. Yes, yeah, stealing the map and giving it to the enemy hands. Um, she, I, or not giving it, but this. like putting it into a vulnerable place. But yeah, um, I, I, I make such a point of this in my video that like that I get I I play up the anger, and I said like she agreed. She said to Ahsoka, "Yes, I understand that there's lives more lives at Ezra than just at risk. I understand it. I will not steal this map." And she steals the map. But she needs the thinking space, shiny. She, oh she I mean, needs space I think, to think. It's even I mean, that's... fucking stupider. It's like, not only does that inv basically inv uh, allow the antagonist to just steal the map and then get away, which wouldn't be able to happen if, like, Sabine didn't fucking steal it. Also, somehow Morgan, like, had telekinetic powers that could see the future and knew that Sabine was going to steal this map and that Shin, she sent Shin to go to Lothal ahead of time somehow knowing that Ahsoka would go there, that the map would then get stolen, that Shin could then steal it from Sabine, who stole it from Ahsoka, and then just leave. Whereas if she was just acting on... If none of that happened, Shin would turn up, look around, so, uh, she would maybe try to steal the map from Ahsoka, then get her ass beat and die or get captured. It's like, well, Seems same fucking legit. story here. Yeah. Well, and then also uh, you had the throwaway line in episode to yeah where morgan says like oh thrawn is calling to me um i guess that's the night sisters or the the mothers from uh yeah i guess that's i guess yeah, the like implication um i don't know why she wouldn't say oh the mothers are but okay it's more mysterious and you can get a name drop ah, yes yes yeah and this is this is a good uh conclusion a good summary of, of the whole problem Ezra sacrificed 10 years of his life to save the universe from Thrawn, and Sabine pissed it all away. If Thrawn returns, <laughs> then anything he does is Sabine's fault. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know what? Yep. They could have made it so, like, she was accidentally tricked into, like, letting uh, Thrawn return. Like, say someone approached her, uh, like, oh, yeah, I can help you go save Ezra. She's like, oh, yeah, sure. Gets the map, steals it from Ahsoka. And then it turns out that, oh, twist! They were actually working for Thrawn the whole time. And all, yeah. While she's responsible for what's going to happen, she's not flat out just saying, fuck the galaxy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty bad. I mean, honestly, at this point, I just, I think she should honestly, like, die. Like, if she ends up, like, giving her life uh, in <laughs> service of, of, like, making up for her mistake, like, that's the only thing that I could you, really, you like, accept at this point. <laughs> I actually think... Ezra is going to die or something. I don't feel like he's making it out of this one alive. I don't yeah, know why. But I have what a, a waste if they did that. I, I, 
he's either going to die or he's going to sit he's going to stay but for some reason i don't see him coming back to the 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 original galaxy i just don't see it maybe god I don't know. what would be the point of that this I, entire I thing know. has been about I just bringing feel... him back and then he just does... <laughs> i don't know i yeah, feel like... like what's worse because he, he would then have to either die before the sequel trilogy or he does nothing throughout the entire sequel trilogy well, he could, he could die in Filoni's movie. Wait, what? Filoni's getting a movie? Ah, true. You didn't know this? No. Dude, how out of the loop Do you not you? watch Doomcock, I'm, bro? I'm very out of the loop. I don't pay attention to any of this shit. Like, I've been out of the fandom for so long yeah. at this point. There's gonna be a Mandoverse movie. Fandom, but... uh, yeah, well, there's there's a... like around the time that season three was coming out of Mando. Well, I mean, considering how much they announce and then shelve projects, we don't know if it will actually happen. Yeah, but yeah. What you know, is assuming is it do you think Ahsoka Thrawn will die? Centric? No, uh, no, <laughs> do I think Ahsoka uh, will die. Uh, no. She might. That doesn't mean she'll no. stay dead. She might. But Fucking no, like, she's all gonna... my money is on Ezra Kidding dying. Me? Do you think that he would kill her off, especially with like the movie supposedly coming out? Like, no, hell no. The three um, so, uh, times she's that she's died and been brought fucking back. Do you really think the fourth time is really going to happen? Yeah, it, it's essentially the uh, that that movie is essentially going to be the actual fight against Thrawn. Like Thrawn is going to make it through this series for sure, and he's going to be like the the end game, uh, you know, villain that they have to take. They all have to take on in the movie. You know, Ahsoka, probably Luke, maybe Luke. Uh, you know, Mando. All these other Grogu, all these other characters, they're all going to be stopping Thrawn, I guess. Do you remember in I'm Man so excited. Do where, when Boba sees a single Aquitans cruiser, that he goes, The Empire, they've returned. And we're still just kind of like waiting here after season two. It's like, So is the Empire still returning? Or like, what's happening with that? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like. They, they 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 didn't return. They were just always there, and nobody noticed. They were just kind of kind of hiding. It, it, it is what it is but a flesh wound it's for the not empire. Not even like a star it's destroyer. Not a flesh wound. It's just a, a lit, just one Aquitens cruiser, like one of the smallest fucking ships the empire has, like a, higher than a Gazanti, is like the evidence the empire has returned to Boba. I, I, I'm never gonna stop finding that funny. Yeah, which is, <laughs> I don't know. So, um, good stuff. I'm going to wrap this up because uh, I think we've Peak covered Soka. about just about everything we can. Peak Soka, yeah. Peak Soka. Yeah, yeah Peak Soka. Um, before, we, before we go, does anyone want to promote what they're doing, what they're up to? I know some people here have YouTube channels, so. Anyone? Uh, who's going to go first? <laughs> you, Shiny, because right, you talked. I'm Shiny yeah. Effects. I'm someone who you shouldn't follow on YouTube or Twitter because I don't know. I'm a visual effects artist who does this in my free time, and I'm currently making a video on Ahsoka, which is distracting me from other things that I want to work on because I thought it'd be really interesting to talk about this show for some reason. And that video is currently clocked at 55 minutes, only talking about the first episode. So I've, <laughs> I've gone over the length of the first episode at this point. I'm doing a Mauler. There you go. A long man <laughs> bad. And that, that's it. That's all I've got to say. Go away. Uh, anyone else? Uh, don't don't really do much with my YouTube channel. Um, other than uh, probably just going to upload those uh, Jedi Survivor streams that I did with Joe at some point. I'm just waiting for the right time. Um... And I don't know. I'm probably I might do more with it in the future. Um, I'm still new, um, and I have too many like non YouTube projects going on. Uh, writing, I'm like writing uh, a shiny. novel. Send me the link to your channel so I can. I'm gonna up update the uh, description of the video. Okay, I'll just quickly grab it and I'll put it in private chat. Mm -hmm. I found it. Um, you failed me. Well, I, I got it there now, but you, you got it too soon. Too. That. It's too late. The damage is done. You know, I was really excited um, the other week because I was 
deciding that this is going to be the time that I'm going to, I'll finish my script for my, my short story that I want to animate and I'm going to start working at this week. Then I think, fuck that. I'm going to make an Ahsoka video. <laughs> Real. On. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, the obviously better choice. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought, I thought it'd be really interesting to talk about, and of course, there's not no really point in in ha making a short story if no one's gonna fucking watch it. So I need to grift those subscribers by talking about something slightly more relevant. True grifting. Wow, dishonest scum. Hmm. Don't be this guy. <laughs> has, has this ever happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyone else? uh i'm working on an andor video i'm liking it Yay. nice yes you are no but that's um, bad star wars that's boring true it's very boring <laughs> and boring. Uh, but other, th other than that i'm doing ahsoka videos every week but yeah we yeah which i have on good authority are just you being a whiny fucking hater true so. according to the thumbnail alone yeah well, alrighty then. Like All their yeah. uh, shit will be linked in the description, probably. If I can figure this shit out. Uh, uh, goodbye. Yes, yes. <laughs> We're done. All right. Bye bye. GG. Bye bye. <laughs> well, if there's anything else you guys want to say, then fine. I just. Oh no! To just one thing, I wanted this. to uh, CLS no. Studio. He's asking, uh, "What day is the next stream? Uh, two weeks from now, at some point, I assume." Probably, yeah. I mean, obviously, the final episode has oh, to come out, final. and then, uh, yeah, thank God. And then we'll figure out a date because you know everything like that schedules and shit. Yep. Cool. Um, so thanks cool. for having me yeah. again. Good night, guys. Thanks for coming on, uh, and thank you, guys, everyone in here for watching. Thank um, you. bye. -bye. I